Hi everyone. Hi everyone, welcome to Unacademy Neat English. First of all, let me know in the chat section, am I audible and visible? Hi, can you see me? Can you hear me? Good evening everyone. If you can see me, hear me, do let me know in the chat section. Welcome to the session, Bache. Welcome to the session where we are going to complete the human reproduction. So you know that right after so long I'm taking the class. So really need your support, really need your energy. So quickly show that in the chat section, guys. Quickly show that energy in the chat section. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome to the session. And hit the like button. Hit the like button. And if you're new to our channel, quickly subscribe our channel as well. Good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I want to see the chat here. Right? good very good very good very good so welcome everyone welcome to the session so excited excited literally after so long i'm taking the session i am i am totally excited you can see that as well great so welcome and yes quickly hit the like button very good very good very good so, so but uh, I asked it in my telegram group and you all said that you want to start the class 12th syllabus first. So that's why I selected this chapter human reproduction and uh, the next chapter will be reproductive health and later on whatever you are going to ask accordingly I will take the sessions. So I will take care the zoology part I will take care of that zoology part and Pankhuri ma'am is going to teach you the bio the botany okay. Ma'am will the chapter be completed today? or there will be the part two no but che, we will try our best to complete it today itself so basically i need your support earlier the session was scheduled at 5 pm but because of some glitch uh, right i uh, scheduled it at 7 pm so you have to support me right you are going to get the breaks as well the there will be no compromise with the content right we will discuss everything in detail as per ncrt and let's finish this chapter today okay and later on later on we will practice the questions and we are going to practice the questions on our unacademy platform in a special class right bache with proper polls with proper quizzes excited okay so let's go let's start the session here and here you guys can see something amazing so again unlock 20 is there right so if you want to join our batch if you want to even join for need 2025 right and even if you want to take two years plan right so here you guys can see for six months the offer price is near about 14,000 even for NEET UG 2026 the for six months right 24 plus six months it is going to be 50,000 so what do you have to do right you have to use the coupon code and that coupon code is Ambeka 10 right Bache? so here you guys can see from December 11th to December 16th you can avail this offer so you are going to get the courses at a very 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 less price and here you guys can see that we are coming to Chennai so anyone here from Chennai anyone anyone here in the session from Chennai yes quick I have to start the class then anyone from Chennai ma'am why were you absent from last few days uh, many things were there and the most important thing is uh, like I got married that's why that's why because of my marriage okay so if you are from Chennai so we really want to meet you I want to meet you on 21st of December right Bache? so there will be a Google form you can check the description box just fill the details there please come to this place if you're nearby if you can manage to come to the center please come there we really want to meet you right very we really want to meet you in person literally okay do come to this place so 21st December right 21st December and Avengers 3.0 now you can see that because of this unlock 20 you will get it at a price of 3367 only so this is the coupon code that you people need to use okay so let's go let's start the chapter and that is the human reproduction okay so you know that it is one of the easiest chapters and you are going to get very good number of questions from this chapter now you know that when you talk about your class 12 syllabus three chapters are deleted am i right three chapters are deleted right so definitely the number of questions 
they are same but number of chapters they are less so you can expect more questions from the most important parts like from the genetics as well right from the biotech as well and even from this reproduction unit okay even from this reproduction unit you guys can expect a very good number of questions this time so here you have three chapters human reproduction is there reproductive health is there sexual reproduction in flowering plants so yes there are chances that this year right you can get six to seven questions from this single chapter only that is human reproduction okay okay so as i said what do you have to do what do you have to do students you need to right whatever you want to drink water juice right coffee tea whatever it is just take that and start making the notes today and thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much guys thank you so much okay ha huh, we'll we'll share my wedding pics as well but not today of course let's study first and then okay but yeah so see after so long i'm taking the class really need your support guys so no one is going to ask for the breaks right you will get the breaks for sure so quickly hit the like button and if you're new to our channel please subscribe our channel please subscribe our channel thank you so much prajwal thank you everyone okay ah, i am not going to forget i will definitely share my pics fine i'm definitely i'm going to share my pics ma'am 6 to 7 questions from this chapter yes yes right even if you will check your previous year papers yes uh, in some exams uh, in i don't remember the year right now so you know five to six questions were there from human reproduction so this year there are chances there are chances so please take this chapter seriously okay so let's start the class so the chapter name is firstly we will start with the basic introduction okay so this is the chapter name so first of all the thing is reproduction re means again production means to produce that's the point right re means again and production means to produce so already existing individuals they are going to produce the new individuals right the same kind of individuals you know that why same kind of individuals here comes the role of the genetics we know it very well right we have already completed this chapter and soon we will have the marathon also so re means again production means to produce so already existing individuals because they need to continue their race okay they need to naru continue their race so they will reproduce and they will give birth to the to their progeny right to the same organisms okay so now the chapter is human reproduction so obviously we are going to talk about the humans here so in the case of humans what we see we used to see the sexual diamorphism can you just tell me the meaning of sexual diamorphism here don't worry the starting is little slow okay it is going to be little slow and then we are going to right we'll catch that momentum don't worry about that <coughs> okay okay so sexual diamorphism what is the meaning of sexual diamorphism and really th this is the speed that i want i'm asking something immediately you have to answer okay whatever i'm going to ask immediately answer that even if you don't know the answer try to answer it i will explain okay ma'am one request me dr strange definitely i will answer all your questions but not immediately right after teaching a topic i'll give you the break and then i will be answering your question okay okay exactly so sexual diamorphism means there are two different sexes there right you know that we talk about the males and even we talk about the females so in our body for digestion digestive system is there for excretion excretory system is there so same way we have the reproductive system as well and because of sexual diamorphism like there are two different sexes right we can differentiate them like in the case of females after puberty the breast development is there right in the case of males there will be the beard there will be the mustache you know that the adam's apple right you know about these basic things isn't it so they are also having the male and the female they are having what they are having their respective reproductive systems so male reproductive system is there female reproductive system is there so if you really want to master this chapter first of all you should know about the male and the female reproductive system in detail right along with diagrams so for this particular chapter diagrams are very 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 important okay diagrams are 
very 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 important this is what you need to take care okay so we have to understand these two systems clear bache we have to understand these two systems okay rohit bache please do not spam why so much makeup first of all it's not too much and it's my choice my life my rules okay okay so there is no need to spam here meri marzi rohit okay so no need to spam you better focus here otherwise leave this class then bache so now when you are talking about the reproduction so there are certain events okay there are certain events as well isn't it isn't it yes or no yes or no can you tell me the trick yes students can you tell me the trick anyone here we are talking about the events of reproduction anyone anyone can you just tell me the trick here if you remember that so the trick here is gif sip and go right i will not take more than 5 minutes for the introduction i will directly jump to the male reproductive system so please be focused very good subhashini very good akankhya very good lakshman excellent excellent so there are reap, there are events in reproduction and we have a trick there and that trick is gif it sip it's go what is the trick repeat everyone it's gif it sip it's go so what is the meaning of this trick so first event is gametogenesis second is insemination then fertilization will be there okay after fertilization there will be the cleavage after cleavage there will be the implantation right what will be there students implantation then comes the placentation the gastrulation organogenesis and finally there is parturition right finally what is there there will be the parturition so these are the events in reproduction what are they these are the events in reproduction clear bache clear bache so it's gif sip and go so gametogenesis means the very first thing that we need to learn is gamete formation bache genesis means formation gametogenesis means gamete formation then comes the insemination the transfer of male gametes into the female genital tract with the help of male copulatory organ okay i'm repeating this again everyone the transfer of male gametes into the female genital tract with the help of male copulatory organ that is penis that is known as insemination so of course when male and the female gamete when they will meet what is going to happen the fertilization isn't it what is going to happen mr hilal fertilization will be there so after fertilization what are we going to get yes everyone i want to see the response in the chat section guys quickly quickly i want to see that energy i want to see the response in the chat section after fertilization what will be there sweetie right there will be the there will be the formation of zygote right there will be the formation of what there will be the formation of zygote which is something very important a vital link it is okay so these two events they are pre fertilization events before fertilization now we'll be talking about the post fertilization events that what is going to happen after the fertilization so what do we have the zygote is there so that zygote that single cell right that single cell which is capable of producing which is capable of growing into a complete individual am i right or not yes bacha am i right or not what is going to happen the zygote it is a single cell it is having the ability that it can grow into a complete individual so can you just tell me what is the name of that property excellent samiksha very good very good excellent samiksha so that property is what that property is cellular totipotency means that single cell is having the ability to grow into a complete organism right bachche to grow into a complete organism very good samiksha excellent very good so after that cleavage right uh, uh, so cleavage is like very rapid divisions that single cell will divide into the multiple cellular structure and finally there will be the implantation there will be the fixation in the uterus okay there will be the fixation in the uterus so uterus is the womb okay where that baby is going to grow 
Are you getting my point? Where that embryo will form, where that fetus will form. Are you getting my point? So if you will watch, I don't know whether you have seen it or not, in the old, you know, uh, the Bollywood movies, right? What they used to say, in Hindi especially, they talk about the stomach, right? Pet mein bachcha hai. It's not like that, it is uterus, right? The baby is not there in the stomach, it is there in the uterus. Are you getting it? It is there in the uterus. The implantation is there in the uterus and it will grow. Okay. So after implantation, the placenta formation is there. You know that a very peculiar feature in our case, right? We are going to get nourishment from our mother. And then finally, the gastrulation, the formation of germ layers, right? The formation of germ layers. So can I relate this topic with the animal kingdom? I am going to relate it because that is how you are going to understand biology in a better way. Okay. So placentation, placenta formation is there. Now, bache, further growth will be there. Obviously, that single cell structure is now growing, becoming multicellular. Further, it will grow. So there comes a time when there will be the formation of the germ layers. I hope you know about the germ layers right i hope you people know about the germ layers what are germ layers do you remember germ layers do you remember them even in the animal kingdom we talk about the germ layers guys so you know that we have ectoderm right there will be the mesoderm there will be the endoderm right we humans we are mammals right we are triploblastic we have three germ layers and these germ layers are the one which are going to form the different different organs different different systems yes or no yes or no laharika is saying wazim sir is in the chats ma'am he is he's the most disturbing element ignore him he's here in the chat to disturb us ignore him um, because look at me why huh sharuk khan oh, look at me huh everyone focus here Focus here. He is here to disturb us. He's like, oh my God, in the chemistry, students should score 180 out of 180. What about biology? Ignore him. Just focus here. Okay, so germ layers, right? That germ layers are going to give rise to the organs. These are germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, endoderm. They are going to give rise to what? They are going to give rise to the to the organs so that's why after gastrulation there will be the organogenesis there will be the organ formation and finally the parturition which is the childbirth so these are the events in the reproduction okay so the trick clear so just type the trick once just type the trick once just type the trick once call Vazim sir why <laughs> and leave him ignore him he's a spammer he is a spammer 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 But gestation is that complete time period, na? Gestation is that time period, that nine months in which all that events are going to take place. Fine, very good, very good. But you see, it's very simple. Genesis means formation, organogenesis means organ formation. That's it, that's all. Okay, so, so before understanding these events in, uh, if you want to understand these events in detail, you should know about the systems first. Okay, so let's start with what? Let's start with the male reproductive system. So what are we going to start first? We are going to start the male reproductive system. Hannah? So diagrams are important. Okay, diagrams are very important here. Clear, bache? So, see this. So, you are preparing for 6 to 7 questions. 6 to 7 question means how many marks? Yes, 6 to 7 question means how many marks? Quick. Wow, spam Vazim sir OP in the chat. So, now you can see, bache, what is he saying? Spam Vazim sir OP in the chats. So, uh, he is actually here to distract us. Okay, don't get distracted. Vazim, I'll talk to you later. Don't get distracted. Okay, very good, very good, very good, guys. Very good. It's a challenge, guys. Don't get distracted. He's distracting you. Learn this thing. He's a spammer right now. He's a spammer right now. Okay, so here you guys can see the diagrams. But yes, Bache, you should know the diagrams given in the NCRT. So I'll show you the both, right? So first of all, there should be the clarity of the diagram. So see, it is a kind of internal section. Okay, so it is showing the scrotum, that darkly pigmented pouch-like structure in which testicles are present. Then it is showing the accessory ducts here, right, Bache? And 
this is it and this is the female reproductive system one by one we are going to discuss it in detail so just have a look of this structure so this is a penis right male copulatory organ you know that it is going to play role in the insemination clear bache and here you guys can see that pigmented pouch like structure the scrotum in which testicles in which testes they are present so can i ask you one question can i ask you one question yes uh, Vazim sir, just read one thing. Someone is saying, who is Vazim sir? Someone is saying, who is Vazim sir? Wow, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Okay, so guys, okay, tell me something very common. What is the difference in testes and testes? Can you just tell me? Anyone here in the class? Anyone here in the class? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Can you just tell me the difference in testes and testes? Anyone? It's a very common question. So those who are saying Vazim sir OP, please write biology OP, biology OP. You are going to get 360 marks. Singular and plural. Which one is singular? Which one is plural? Very good, very good. Noise, noise, noise. So obviously, whichever. see. Ultimately, there is a pouch-like structure in which testes are present, right? You also call them as testicles, okay? So, when you are talking about the single testicle, then it is the testes. When it is TS, TS, of course, it is the plural. Here, you are talking about the pair, okay? Here, you are talking about the pair. Now, you must be thinking that, ma'am, why are you teaching this part to us? But Because, again, again, it can also be asked as a question, okay? okay so here you can see the diagram but 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 before that just look at this diagram right it's very clear it's very clear so that darkly pigmented area right it is the scrotum in which right in which you have what the pair of testes okay what do we have here the pair of testes now you can you see this part this is epididymis this is vasa difference here or vas difference it is going to coil over the urinary bladder. Right, but finally, if you, you can see here, look at this side section, right? Can you see this? This is prostate. This is another gland. Okay, this gland here is the seminal vesicle. So we will discuss each and everything here. This gland here is the bulbo-urethral gland, also known as the corpus gland. And here you can see this is the penis, right? So finally, finally, all that things, basically the semen will enter here. We'll discuss it in detail. Fine. So focus on the diagram here. Focus on the diagram here. Just look at this. So this diagram is individually showing you the glands, the seminal vesicle, the prostate glands, and the bulbo-urethral gland, also known as the corpus gland. And because <laughs> you better focus, not here. Go and revise your chemistry. Stop spamming here. But see, he is so free, right? He has nothing to do. He's here in the biology class. Oh my god. Itna obsession. Itna obsession meri classes se. Mutse se. Ab meri classes dek rahe ho yaar. So please focus here guys. So seminal vesicle, prostate gland and bulbo urethral gland. Okay. So this is the diagram from the NCRT. The side view, you should know about the labeling. Okay. Each and everything should be clear to you. Even if, if they are marking the ejaculatory duct here, you should know that. Okay. You should know that. And this is the another diagram. Okay. This is the another diagram. So let's, 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 let's start that okay so first of all we are going to talk about what we are going to talk about the scrotum fine what are we going to discuss we are going to talk about the scrotum so as i said but the scrotum is a darkly pigmented pouch like structure in which testes are present so you can you can uh, you know focus on one thing here and that is that testes okay that testes they are extra abdominal what are testes testes they are extra abdominal see students in the male fe reproductive system as well in the female reproductive system as well there are two things right that you need to focus the first thing is 
primary sex organs the second thing is secondary sex organs do you know the difference in these two terms yes do you know the difference in these two terms first is primary sex organs and another is secondary sex organs if you know the difference then it will be easy for you to understand the chapter because you know the basic terms yes anyone exactly when it comes to the primary sex organs which are they are the one in which basically what is going to happen what is going to happen in which gamete formation will be there right so they are the organs which form gametes okay and not just the gametes let me tell you not just the gametes they are also releasing the hormones as well the primary sex hormones are also released by them okay the primary hormones uh, sex hormones are also released by them and then comes the secondary sex organs right and when you are talking about the secondary sex organs they are basically they form the passage right they form the passage for that gametes so that they can move so that there can be the union of male and female gamete are you getting it so that there can be the union of male and female gamete so that is the difference so when you talk about the primary sex organ so testes in the case of males and ovaries in the case of female they are they are the primary sex organs testes in the case of male and ovaries in the case of females these are the primary sex organs now bachche when you look at this diagram why why these testes are extra abdominal the reason behind is that the body temperature right right in uh, the body temperature that we have na that is not suitable for spermatogenesis okay that body temperature it is not suitable for the spermatogenesis so basically what is the role of scrotum here so you can even make the notes bachche please write down it's a deeply pigmented pouch like structure in which testes now testes means plural testes are present right and moreover 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 right testes are present so this scrotum is going to lower down the temperature right in the scrotum the temperature is 2 to 2.5 degree celsius less than the body's temperature very good very good excellent right so temperature of scrotum is temperature of scrotum is that is something very 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 important 2 to 2.5 degree celsius less than less than body's temperature less than the body's temperature so that's what you need to remember okay but now the point here is how is it possible isn't it don't you think that you should know about it right so but when you are talking about the scrotum the very first thing is that in the scrotum right you will see that there are sweat glands there is the presence of like here in the skin na there is a presence of sweat gland sweat glands means sweating sweating means you know that then there will be the evaporation and then there will be the cooling like if there will be the sweat on our skin it will get evaporated and cooling effect is there that's something basic isn't it that's something very basic and i hope you all are aware of it right you all are aware of it so this is the first point now second point is we we have two muscles one is the cremaster muscle and another is the darter's muscle and this is what we need to know these are the two muscles and you should know about these muscles right so do you have any idea do you have any idea about it cremaster muscle and the darter's muscle any anyone here do you know about the cremaster muscle and the darter's muscle that these two terms are not given in ncrt but they are very important right they are very important tell me everyone just tell me do you know about elevation of the testes essential flexible fibers anything else anything else
okay so let's discuss about that so always remember the scrotum is a fibromuscular structure what type of structure it is it's a fibromuscular structure means muscles are present so when you talk about the scrotum right beneath the skin you are going to find the datus muscle right in the scrotum lining you are going to find the datus muscle even in that pineal shaft also even in that foreskin you will find which muscle you will find the datus muscle okay now when you are talking about the cremaster muscle basically these two muscles they help in maintaining the temperature right both of them both of them are going to maintain the temperature but how that is uh, that is what I'm explaining right now. So basically, cremastum uh, datus muscle, they are lining the skin, the skin of the scrotum. Moreover, they are even in that pineal shaft, even in penis, even they are in that, the anterior part of that penis, now that uh, foreskin, even datus muscle, the muscles are present there. Now when you are talking about the cremaster muscle, so cremaster muscles are mainly lining the testis. What are they doing? They are mainly what are they doing dear students they are mainly lining the testis okay right they are mainly doing what they are mainly lining the testis now bache because scrotum is extra abdominal okay it is outside the abdominal region it is extra abdominal but still these testes they are connected to the abdominal part to the pelvic part do you know how with the help of certain canal with the help of canals and that canals are what that are the inguinal canals right that canals are inguinal canals can you see that it is important and interesting as well i'm going to relate it with the testis so please listen to me very carefully okay and soon we are going to speed up as well don't worry about that so here it is the scrotum the datus muscles are present cream master muscles as i said they are lining the testis and now i'm talking about one canal and what is that canal that is the inguinal canal this inguinal canal is connecting these testis to the abdominal part to that pelvic cavity basically bache what is the story like during the pregnancy or you can say that during that gestation period do you know about the gestation period yes do you know about the gestation period in the case of humans it is for the nine months you know the time when the female conceive right and then the child birth this time period is basically the gestation period okay this is basically the gestation period so in the gest during the gest uh, gestation period initially the testes they are they are growing in the abdomen only okay initially they are growing in the abdomen only but what is going to happen during seventh month of pregnancy okay during seventh month of pregnancy testes testes are going to descend into the scrotum okay these testes they will pass to the scrotum through the inguinal canal are you getting it bache through the inguinal canal please remember this this is something very important okay this is something very important through the inguinal canal okay done bache so so in this so through this inguinal canal the testes are going to descend in the scrotum when during seven month of pregnancy okay so in this inguinal canal you are also going to find you are also going to see what the spermatic cord do you do you know this word yes students it is even given in ncrt here the spermatic cord is present do you know about this the spermatic cord is present basically this spermatic cord is attaching these testes to the dorsal abdominal wall okay these the spermatic cord it is attaching the testis to the dorsal abdominal wall and when you are talking about the spermatic cord what what do you think what is going to what will be there in that spermatic cord according to you nothing but che, here you will see the fibers the elastic fibers there will be the spermatic artery there will be the spermatic vein that's all okay okay yes are you getting it so basically this spermatic cord it is having the elastin fibers it is having the the gonadal uh, veins it is having the arteries it is having the nerves it is having the lymphatic capillaries even the vasa difference the vas difference that thick 
musk the thick duck we will talk about it as well it is also there in this permetic code is that clear so everyone please in the chat section do let me know what is permetic code spermetic code is yes students spermetic code is it is having what it is having the spermatic artery the basically gonadal artery gonadal veins right nerves are there uh, lymphatic veins are uh, yeah lymph vessels are there right and even the vast difference is present so this is this spermatic cord is joining this testis to the dorsal abdominal wall now you must be thinking that ma'am why are you explaining it now isn't it isn't it that why are you explaining it now you were talking about the muscles you were talking about the cremaster and the datus muscle the reason is bachi that these cremaster muscles they are lining the testis and they are also present here in this permetic cord here 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 you are also going to find these uh, these uh, cremaster muscles so just look at the position here okay just look at the position here so if this is the case so definitely cremaster muscles are helping in the elevation of the testis right they will help in what their contraction will help in the elevation of the testis okay yes or no bachche i am akshay i am making the notes and akhin bachche the i think the speed is fine bachche okay is that clear or not is that clear or not tell me so cremaster muscle and the datus muscle they help in maintaining the temperature in that scrotum okay why that uh, less temperature is required because that temperature is suitable for the spermatogenesis i will tell you the reason as well second thing is how are they helping the cremaster muscles they help in the elevation of the testis okay so datus muscle because they are lining the skin of that uh, scrotum so obviously they will shrink that skin also so basically the main motive here is main motive here is to bring that scrotum part the testis part closer to the pelvic cavity yes or no closer to the pelvic cavity yes or no why why because when there is a cold season when the temperature is low right so elevation of the testis will be there right that part will be closer to the pelvic cavity and they are going to absorb the heat from the body right they are going to absorb the heat from the body okay so obviously right so is it clear or not that like when the temperature is very low that is how the temperature will be maintained is that clear or not tell me is that clear or not so datus muscle help in the regulation of the temperature in the in the cold season yes or no it is going to help the, the uh, help to regulate the temperature in the during cold season okay so it will contract right in cold season datus muscles they will remain contracted in the cold they will contract in the cold season and in the warm season they are relaxed because then there is no need to absorb the heat from the body so that's how it helps okay that's how it helps so as i said cremaster muscles they are lining the testis part they are present in the inguinal canal so they will help in elevation of testis bachche right they will help in elevation of testis is that clear yes is that clear so that is why in the case of males okay it is advised that they should not they should not wear very tight jeans why because if they will wear very tight jeans so what is going to happen right obviously the, the uh, you know that in that case the sweating will be too much okay the sweating irritation all the things will be too much if the jeans are too tight okay so temperature be, will also vary accordingly so it is going to affect the spermatogenesis right even even like one student is also spamming here in the chat section but that's a fact in the case of males it is advised that they should not take the bath with very hot water right with very hot water even it is not good for them because temperature changes will be there of course right and that is going to affect what that is going to affect the spermatogenesis getting it yes bachche are you getting it okay so this part clear that how the temperature will be maintained by scrotum even i told you about the glands here the sweat glands here is that clear sure the muscles clear and moreover right bachche <coughs> this uh, it has been asked as a question in the aims exam right so you should focus here fine bachche you should focus here so basically these testes they are also attached to the scrotal wall it's not like that that they are just hanging there no they are also attached to the scrotal wall they are attached with the help of fibers so basically in this caudal region 
right here the testes they are attached to the scrotal wall so they are attached with the help of fibers and that fiber is basically gubber naculum that is the spelling gubber naculum right it is gubber naculum please write down okay but in that see dr strange in the winters because they need to get the body heat so obviously they will get elevated right towards the pelvic cavity okay so gubber naculum so each test is they are attached to the walls of the scrotal sac through the fibers through the elastic fibers so the group of these fibers they are known as gubber naculum so it has been asked as a question in the aims examination it is not given in ncrt i'm telling you but it was there in the aims examination that's why i'm telling you right by any chance if you will get the question you should know about it clear bachche and this gubber naculum is also known as that uh, mesosium okay it is also known as that mesosium understood clear done bachche yes is it clear the canal clear the spermatic cord clear han ji bharat veshu bachche it is for the attachment na veshu that's what i just said fine so during 7 month of 7th month of pregnancy the testes they will descend into the into the scrotum and if they are not descended then can you tell me can you tell me about the condition then can you just tell me about the condition then yes if the test is they are not descended into the scrotum then what is the case exactly very good very good this word is important please note down that is crypt orchidism okay crypt orchidism undescended undescended testes clear bachche what is crypt orchidism it is the undescended testes that's what you need to remember that is crypt orchidism clear bachche so i hope this part is clear and uh, moreover uh, see sperms they are formed from the cells that cells are known as spermatogonia gonia is plural gonium is singular okay so spermatogonia they are going to form what they are going to form what bachche they are going to form the sperm so basically this spermatogonia they are temperature sensitive fine so if testes are undescended the sperm production will not be there but but you i i hope you know about the leydig cells the interstitial cells which are which are going to release the testosterone so still even if testes are undescended still the testosterone production will be there right so that uh, uh, masculine features will be there but 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 the sperm production will not be there so no sperm production means the sterility okay it means what it means sterility understood understood very good very good so cryptorchidism clear okay so the next thing that we need to understand is of course the testes the pair of testes which are also known as primary sex organs right why why do we call it as primary sex organ right let's repeat it again because there will be the sperm production means gamete production okay in the case of males the gametes are sperm right sperm is plural spermatozoa is singular so sperm production is there spermatogenesis is there in the testes that's why primary sex organ moreover moreover it releases what male sex hormones right male sex hormones and that are known as androgens clear bachche that are androgens male sex hormones for the sex hormones this is a term that we use androgen and yes please mention one more point bachche the sex hormones they are of steroidal nature right they are not proteinaceous they are not made up of amino acids they are of steroidal nature i hope you can relate this part with the chemical control and uh, uh, chemical control and integration chapter because 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 these hormones they are steroidal they are made up of steroids so their receptors are intracellular right the receptors for such hormones they are intracellular understood 
Understood? So testes, their primary sex organ, the main function is of sperm production and to release the male sex hormones. Androgens, the main, the main one is your testosterone. Okay, the main one is what? Testosterone. Clear, bache? So look at this diagram. Look at this diagram here. So it is a kind of, you know, internal structure of the testis. This diagram. What is it? It is the internal structure of the testis. Can you see that? Right? Can you see that, bache? Can you see some coiled tube-like structures? Yes? Can you see that? Yes or no? So that's what we need to understand. Fine. Let's talk about this diagram. See, it's a very clear one. So here you can see the scrotum, the pouch-like structure, the internal part. This is the testis here. So if you can see these canals, now see the network, another tube-like structures. Okay. So let's talk about it. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the bache coverings of testis. First of all, what are we going to discuss? We are going to talk about the coverings of testis. Can you tell me about that coverings? Yes, bache. Tell me. See, testis they are covered with three coats. There are three coverings, and for that coverings also there is a trick that is valve. Well. Okay, what is the trick here? Very good, Samiksha. That is valve. So, see, for covering, we use this word, tunica. Okay, tunica is the word which is used for covering. So, if I am saying the trick is valve here, so here means, so first of all, you need to put the word tunica, tunica and tunica. So, tunica vaginalis, the outermost, tunica albuginea, the middle one, and then there is the tunica vesculosa, the innermost covering is that clear so these are the three coverings of the testis important question right it is a very important question clear bache clear bache yes or no so tunica vaginalis tunica albuginea tunica vesculosa so see vesculosa is the word vesculosa means you can relate with the blood supply yes or no if vesculosa is the word so can i relate it with the blood supply of course i can right abundant blood supply will be there so definitely this is going to be the innermost layer it is towards the inner side this is what you have to remember vesculosa vascular blood supply is there so that's why innermost part right vesculosa so outermost is tunica vaginalis middle one is albuginia and innermost is vesculosa that's what you need to remember okay bache that's what you need to remember so if you talk about the the like uh, the what is present in these coverings so you know that they are meant for protect, uh, protection so here this tunica vaginalis is having that visceral and parietal layers ultimately meant for the protection here in the tunica albuginea you will see the fibers okay the thick fibers which are going to which are protecting it yes or no yes or no tunica albuginea here also you will see some dense white fibers right which are covering the testis right dense white fibers are present here that's how you can write dense white fibrous layer okay dense white fibrous layer it is your tunica tunica albuginea then bache it is your tunica albuginea then innermost is the tunica vesculosa right which is the most vascular coat is that clear which is the most vascular coat is that clear now but when you look at these uh, testers okay let's say imagine a building that building is having 250 floors imagine there is a building that building is having 250 floors okay and that 250 floors are having each floor each floor is having one two three apartments that's my way to remember this part okay that's my way to remember this part that there is a building 250 floors are there each floor is having one two three apartments now what is the meaning here actually here in the structure of testes when you look at the structure students so you are going to see certain compartments what will you see there you are going to see certain compartments Can you see that? 
tell me can you see that testes are present here these testes are having the coverings you know about the coverings there is a trick that is valve vaginalis albuginea vesculosa so vesculosa is the innermost right vesculosa is what it is the innermost yes bache it is the innermost covering so actually in the testes these testes are divided right they are having certain certain compartments and we used to call it as we used to call it as yes bache can you tell me what is the word for that compartments it is the testicular lobules what are they they are testicular lobules right bache they are yes everyone please type it in the chat section they are testicular lobules and these testicular lobules they are lined with tunica vesculosa that's what you need to remember okay they are lined with what they are lined with the tunica vesculosa okay so testes it is divided it is having testicular lobules these lobules are lined with the tunica vesculosa and here here in these lobules you will see one two three highly coiled semini ferrous tubules okay now i hope the diagram is clear to you right so in these testicular lobules basically you are going to see one two three highly coiled okay highly coiled semini ferrous tubules understood so remember always remember this part bache that actually these semini ferrous tubules they are the part of testes basically they are testes itself so semini ferrous tubules it is the actual site of spermatogenesis that's what you need to remember okay it is the actual site of spermatogenesis it is the place where the sperm production will occur genesis means formation spermatogenesis means sperm formation clear bache understood understood okay so testicular lobules clear tunica vesculosa clear semini ferrous tubules clear so semini ferrous tubule as i said it is the site of spermatogenesis so we will discuss the cross section of the semini ferrous tubule we are going to discuss the cross section of the semini ferrous tubule in detail but before that what we need to focus let's talk about the the, the complete system then we will come to this part okay let's understand the diagram and then let's talk about this so see bache if in semini ferrous tubule the sperm production is there obviously we know that after sperm production what is going to happen you know that insemination is there insemination is there like male gametes they need to be transferred in the female genital tract with the help of what with the help of male copulatory organ with the help of male genitalia what is that that is the penis okay so we need to transfer right that these these gametes they need to be transferred from the semini ferrous tubule towards that penis and from penis from that opening they will be ejaculated in the female genital tract so now this is the testes part the next part that we are going to discuss in the ncrt itself this this topic is divided like this that you will talk about primary sex organs you will talk about accessory ducts you will talk about accessory glands that's how it is divided right yes mr dr strange that's how it is divided right right that's how it is divided so so okay so basically next to it right remember the semini ferrous tubule in which testes are formed further the testes will be passed so next to it the part that you need to discuss is what this is very important see i'm using the short form semini ferrous tubule from semini ferrous tubule you will see what is going to arise vasa efferentia right you are going to talk about the ducts now right that's how it is divided in ncrt we will read the ncrt as well semini ferrous tubule it is not accessory duct very common mistake it's a very common mistake semini ferrous tubule is basically the part of testes it is not the accessory duct so next to it from the semini ferrous tubule what is arising bache your vasa efferentia is arising what is arising your vasa efferentia is arising am i right or wrong here is it vasa efferentia or it is testes anyone anyone let's let's understand it what should be there there should be uh, vasa efferentia or it is testes 
it's not epididymis at least students 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 see from this test is no doubt further vasa efferentia will be there but before that there will be the network like all that seminiferous tubule we are going to bring the sperms but there will be the network network of ducts and we used to call it as rete testis so rete testis first and then from these rete testis right there will be what vasa efferentia will be there right so after rete testis you will be talking about vasa efferentia also known as vas efferens right and then this vasa efferentia it will further go it is going to form the epididymis okay epididymis and next to epididymis will be vasa differentia okay or vas difference so you should know about it it is important right they can ask you the sequence they can also ask you the passage of the sperms so sperm production will be there in the seminiferous tubule and then the seminiferous tubule they are forming a network that network is rete testis it is the part of accessory ducts we have another ducts also but they are not given in ncrt right so that's why i am not uh, learning uh, i am not teaching you this part in detail okay so rete testis then comes vasa efferentia then comes epididymis the place where there is a temporary storage and maturation of sperms both the lines are important temporary storage and maturation of sperms next comes the vasa differentia and then we'll be talking about the ejaculatory duct okay so this is about what this is about the accessory ducts right we will also read it we will also discuss them in detail okay so first of all let's talk about the diagram so here you guys can see the seminiferous tubule they are forming this network rete testis clear bache clear bache so from these rete testis vasa efferentia will arise and further they are forming this epididymis so this complete part okay this complete part is the epididymis here epididymis here where the temporary storage and maturation of sperm is there remember both the words temporary storage and maturation sperms will be stored there temporarily plus they will get mature okay okay and then next to it is this one it is your vas difference or vasa differentia or ductus difference so first of all understand the diagram okay is it clear understand the diagram see this testis epididymis vas difference which will coil over the urinary bladder right so we have the pair of vas difference it is going to coil over the urinary bladder okay okay so next is the bache accessory glands right you should know where are they present right you should know about this diagram then individually we will discuss no worry so basically when it comes to the accessory glands so in male reproductive system you are going to talk about seminal vesicles prostate gland bulbo urethral gland okay bulbo urethral gland also known as copper's gland right also known as copper's gland are you getting it so see this seminal vesicle it is also paired important question prostate gland it is single it is not paired bache and bulbo urethral gland also known as copper's gland it is also paired are you getting it it is also paired okay it is also paired bache prince they have added few extra topics clear 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 so look at the position one by one we will discuss it further so basically these glands they will help they are going to form a fluid right the semen uh, the semen and that semen will having uh, that semen will be having extra secretions along with the sperms so that's what we need to discuss okay so diagram part clear students can you see that diagram so see the vas difference it is coiling over the urinary bladder then it is receiving the secretions of the seminal vesicle okay see seminal vesicle this is a very small duct from that seminal vesicle here you are having what you are having the vas difference you are having the vas difference and then next to it is what ejaculatory duct next to it is what like when this uh, seminal vesicle it will receive vas difference here then they are going to form what they will form the pair of ejaculatory duct 
डन बच्चे डन एंड फाइनली इट विल ओपन इन द यूरेथ्रा अंडरस्टड द डायग्राम पार्ट क्लियर येस प्रज्वल द डायग्राम पार्ट क्लियर डन ओके सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट वी नीड टू डिस्कस इज सेमिनी फेरेस्टिब्यूल्स इन डिटेल ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट इट इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट प्लीज सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द सेमिनी फेरेस्टिब्यूल सो प्लीज लिसन टू मी केयरफुली बिकॉज दिस विल हेल्प यू टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्पर्मेटोजेनेसिस ओके सो बेसिकली नाउ विद इन द टेस्ट इज वॉट डू वी हैव द टेस्ट इज सॉरी विद इन द टेस्ट इज द सेमिनी फेरेस्टिब्यूल्स आर देर सो नाउ यू आर टेकिंग अ सेक्शन ऑफ इट यू आर टेकिंग अ क्रॉस सेक्शन ऑफ इट सो वेन यू आर टेकिंग अ क्रॉस सेक्शन वट आर यू गोइंग टू सी यू आर गोइंग टू सी सर्टन सेल्स ऑफ कोर्स राइट लाइक इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द सेमिनी फेरेस्टिब्यूल you are talking about the walls of the seminiferestibule so in the walls of the seminiferestibule bachche you will see certain cells do you know about that cells do you know about that cells see a cube like right cube like epithelium first of all this is what you need to remember cube like epithelium is going to cover the seminiferestibule it is again a it is again an important question can you see that see so basically bachche when you are talking about the seminiferous tubule the lining of seminiferous tubule is basically made up of cuboidal epithelium and that cuboidal epithelium is nothing but it is the germinal epithelium what is it bachche it is also known as what yes students it is known as germinal epithelium what is it it is the germinal epithelium yes bachche everyone please answer answer it to me quickly what is it it is the germinal epithelium right it is the germinal epithelium okay so what are we talking we are talking about the seminiferous tubule we are discussing the structure of seminiferous tubule in detail why because it is a very important topic okay so wall of each seminiferous tubule is having single layered cuboidal epithelium and that epithelium is known as germinal epithelium it's a pyq now why why this cuboidal epithelium is known as germinal epithelium because initially it was believed that this germinal epithelium is forming the germ cells okay in the ncrt still it is written like this but actually that's not the story okay so during initial initial weeks of the development right so from the yolk sac basically yolk sac we will talk about uh, the yolk sac also yolk sac is a extra embryonic membrane so basically the yolk sac from the yolk sac certain cells pgcs what is what is the meaning of that pgcs they are primordial or you can say that precursor germ cells precursor do you understand the meaning of precursor so they are the precursor germ cells or so from the yolk sac they'll find their way and they'll move towards the gonads and these precursor germ cells they are basically going to form the germ cells that is the actual story primordial germ cells are the precursor germ cells that is the actual story okay samiksha basically these pgcs they are what they are the precursors they are the one which are going to form the germ cells so from yolk sac they will find their way towards the gonads and they will form germ cells right it is the actual thing but initially it was believed that germinal epithelium that this particular epithelium is forming germ cells so it is named as germinal epithelium so it's a previous year question that germinal epithelium is lining what or germinal epithelium is having what type of cells so we should know about it okay okay we should know about it clear bachche clear bachche so what will you see you are going to see a single layer right you are going to see a single layer of the cube like cells right uh, the, uh, basically that are what that are the germinal that is the germinal epithelium and 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 it is not like that if you will see at certain places there are certain cuboidal cells also so that cuboidal cells are the sertoli cells okay so you should know about it sertoli cells are cuboidal germinal epithelium which is going to form male germ cells which is believed right so it is cuboidal clear bachche it is cuboidal is that clear 
is that clear sertoli cells what are they they are the columnar cells right bachche so sertoli cells they have another names also like sustentacular cells they are also known as the nurse cells why because they are going to nourish the developing spermatozoa that's what we need to discuss now okay bachche that's what we need to discuss now clear so basically here in the walls of if you will see here in the walls of seminiferous tubule see the voidal epithelium is there and here in these walls you will see the stages of the spermatogenesis you will see how that sperms they are growing okay how that sperms they are growing this is what we are going to see here okay okay done so now when you are talking about this columnar cell which is the sertoli cell it is meant for the it for the nourishment okay it is going to nourish the developing spermatozoa it is going to do what it is going to nourish the developing spermatozoa so basically here nearby to it you will see that different different stages of spermatogenesis you will see primary first of all spermatogonia primary spermatocyte second the spermated slowly slowly they are going to form the sperms and that sperms will be released here in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule is that clear is that clear so with this sertoli cells the the uh, you know the cells that are forming the sperms they are also nearby they are also nearby there so first of all tell me this part clear this part clear so in the wall of seminiferous tubules spermatogenesis will be there finally the sperms they will be released in the lumen of the right lumen of the seminiferous tubule and that is known as spermiation okay that is known as spermiation what is it spermiation the release of sperms in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule or in another words you can say that when sperms they are mature they are going to leave the sertoli cells they will find their way they will move to that lumen and finally further they will move so that part when they are you know released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule that is spermiation okay that is spermiation is that clear this word is very important fine this word is very important now this is not the only story here now you know we are taking the cross section of the seminiferous tubule so here in the surrounding what will you see you are going to see some another cells there are many you know some cells are there which are even going to you know uh, provide the immunity as well like uh, not exactly the immunity like they will protect okay so here in the surrounding you will find some other cells and we used to call them as leydig cells they are very important leydig cells what are they they are leydig cells so they are not present within the seminiferous tubule outside the seminiferous tubule here in the stroma they are present in the connective tissue they are present the leydig cell so they are also known as interstitial cells what are they students they are also known as interstitial cells is that clear leydig cells they are also known as yes bachche vijay they are also known as interstitial cells so these two are the main cells which we need to know about the male reproductive system the sertoli cells sustentacular or nurse cell it is one and the same things oh, oh my bad this is not cuboidal this is columnar the shape is columnar germinal epithelium is cuboidal my mistake okay this is columnar cells the shape is like this na tall and cylinder so this is columnar and the germinal epithelium is cuboidal okay okay so these two cells are the most important cells and one should know their uh, functions so can you just tell me about the functions like when you talk about the leydig cells also known as interstitial cells so they release male sex hormones right its main function is to release male sex hormones and majorly you know that that is testosterone and that is important for what that is important for spermatogenesis that is important for having that secondary sexual characters as well okay that is important for having that secondary sexual character as well so it is the main male sex hormone right which another word we use for that sex hormones androgens clear with che they are androgens and moreover always remember that these androgens these male sex hormones what are they students they are the they are having the steroidal uh, nature they are steroidal in nature they are made up of steroids so because of that their receptors are intracellular okay because of that their receptors they are intracellular understood now the sertoli cells 
also known as nerve cells okay so as i said they will nourish the developing spermatozoa i will tell you how this is important to know right spermatozoa is singular sperm is plural bachche satoli cells they form blood testes sorry blood yeah they are form, going to form a barrier can you tell me about that barrier yes bachche they are going to form a barrier blood testes barrier do you know that yes do you know that when you talk about the satoli cells they are going to form or they are going to form blood testes barrier they are the basis of that blood testes barrier actually sperms they are formed from spermatogonia right these sperms they are not getting the blood like they are not having the direct contact with our blood okay they are not having the direct contact with our blood basically satoli cells will absorb the nourishment from the blood they will give it to the uh, sperms okay so sperms they do not have the direct contact with the blood right otherwise you know the immune cells which are present in the blood they will destroy them because that sperms are not having that receptors ki oh the cell is <coughs> not from uh, that that self <coughs> receptors are not there in the case of sperms okay they are not there in the case of sperm so this is what you need to remember that's how it helps in nourishment of the developing spermatozoa so these satoli cells they form the blood testes barrier the function of satoli cell individually it is very important right it is very important you should know about it that's why i am emphasizing it more okay that's why i am emphasizing it more so it does nourish the developing spermatozoa form blood testes barrier right and moreover these satoli cells they release abp now what is this abp abp is androgen binding protein what is this abp please write down in the chat section everyone your energy should be high okay your energy should be high so what will it do androgen it is the androgen binding protein it will release androgen binding protein so abp androgen binding protein so basically this abp it is going to concentrate the testosterone in the seminiferous tissue what is the function of this androgen binding protein it concentrates it concentrates testosterone in seminiferous tissue and why is it important it is important for the spermatogenesis isn't it it is very important for what it is very important for the spermatogenesis so that's what you need to remember it is important clear bachche it is important clear bachche and moreover satoli cells they produce inhibin and what is inhibin inhibin is a protein hormone right bachche inhibin is a protein hormone it is not steroidal in nature it is a protein hormone inhibit so according to you gayatri what will be the role of inhibin according to you what that inhibin can do inhibin is present in male body as well it is present in female body as well inhibin it is present in male body as well it is present in female body as well can you tell me the role of inhibin very good inhibin means to inhibit to inhibit means to stop so basically satoli cells they release the inhibin that is going to inhibit fsh secretion the follicle stimulating hormone secretion clear bachche it is going to stop what it is going to stop fsh secretion done bachche done so that is the role of the satoli cell very important right very important it is having that connection with that developing uh, cells right right so that's how it is going to nourish fine is that clear not just the inhibin but the satoli cells they also release anti mullerian hormone anyone in the class who's aware of it anti mullerian hormone anti mullerian mullerian basically it's a duck during the initial development mullerian duck it is going to form the female reproductive system female reproductive ducks and wolfian one is going to form the male accessory ducks so satoli cells they are releasing anti mullerian hormone because female is a default sex do you know do you understand the meaning here right do you understand the meaning here that female is a default sex you know when i heard it for the first time i was amazed seriously like if if for the initial months of during the initial months of pregnancy if there is no update that what is going to form male or the female this is interesting not given in ncrt 
okay okay not given in ncrt but this is something interesting you are going to love that <clears throat> so basically female is a default sex like if there is a no hormonal secretion or no like there is no uh, update that what needs to form right if there is no if there is no y chromosome if there is no such hormones by default female will form right by default female will form that's why we say now why hormone is very important why chromosome is very important in the case of males why chromosome is the one which is going to decide whether testes will form or not right that y chromosome is having the test is a determining factor that is tdf test is a determining factor this is something extra right this is just for your knowledge no need to write down it's something very interesting so that y chromosome is having that tdf test is determining factor so if no y chromosome by default female sex will form so female is a default sex female is a default sex female is going to form if there is no command for anything i i seriously don't know like sometimes it is very difficult to explain it but yeah it is written in books right it is literally written in books okay so now the point is that mullerian duck right it is going to further grow into the female uh, ducks and wolfian one forms the male ducks so anti mullerian hormone means it will not let that mullerian to grow obviously male system will form it's like that fine it's like that clear bache clear bache so fsh acts on stoli cells but stoli cells when not required they will release inhibin which itself is going to stop the fsh secretion again a very important thing okay bache okay bache so basically look at this diagram i hope now it is making sense ledig cells they are going to form the they are, they are going to form the testosterone here in this stroma so because satoli cells they are releasing abp they are releasing androgen binding protein so that's why this testosterone from the surrounding it will diffuse into this seminiferous tubule and here it will help in the sperm production that is the spermatogenesis clear bache that is the spermatogenesis understood sure yes everyone is this is it clear it is important it is important now <clears throat> after this i hope you can understand right i hope you can understand that there will be the now the sperm production is there spermatogenesis is there we will discuss spermatogenesis also right but firstly let's finish the system so in some books it is given that spermatogenesis it took 75 days in some books it is given it is 65 days like in uh, i was reading some foreign author books so you can roughly say that within 65 to 75 days the sperm production will be there the sperms are going to form clear bachche sperms are going to form okay so seminiferous tubule next to it is the reti testis right the sperms will be passed to the reti testis then there will be vasa efferentia am i right and then finally there will be epididymis happy didymus isn't it isn't it so now bachche when you talk about this happy didymus now what is it it is the place where there is the temporary the temporary word is important temporary storage and maturation do not ignore this word maturation storage and maturation of sperms will be there there will be the temporary storage and maturation of sperms what will be there priya what will be there priya what will be there temporary storage and maturation of sperm right so look at this look at this diagram where is that diagram this this one even you can see this one so this is the epididymis right so this region is the this is vasa efferentia this is the head part head like we used to put the cap over here no so this is caput epididymis this part is the body body for body we use the word corpus so this is corpus epididymis not so important so you can ignore it as well this is the caudal end tail end so you use the word cauda cauda epididymis it's simple na when you relate the things right then you understand them in a better way caput corpus caudal Here, caput, 
corpus caudal so here there is a temporary storage and maturation of the sperm now the point is see if sperms are directly taken from the seminiferous tubule right this is something very interesting if sperms they are directly taken from the seminiferous tubule if they are not stored in the epididymis but they are not going to be mobile they do not have the mobility then do you know that they do not have the mobility then right if sperms are taken directly from the seminiferous tubule for some time they need to be there in the epididymis so that they can become mature they gain the mobility there the motility there basically the motility there basically this is important it is given in ncrt okay okay so that's what you need to remember that's what you need to remember okay epididymis temporary storage and the maturation of sperms will be there obviously certain fluids are present there now which will help in the maturation so now next to it now see there will be this duct that is known as your vas difference right next to it is what the duct the vas difference isn't it isn't it yes tell me tell me quickly so vas difference is going to emerge from this part no tail part of this epididymis from the cauda from the cauda epididymis it is going to emerge tell me yes or no yes or no so it is going to come coil over the urinary bladder it will receive the secretion of seminary vesicle seminal vesicle and finally you know that when both of them they will join right they will form the ejaculatory duct so you have a pair of ejaculatory duct never ever forget it right never ever forget it so you have a pair of ejaculatory duct so how that ejaculatory duct will form when a uh, vas difference it will receive the secretion of seminal vesicle they are going to join that is the ejaculatory duct okay this is not out of ncrt this is important varun if you are not finding it useful you can ignore it okay it's your choice no need to spam fine that is ejaculatory duct understood so here you guys can see this is a wonderful diagram students right we'll come to this uh, slide again so here you can see the wall of the seminiferous tubule can you see that part the wall of the seminiferous tubule and here you have the lumen as well so in the wall see this see this right can you see that yes bache can you see that that <coughs> there will be the there, there are the stages see the spermatogonia primary spermatocyte the secondary spermatocyte the spermated and the sperm is there okay so that's how you have to remember so in the wall of seminiferous tubule this is happening and once the sperm they become mature they'll be released in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and bache that is known as spermiation what is it it is known as spermiation is that clear is that clear this word is important clear bache see bache some students are saying please increase volume but some are saying that uh that voice is fine okay so i don't know what's the issue okay so this part clear fine 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 so now let's talk about these accessory glands now let's talk about their secretions so you have the seminal vesicle which is paired the prostate which is single okay then comes the bulbo urethral gland also known as corpus gland again paired fine again paired so that's what we need to discuss now clear bachche that's what we need to discuss now let's talk about these accessory glands as well okay so first of all let's start with the seminal vesicle so bachche basically the semen will be formed in the male system right what is that semen semen is having sperms along with the useful secretions for that sperms basically it's a kind of composition in which sperms are also present there are certain uh, chemicals the enzymes are present the fructose is present there that's what we need to discuss okay bachche priya subhashini everyone so bachche see tell me quickly tell me quickly are you understanding this part yes or no are you understanding this part yes or no gayatri let's complete the male system first and then there will be the break So, bache, high on energy. Yes, very good. 
I really want to see some fire emojis here in the chat section. Quick. Yes, everyone. Quick. Quick, quick, quick. I don't know how to increase the sound. <coughs> Very good. Excellent. And quickly hit the like button as well. Good, very good, very good, very good. Thank you, blue. Okay, so paired seminal vesicle. Okay, so obviously they are glands. What is the function of a gland to secrete? Right, so 70% of the semen is formed by the seminal vesicles. Right, 70% of the semen is formed by what? Yes, everyone. Yes, everyone. Laharika, tell me 70% of the semen is formed by what? Quick, that pH and that composition, everything is important. 70% of semen is formed by the seminal vesicle. So that's what we need to remember now. So let's start that part. Just a minute. Okay. Done, bache. So. Write down. So 60 to 70% of semen is formed by seminal vesicle that secretions are known as seminal plasma this is the word that you use okay students 60 to 70 percent right now seminal vesicle they are paired they are present near the urinary bladder bladder this is about their position and when you talk about the composition of the seminal plasma the ph here is near about 7.5 so it's basic of course yes or no this ph is basic right this ph is basic in some books it is written 7.3 in some books it is written 7.5 so basically it is the basic ph now this basic fluid this fluid having the basic ph it is very important because bache, ultimately all that secretions they are going to nourish that sperms they are going to protect that sperms they are going to help that sperm for its role right so this basic fluid right you know that when that sperms they need to pass from the penis as well from that urethra as well so that is also having that acidity right so this this fluid is going to help there even in female genital tract lactic acid is present that is also acidic so it is going to neutralize that acidity okay it is going to do what it is going to neutralize that acidity clear bache? so these secretions they are going to include what there will be the in the seminal vesicle it is going to release fructose even the prostaglandins this is very important certain hormones are there certain enzymes are there that will be released by this seminal vesicle so you need to know about it okay okay write down you can get this question so fructose will be there in the seminal fluid right bache the prostaglandins will be there in the seminal fluid certain hormones are there in the seminal fluid and not just the hormones there will be the clotting factors as well clear bache? there will be the clotting factors as well yes in the seminal fluid you are going to get the clotting proteins as well they are different from the clotting proteins present in the blood now let me explain this is important now when we talk about the fructose okay so fructose is the source of energy for sperms it's it's acting like a source of energy for sperms you know now fructose fructose is also hexose right it is also hexose it is also having six carbons it is a ketose okay okay it is having the ketone group c6 h12o6 fructose is also same like glucose yes bache c6 h12o6 that is the formula of fructose fructose is basically a ketose right so it is the source of energy sperms they are not going to use the glucose they are going to use the fructose they are going to use the fructose right bache right bache clear bache bache if i am not writing everything na zeno that's the that's the thing that you have to do if I'm explaining something, you can just note down, right? I'm not here to spoon feed you people. 
right so fructose so hormones like prostaglandins now when you talk about the prostaglandins they are also very important prostaglandins they are also very important their role is very important but they are meant for the contraction you know these prostaglandins if they are not present it will not right because these prostaglandins they help in the contraction they will help in the contraction of the uterus right when the sperms when the semen it is released in female genital tract it needs to sperm they needs to go to the fallopian tube so the contraction of female system is re required right the contraction is required there so prostaglandins they are they are required they are going to do that contraction clear bachche yes or no so they are going to stimulate the uterus contraction which helps in the movement of sperm fine bachche fine bachche yes or no and when you are talking about the clotting protein one student is asking now what is the meaning of these clotting proteins bachche semen when it uh, sorry semen when it is ejaculated okay semen when it is ejaculated when it is released in female genital tract after that it gets coagulated it gets clotted because of these clotting proteins also semen is basically clotted it is coagulated why why can you just tell me that's your homework okay that's your homework why is it necessary to clot to coagulate the semen okay anyone in the class anyone in the class anyone if you know the answer do let me know to reduce acidity no not exactly not exactly very good samriya very good very good exactly to conserve the energy yes to conserve the energy of course right so clotting proteins are there which clot the semen after ejaculation of course clear bachche so not just the fructose prostaglandin and clotting proteins right the certain other chemicals like citrate inositols etc which are you know going to provide energy to the sperms which are going to uh, uh, reduce the acidity there are various things which are present in this seminal fluid right so 60% 60 to 70% of the semen is formed by seminal vesicle this is what you need to know this is what you need to answer now one very important question here now bachche when you talk about the fructose fructose is not found within our body like it is just found in that semen okay fructose it is just found in that semen so uh, like uh, when there are the rape cases not now like uh, you know after rape cases there is a medical examination there are different different tests right so vaginal swab vaginal fluid is also collected so if in vagina there is a presence of fructose it indicates a sexual intercourse right if there is unprotected sexual intercourse then the fructose will be there in the vagina okay because it is there in the semen so presence of fructose in vagina it indicates the sexual intercourse okay it indicates the sexual intercourse bachche akhin they are totally focused on ncrt but i am not going beyond ncrt everything is given in ncrt i am just relating that i am just trying to simplify your ncrt okay it that's not biopsy shrinath clear bachche it is not present fructose is not present anywhere else in the body so it is helping in that forensic test bachche now when you are talking about the prostate gland can you see that prostate gland it is a large single gland it is covering that urethra can you see that prostate gland it is a large single gland it is covering that urethra can you see that students yes can you see that so this gland it produced milky secretion right it produces milky secretion okay and that milky secretion is having a ph of near about 6.5 fine near about 6.5 now when you talk about the prostate gland right bachche so prostate gland it provide 30% of the semen right it provides what 30% of semen 30% of the semen okay bachche so it it is having milky secretion the ph is 6.5 so can i say that it is slightly acidic 
Yes. Can I say that it is slightly acidic? And do you know why? Why is it so? Because there is the presence of citric acid, right, in this secretion. So prostate glands, they are going to release what? They are going to release the citric acid. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? It is going to release what? It is going. It is having the citric acid. This prostate gland. Okay. Citric acid is there, and not just the citric acid, right? Other enzymes are also there. Prostaglandins are also there. Okay. Other enzymes are also there. And citric acid. If you are concerned about the role of citric acid, it's a major. It's a. It's a. It's an important sperm nutrient. It is also a sperm nutrient. The citric acid. So prostate gland and its secretion. I'm writing it here, right? I'm writing it here. So it is also having the citric acid. I'm writing citrate. Prostaglandins are also released by this prostate glands as well. Even calcium is also released, which is very important for the fertilization. Right, citrate, prostaglandins, uh, calciums, and other than that, some other enzymes are also there. You know, some phosphatases, etc. Right, so they are released by this prostate gland. Yes, pepsinogen, uh, phosphatase, right, which are myelase, like this. You want to write down? You can. Amylase, pepsinogen, phosphatase, etc. So they are formed by this prostate glands, right? So focus on that citric acid part two. Done, bache? Done. Okay. So prostate gland is also going to nourish the spermatozoa. It will, you know, make them active. So next to it is this. Can you see that? Bulbourethral gland. It is also paired. Let me write it. Okay, bulbourethral gland, bache. It is also paired. Right, they are very small size. Their main function is to lubricate the penis. Right, what is their main function? Is to lubricate the penis. So during sexual arousal, during sexual intercourse, they are going to provide the secretions which will lubricate the penis so that it can smoothly enter in the female vagina. Right, this is what you need to remember. And when it comes to the bulbourethral gland, right, sometimes it is believed that that lubrication, that fluid can also have some sperms. Okay, that is why it is advised not to have unprotected sexual intercourse. Even if a couple is preferring coitus interrupters, in that case also, the unprotected sexual intercourse is not advisable because might be in this secretion also, you know, sperms can be there. Fine, sperms can be there. Okay, so this is the role of this bulbourethral gland. So it is also present either sides of the uh, you know, this urethra, it is the membranous urethra. Okay, so its main function I told you already. Done? So it is also going to provide the alkaline fluid. Okay, it is also going to provide what? It is also going to release the alkaline fluid. So obviously that alkaline fluids are helpful in reducing the ACDT. Understood? So this is about the... Okay, so, so now see... Now I think you all can relate. Are... Hmm. So now I think you all can relate. This is the ejaculatory duct. Right? This is the ejaculatory duct. Okay. Okay, so now see, finally it will open up in urethra. You know, now, now next part that we need to discuss is external genitalia. We'll be talking about the penis now, the copulatory organ. So here, here within this penis, this urethra is present, right? This urethra is present, which is going to carry that semen. Yes or no? Are Mazim, seriously, he's back. Because seriously, see, he's so free. You don't have any class today. You don't have any class today. What is the chi, chi and chi? Oh my God. Huh? What is the chi, chi and chi? People should know about their system, even if it is a reproductive system. Okay. Ah, no class is chilling. Very good, very good. Ah, bahut acha kam kar rahe. See, I have two students. One is Bharat, who is continuously asking class up to, class up to. Bhai, 
प्लीज वेट एंड आई हैव अनदर स्टूडेंट हुज लाइक यू आर गोइंग आउट ऑफ एन सी आर टी यू आर गोइंग आउट ऑफ एन सी आर टी लाइक वाई आर यू वेस्टिंग योर टाइम ईयर वाई ब्लू मैम ही इज कोल्डिंग यू ही कैन नॉट इज केयर ऑफ मी इज केयर ऑफ मी सो वजीम सर स्टॉप स्पैमिंग हेयर फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल राइट स्टॉप दैट छी छी एंड छी एंड सेकेंड थिंग इज स्टार्ट स्टडिंग ओके स्टूडेंट्स आर हैविंग देयर एग्जाम्स सो यू शुड प्रैक्टिस सम क्वेश्चन ओके यू आर नॉट स्टडिंग दीज डेज प्रॉपरली यू आर जस्ट रोमिंग हेयर एंड देयर यू आर जस्ट यू नो चेकिंग द लेक्चर्स ऑफ ब्यूटिफुल टीचर्स एंड देन यू आर स्पैमिंग इन देयर चैट सेक्शन सो स्टॉप इट सो स्टॉप इट लिटरली यू आर जस्ट चेकिंग द सेशन ऑफ ब्यूटिफुल टीचर्स एंड यू आर जस्ट स्पैमिंग देयर नो अनुजा नो नो ठीक है हा सो चलो कम बैक फोकस हेयर डिस्टर्बिंग एलिमेंट ही इज है ना जिमोन जस्ट लुकिंग लाइक अ वाओ हा आई एम लुकिंग लाइक अ वाओ बट ही इज नॉट नो यू नो ऑल दो यूर वजीम सर इज लीन ही इज हेयर ना Okay oh please although he's lean like he's tall he's taller than me he's lean but he's still having that pouch like stomach right he looks lean on the screen but he's still having that pouch like stomach which he hides beautifully ah ah i'm fine i'm okay i'm i am not the panda because i'm very energetic right but you still have that pouch like structure if i'll get a chance na i'll show show it to them no worry hey cute panda you're just blessed you you don't have that chubby face that's why you are safe but otherwise you have that pouch like structure uncle like seriously we can fight we can fight so so you go go out what a shop <laughs> हाँ लेट स्टार्ट स्टार्टिंग वेरी गुड अरे सीरियसली इज अंकल चलो फोकस योर सो दिस इज यूरिथ्रा राइट सो नाउ दिस यूरिथ्रा इट कैरीज द सीमन बट अलॉन्ग विद दैट यू नो दैट इट ऑल्सो कैरीज द यूरिन राइट दैट्स वाई यू नो इवन वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द एसिड लाइक दैट्स वाई द यूरिथ्रा इज एसिडिक सो इन द केस ऑफ मेल्स वी नो इट वेरी वेल right so look at this structure this is a penis so here you can see one opening okay you can see one opening and what is that that is the urethral opening what is it it is the urethral opening urethral orifices okay you can also use the word meatus meatus is also the word that is used for opening so urethral opening urethral orifice urethral meatus okay so here it is not just the urethral urethro uh, urethro uh, ur urinogenital opening in the case of males it's same for the semen as well for the urine as well so it's a urinogenital aperture it's a urinogenital meatus it's a urinogenital orifice clear bachche clear bachche ha ah, vazim sir will get a punch see still here अभी जा ना क्यों डिस्टर्ब कर रहे हो काहे हा मे बी ही इज अ स्पैमर ओके डन सो नाउ वेन बच्चे यूरिन विल कम वेन यूरिन पासिस फ्रॉम दैट पीनिस एट दैट टाइम सीमन विल नॉट कम वेन सीमन पासिस फ्रॉम द पीनिस यूरिन विल नॉट कम समटाइम्स बिकॉज ऑफ सम इश्यूज लाइक द वर्ड इज रेट्रोग्रेड इजैक्यूलेशन समटाइम्स इन द यूरिन द सीमन कैन पास बट दैट इज ऑब्वियसली दैट इज द अब नॉर्मैलिटी ओके दैट इज द अब नॉर्मैलिटी क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर बच्चे सो दिस पार्ट क्लियर श्योर सो नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द पीनस विच इज द इरेक्टाइल टिश्यू ओके सो सी दिस ओके so just look at this right it is from your ncrt of course right so here see whatever is written we have 
डिस्कस दैट दैट एपिडिडमस लीड्स टू वास डिफरेंस दैट असेंड टू द एबडमन लूप्स ओवर द यूरिनरी ब्लडर रिसीव्स डक फ्रॉम सेमिनल वेसिकल एंड ओपन्स इनटू यूरेथ्रा एज इजैक्युलेटरी डक सो दीस डक्स दे स्टोर एंड ट्रांसपोर्ट द स्पर्म्स बच्चे थ्रू यूरेथ्रा सो यूरेथ्रा ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम यूरिनरी ब्लडर एंड एक्सटेंड थ्रू द पीनस टू इट्स एक्सटर्नल ओपनिंग दैट इज द यूरेथ्रल मीटस इज दैट क्लियर इज दैट क्लियर श्योर डन बच्चे ओके सो वेयर इज दैट मे बी दैट पार्ट ऑफ एन सी आर टी इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड हेयर जस्ट नोप्स ओके डन so now uh, see in the case of penis बच्चे basically during sexual arousal okay what is going to happen बच्चे what is going to happen the blood flow will be there right why because in the case in the penis there is the presence of the erectile tissue do you know about it yes do you know about it male is basically the penis is basically the male genitalia ना male copulatory organ yes or no yes or no right so let's say if this is the penis so here right the urethral opening is there the urethral meatus is there so you know that this area is very sensitive it is known as glans penis it is given in ncrt and it is covered with a loose fold of skin it is covered with what it is covered with a loose fold of skin and that is known as your fore skin fine bachche this part is the sensitive part it is known as glans penis right bachche it is covered with a loose fold of skin which is known as fore skin it is also known as prepuce okay it is also known as prepuce so when we take the cross section of this penis na what is there the presence of erectile tissue so three erectile tissues are three cylindrical masses of erectile tissues are there three cylindrical masses of erectile tissue are there done bachche so two corpora cavernosa two dorsal corpora cavernosa and one ventral it is the corpus spongiosum okay again it it has been asked in the aims examination okay so two corpora cavernosa two corpora cavernosa and one is the corpus spongiosum clear bachche two corpora cavernosa and one ventral is the corpus spongiosum clear bachche so these erectile tissues they are further covered with the fibrous tissue so when there is a sexual arousal blood flow will be there in this penis and that's why the erection of the penis will be there okay that's why the erection of the penis will be there okay 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 done bachche so any other doubt yes any other doubt so you should know about the composition of the semen so semen uh, that is important for the exam and you should know about these three cylindrical tissues as i said not given in ncrt but once it has been asked in the aims examination so you should know about it okay you should know about it done okay so let's <coughs> so see this diagram glans penis is given foreskin is given so see okay so now if there is any doubt from the diagram you can you are free to ask so do you have any doubt tell me do you have any doubt okay so now the next part as i said is what it is the semen so semen means sperm plus secretions of accessory glands okay the secretion of accessory glands done bachche sure 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 so its ph is near about 7.3 what is the ph of the semen it's 7.3 so normal sperm count is 20 to 120 million okay normal sperm count it is what it is 
20 to 120 million this is important please note down 20 to 120 million per ml it's about per ml and during each each ejaculation you can say that uh, yes bachi. so basically volume of that semen formed is volume of that semen formed is 3 to 4 ml it's 3 to 4 ml we are talking about the healthy individual so each ml should have 20 to 120 million per ml sperms this information is important okay this information is important so still if sperms are less than 20 that condition is uh, yes if in each ml sperms are less than 20 million per ml then that condition is known as oligosperm means the sperm count is less okay it means the sperm count is less clear bache? so if the word is azoospermia means without sperm like semen it means semen is without sperm okay it means semen is without sperm right bache? clear tell me is it clear sure that information is important okay done but erectile tissue is the one in which there will be the blood flow the cylindrical mass laharica huh, in that case there will be the sterility if there is no sperm in the semen then obviously it is the condition of sterility rocket homologous organ we will discuss firstly let's complete the female system then we will compare no you say labia majora it is just homologous to the scrotum like this okay done okay so but a uh, next part that we need to uh, yeah the next topic that we need to, that we are going to start is spermatogenesis see i know i know firstly there is a uh, male reproductive system then there is a female reproductive system and after that there is the gametogenesis i know you must be thinking that ma'am you are taking a lot of time but you should understand the male and the female reproductive system properly if you understand that system if you understand gametogenesis then bache, in the next topics you are not going to find it difficult at all it is very easy you should know about the hormones here definitely one to two questions will be there from the hormonal control of this chapter okay okay Bache, a break will be provided but after discussing the spermatogenesis is that okay is that okay right so if you will please please listen to me uh, you will get a break around 9 20 fine and i'll give you a break for 20 minutes but as of now you please focus here okay Chalo, let's start now bache, next topic that we need to know uh, that we need to understand is uh, that we need to start is your uh, gametogenesis okay because now you know about the male system let's finish the spermatogenesis part and then let's jump to the female reproductive system but before that you should know about the hormonal control okay i always teach this topic in this way what you what should you know you should know about the hormonal control and this hormonal control is not just important for spermatogenesis it is even important for the oogenesis clear bache? we have even discussed that in the chemical control and coordination part in class 11 okay so you know that we have hypothalamus you know about hypothalamus the thermoregulator the thermoregulator the one which is going to regulate the temperature present in our brain of course can you tell me about the hypothalamus is it the part of forebrain midbrain or the hindbrain it's a very common question and i think you all can answer it yes i think you all can answer it rocket bache it is almost same don't worry about that exactly exactly so hypothalamus is the part of four brain very good clap for yourself everyone quickly clap for yourself excellent excellent you know the answer hypothalamus is the part of four brain so hypothalamus is the thermoregulator as well and it is not the master gland but it is the super master gland 
right it is not the master gland but it is the super master gland the hypothalamus okay why why do we say that hypothalamus is the super master gland because this hypothalamus is going to instruct pituitary what is pituitary pituitary is the master gland right pituitary is the master gland isn't it yes everyone i know you people are tired you need a break i am going to give you the break but after 20 minutes please listen to me be the part of this discussion bachche right be the part of this discussion let's learn it in a fun way okay so what is pituitary gland it's a master gland what is hypothalamus that is a super master gland because it is instructing our master okay now when you talk about the pituitary pituitary is also known as hypophysis right do i need to tell you do i need to revise that part that the hypothalamus this pituitary they are connected here actually this is a stalk like structure which is known as infundibulum do you remember that this stalk like structure is in fundibulum this is the pituitary okay so but when you talk about the pituitary also known as hypophysis so it is having two parts one is your adeno hypophysis one is what your adeno hypophysis everyone please repeat it is important even for lactation even for parturition we need to know that so please focus so adeno hypophysis and neuro hypophysis what is there it is divided into two parts adeno hypophysis and the neuro hypophysis it is given in ncert class 11 ncert so this adeno hypophysis is further having two parts one is your pars distalis one is your pars distalis right and another is your pars intermedia it is basically when you talk about the adeno hypophysis it is having two lobes but the two lobes are not so uh, differentiated they are not well demarcated from each other so basically in that lobe you have two things pars distalis and pars intermedia pars distalis pars intermedia this pars distalis is the anterior part it is the anterior part okay this pars intermedia means intermediate part it is the middle lobe actually okay so this is the anterior lobe this is the middle lobe so when you are talking about adeno hypophysis collectively you are talking about the anterior lobe and the middle lobe understood you are talking about the anterior lobe and the middle lobe understood understood and when it is the neuro hypophysis which is also known as pars distalis it is the posterior lobe of pituitary it is the posterior lobe of pituitary what is it students posterior lobe of pituitary now when you are talking about this anterior lobe okay that is your pars distalis so this anterior lobe it used to release what it used to release two hormones fsh and lh fsh means your follicle stimulating hormone i hope you know about it what is it it is the follicle stimulating hormone lh is what it is luteinizing hormone right it is luteinizing hormone clear bachche so these two hormones they are known as gonadotropins what are they they are known as gonadotropins why because they act on gonads what are gonads gonads means primary sex organs what are gonads gonads means primary sex organs so when this anterior lobe will release these two hormones when the hypothalamus okay when the hypothalamus will release gnrh now ma'am what is this gnrh it is gonadotropin yes students tell me in the chat section quickly it is gonadotropin releasing hormone so when hypothalamus will release gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone so that is like a signal for the pituitary pituitary will be like oh my god now it's the time to release the gonadotropins what are the gonadotropins gonadotropins are the fsh and lh what is fsh follicle stimulating hormone what is lh luteinizing hormone understood understood so what is the role of these hormones the role of these hormones is to act on the gonads clear bachche the role of these hormones is to act on the gonads understood so fsh lh both right they'll be formed when we attain the age of puberty okay now we are talking about gametogenesis gametogenesis mane gamete formation 
when the gamete formation will start when we will attain the age of puberty so what is puberty do i need to write it do i need to explain it puberty do i need to write it do i need to explain it puberty it's the age when sex organs they become mature they become functional isn't it they become mature they become functional that is the that is the puberty right so what is going to happen in this age simon laharika rocket amu deepak what is going to happen in this age in this age the reproductive organ become functional why because of these hormones right hormones anger thirst right aggression hormones are responsible love hate hormones are responsible okay that excitement hormones are responsible so hormones they are the root of all the evils hai na hormones are the root of all the evils got it got it so obviously when we attain the age of puberty these hormones are released they are going to act on our gonads our gonads will become functional they will start releasing the sex hormones and because of that the changes will be there in the body right in the case of girls when they attain puberty the breast development starts the pubic ha hair growth start right in the case of boys also right that that larynx you know that it will become that adam's apple okay the beard the mustache it will start growing the pubic hair they'll grow okay they'll grow so now because we are talking about the male reproductive system first gametogenesis first the spermatogenesis first so let's relate it there okay one thing that you have to remember f s h from this s remember sertoli cells l h luteinizing hormone from this l remember leydig cells okay leydig cells clear bachche clear bachche that's what you have to remember so f s h follicle stimulating hormone but from this s we have to remember sertoli cell l h luteinizing hormone but from this l what we need to remember leydig cell so you also know that leydig cells are also known as interstitial cells yes or no you all know that na that leydig cells are also known as interstitial cells yes or no yes or no yes ma'am so that's why the in the case of male luteinizing hormone is also known as icsh it is a pyq okay it's a pyq <coughs> what is it it's a pyq right so what is this icsh interstitial cell stimulating hormone okay interstitial cell stimulating hormone so luteinizing hormone is also known as interstitial cell stimulating hormone it's a previous year question okay okay it's a previous year question so now what's the story the story is that when ha huh, so before starting this spermatogenesis please try to remember this sequence if you remember it very good otherwise please try to remember this in a very simple way we will learn this topic don't worry and it is actually a very simple topic spermatogonium primary spermatocyte secondary spermatocyte spermated sperm spermatogonium diploid primary spermatocyte diploid secondary spermatocyte haploid spermated haploid sperm haploid theek hai done so let's discuss this topic and let's finish this topic and then there will be a break so as i said that basically during embryonic development from the yolk sac right some pgcs primordial germ cells they'll find their way to the gonads and they are the one that are going to form the germ cells right and that germ cells are nothing they are basically the spermatogonia 
वॉट आर दे दे आर बेसिकली द स्पर मेटोगोनिया द स्टोरी इज क्लियर और नॉट येस बच्चे द स्टोरी इज क्लियर और नॉट राइट ड्यूरिंग द एम्ब्रियोनिक डेवलपमेंट ड्यूरिंग द इनिशियल स्टेजेस ऑफ दैट ग्रोथ फ्रॉम द योग सैक सम प्राइमोडियल जियोम सेल्स विल फाइंड देयर वे टूवर्ड्स द गॉनेट्स एंड इन द गॉनेट्स वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन दे आर गोइंग टू फॉर्म द जियोम सेल्स ओके दे आर गोइंग टू फॉर्म द जियोम सेल्स जियोम सेल्स टू जर्मिनेट जियोम सेल्स आर द वन which are going to form something of course right so that germ cells are what they are the spermatogonia but it's not like that right see spermatogonia word is plural singular is spermatogonium so so basically first of all there will be the mitotic division here do you know mitotic division the equational division yes bachche do you know mitotic division equational division you can take you can check uh, my lectures right we have completed this topic yes bachche so mitotic division they are the equational mitotic division it is the equational division what is the meaning of equational division you know that right that daughter cells they are going to have same number of chromosomes like the parent cell daughter cells they are going to have the same number of chromosomes like the parent cell this is the meaning this is the meaning of this mitotic division yes or no yes or no yes so after mitotic division what is going to happen right one cell will divide into two two cells will divide into four like this there will be an increase in the number of cell so initially there is an increase in the number of cell later on bachche that cells they will undergo meiosis what is meiosis the reductional division and that meiosis will form the haploid gametes understood that meiosis is going to form the haploid gametes so now here how how are you going to remember that first of all let's start with the spermatogonium okay so we have we have the spermatogonium they are going to divide 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 so we have two types of spermatogonium we are giving we are uh, taking uh, it as a two types type a spermatogonium when it is gonium means singular when it is gonia means plural another is a type b spermatogonium bachche so basically this spermatogonium it is dividing 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 and increasing its number so we have two types of spermatogonium type a type b type a type b now when you talk about the type a it is doing the same job monotonous job is there it is like i will keep on dividing keep on dividing keep on dividing okay okay i will keep on dividing keep on dividing keep on dividing keep on dividing why because i have to increase the number i have to increase the number of germ cells i have to increase the number of spermatogonium right so basically this type a is dividing 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 and dividing why for the replenishment right for the replenishment clear bachche so type a will again divide again form type a type b so basically when this type a is dividing it is again forming type a and type b but what about the type b ma'am what is the role of type b type b is like ki i want to do something different i i just don't want to divide only mitotically i want to do something else so basically what is going to happen bachche this type b spermatogonium right it will not divide like this it will grow it is going to increase its size okay right the cytoplasmic growth will be there it is going to increase its size so now you are going to call it as primary spermatocyte what is it it is primary spermatocyte what is it it is primary spermatocyte so we have spermatogonium the germ cell which is diploid so we are saying that this is going to divide so you are going to get two types of spermatogonium type a type b again type a is dividing again it is forming same type a spermatogonium type b again type a is dividing it is forming type a spermatogonium type b again type a is dividing and it is forming type a spermatogonium type b spermatogonium that's how the story is going on right what about the type b spermatogonium this type b spermatogonium it is growing right it will grow it is going to grow and it is going to form the primary spermatocyte it is going to form the primary spermatocyte that primary spermatocyte bachche it is also diploid focus on the ploidy always focus on the ploid why all that things are happening because of the hormones right ultimately fsh follicle stimulating hormone is acting on the sertoli cells lh is acting on the leydig cells so in response to that leydig cells are releasing the testosterone that is important for the spermatogenesis that's how you have to remember this right that's how you have to remember this 
ओके ओके टाइप ए टाइप बी राइट इफ यू कैन नॉट रिमेंबर इट फॉरगेट अबाउट इट सिंपली रिमेंबर देयर इज परमेटोगोनियम इट विल ग्रो इट विल बिकम प्राइमरी परमेटोसाइड दैट मच यू कैन डू राइट राइट दैट मच यू कैन डू इट्स वेरी सिंपल नाउ वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन टू दिस प्राइमरी परमेटोसाइड बच्चे दिस इज द वन विच विल अंडर गो मियोटिक डिविजन इट विल अंडर गो मियोसिस इट विल अंडर गो मियोसिस वन आई होप यू नो अबाउट इट बच्चे वॉट इज मियोसिस द रिडक्शनल डिविजन इट अकर्स इन टू राउंड होप यू नो इट इज वॉट इट इज द रिडक्शनल डिविजन राइट इट अकर्स इन टू राउंड लाइक देर इज द डिप्लॉइड सेल मियोसिस वन विल फॉर्म टू हेप्लॉइड सेल्स then again there will be the meiosis 2 and again it will form four haploid cells wait see diploid meiosis 1 2 haploid cells again meiosis 2 four haploid cells will be there what will be there four haploid cells will be there got it got it yes yes or no yes or no so now primary spermatocyte is the one which will undergo meiosis 1 so in response to that you will get two cells you will get two secondary spermatocytes so bachche question can even come on their ploidy so you should remember the ploidy okay you should remember the ploidy so your secondary spermatocyte it is haploid right it is for it Yeah, right it is haploid after meiosis 1 you are going to get secondary spermatocyte so it is what it is haploid right so it is the first round of meiotic division right simon right smiling like naruto han ji varun clear okay now the secondary spermatocyte it will again undergo meiosis 2 you know na this division occurs in two rounds right then there will be what there will be meiosis 2 and it will result in the formation of four haploid spermatids right from secondary spermatocyte what will you get you will get four spermatids yes or no what are you going to get students four spermatids let's discuss it here so one diploid cell it is growing primary spermatocyte it is undergoing meiosis 1 you are getting two haploid secondary spermatocyte then it is again undergoing meiosis 2 you are going to get four haploid spermatid so you should remember the stages here the sequence here now bachche these circular spermatids okay these circular spermatids they will further mature and they are going to form that flagellated right that that tail bearing sperms clear bachche that's how it works okay then what will be formed the haploid sperms will be formed haploid sperm will be formed clear bachche yes or no the sequence is clear or not the sequence is clear or not yes or no now what you need to remember here bachche the spermatid it is circular it is round but when you look at the sperm you know that it is having tail it is flagellated it is having tail so bachche the maturation right now your spermatid is getting mature into the sperm there are multiple changes which are going to take place we will discuss that but as of now focus on the important words here focus on the key words here so spermatid to sperm right the maturation of spermatid to sperm this is known as yes bachche this process is known as spermiogenesis what is the word for this process the formation of sperm from spermatid the formation of sperm from spermatid it is known as spermiogenesis or spermatelliosis right or spermatelliosis these are the two words here spermiogenesis or spermatelliosis okay the formation of sperm from spermatid it is known as spermiogenesis or spermatelliosis is that clear yes bachche is that clear and formation of sperm from spermatogonium is spermatogenesis 
do not confuse that formation of sperm from spermatogonium is spermatogenesis right and then maturation of this or simply i will write it like this so that you can remember then spermated to sperm formation it is your spermeogenesis so please do not confuse these two words or it is also known as spermatelliosis clear bachche understood sure venkatesh i have posted a video two days back just check that you'll get to know about it sure okay so these terms are important they are very important very important i'll tell you the kind of changes that are going to occur here but first of all tell me is it clear sure 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 so where this process is taking place where this process is taking place the spermatogenesis you know that it is in the seminiferous tubule where this process is taking place i hope you remember seminiferous tubules right bachche in the seminiferous tubule clear sure so who's providing nourishment right who's providing nourishment to these developing spermatozoa who's providing nourishment to these developing spermatozoa obviously the nurse cells right now you can answer each and every question because see we finished the male reproductive system now we are talking about spermatogenesis so you can relate it you can answer the question sertoli cells are providing the nourishment right sertoli cells under the influence of fsh they are also releasing uh, androgen binding protein which is concentrating the testosterone in the seminiferous tubule that testosterone is important for spermatogenesis that's how you have to remember so can i say that can i say that can i divide this right can i divide this uh, process yes bachche tell me can i divide this process like there is initially there is the multiplication phase the growth phase can i say so that initially there is the multiplication see initially there is a multiplication your type a was dividing again and again and again and again and again and again right so replenishment was going on there so growth phase is there then maturation sorry multiplication phase is there then then growth phase is there type b spermatogonium is forming primary spermatocyte growth is there and finally you know that after that growth the meiotic division will occur is that clear after that growth what is going to happen the meiotic division will occur is that clear sure bachche yes is that clear so bachche there is one more word this is extra you want to note down you can you want to leave it you can spermatocytogenesis do you know about this word spermatocytogenesis yes do you know about this please let me know in the chat section everyone spermatocytogenesis take dinner till 9:50 wah matlab in my classes you are going to give the break seriously do you want to live do you want to live so what is spermatocytogenesis your type a is dividing 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 it is you know uh, this is a multiplication this is the kind of stocking ki let's 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 form more and more type a type a this this thing this thing right it is this replenishment is known as spermatocytogenesis that's your homework okay do mention the answer in the comment section that what is the meaning of what is the meaning of spermatocytogenesis what is the meaning of spermatocytogenesis Clear? So in spermatocytogenesis, it is actually the replenishment of the spermatogonium, right? It is the replenishment of the spermatogonium. What is it? It is the replenishment of the spermatogonium. Okay. Done. So this part clear. 
sure so now one student was asking that ma'am what about the permeation i explained it so now see sertoli cells are providing nourishment okay that thing is going on so once the sperm they become mature they will be released in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule okay wasim why are you calling me why are you disturbing me okay so the permeation will be there what will be there that is permeation uh, wait i'll show you the diagram ha theek hai theek hai just allow me 2 minutes then you will get a break break hmm so see this at puberty mitosis differentiation primary spermatocyte first meiotic division secondary spermatocyte second spermatid and finally differentiation so spermatid to spermatozoa differentiation is known as spermiogenesis or spermatolysis okay <coughs> okay so see this diagram hmm this complete structure is actually a sertoli cell this complete structure is actually a sertoli cell it is just the nucleus of sertoli cell they are there that they are marking this complete structure is a sertoli cell so it is nourishing the adjacent cells also right so finally when it is released in lumen that is known as spermiation okay chalo so see you all at uh, 9:45 ठीक है डन सो टिल देन यू कैन हैव योर डिनर चल सो
Hi everyone, welcome back. I know I am late, but you know, hope you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you everyone welcome back let's continue the chapter i hope now you're feeling energetic i hope you all have you all had your dinner so now let's go right let's start voice echo seriously is there any issue with the voice or is it fine it's fine right it's fine right no what happened what is the issue with the voice tell me quickly it's fine now nah? chalo theek hai so let's go let's start let's discuss just a minute okay so uh, we have discussed the spermatogenesis we know about the hormonal control now let's talk about the structure of the sperm and what kind of changes are occurring right when a spermatid is getting transformed into the sperm that's what we need to discuss okay fine fine bache ma'am drop a strategy harsh bache do check the video that i have posted voice is fine right so can we just proceed so quickly hit the like button right again send the fire emojis just let me know that you are still having that energy right see i started the lecture late i started the lecture at 7 okay okay it was planned at 5 but uh, because of some glitch i started it at 7 pm so it is obvious we cannot finish this chapter in 3 hours or in 4 hours or in 5 hours it is going to take minimum 6 hours fine and uh, honestly as we promised that we are going to provide you the quality content so if you want quality content you have to you have to give me your time right that devotion is important literally that devotion is important if you don't have that devotion if you are thinking here yeah, yaar please in 4 hours or in 5 hours just finish the chapter i can do that i can skip many things i can just translate ncrt but here i'm trying to explain the things okay so that you can retain it properly I hope you all have seen the video where I have shared a plan that yes, still we can complete the you know biology, the entire biology, and we can score three sixty out of three sixty. Now it's your turn, okay? Literally, it's your turn. I don't know what what is going to be the end time. All I know is that if I am teaching you here, I am going to provide you the quality content, right? Because you are giving me your you know four hours, five hours. So that's my duty. What say? that's my duty and trust me even i am tired it's not like that i am feeling very good right uh, it's fun taking long 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 sessions no it's literally not like that so be a support yaar be a support what's it chalo so vijay what do you know okay so we are done with the male part so now we have to discuss the structure of the sperm and uh, then what we have to do we have to talk about what the female reproductive system okay so now i'll ask you one question uh you know about that thing right x or y uh, x or y chromosome isn't it you all are aware of it isn't it yes tell me tell me tell me tell me quickly all of you know about the x chromosome and the y chromosome right that in the case of males what do we have we have the xy chromosome now you must be thinking that in human reproduction why are you talking about the genetics right right that ma'am why 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 are you talking about the genetics it's not like that students see there are certain things that i think you all should know now see when we we talk about the spermatids okay and overall if you are talking about the spermatogenesis do you know that there is a kind of there is what there is a cytoplasmic connection there right do you know that there is a cytoplasmic connection there yes and why is it so why is it so like if i'm talking about the spermatid so i am saying that there is a continuous cytoplasmic connection why because you know that in the case of males x and y chromosome is there right bache so y chromosome it's holendric okay its genes are not that you know that it it is holendric holendric genes are there in y chromosomes if you know about its size as well it is comparatively smaller than the x chromosomes okay so because of that right because of, through this cytoplasmic connection there will be the exchange of the proteins right there will be the exchange of the proteins here and there 
सो दैट इज वॉट यू नीड टू नो ओके बच्चे दैट इज वॉट यू नीड टू नो सो नाउ यू नो दैट परमिटेड इज काइंड ऑफ राउंड स्ट्रक्चर एंड इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म अ स्पर्म सो वेन यू डिस्कस द स्पर्म स्ट्रक्चर आई थिंक फ्यू चेंजेस यू कैन इवन नोटिस डायरेक्टली वॉट्स ए स्टूडेंट्स इज इंट इट देर आर सर्टन चेंजेस that you can notice directly isn't it can you just tell me about the changes yes everyone can you just tell me about the changes tell me quick what kind of changes are there when we talk about this sperm structure head tail middle piece that's it that's all priya nothing else tell me nothing else is it the only change that is going to take place see that's a fact that when you talk about the structure of the sperm right this is our next topic the sperm structure so no doubt it is a fact when you talk about the sperm structure it is having the head it is having the middle piece and it is having the tail right it is not the it is not the same structure anymore it is having the head it is having the middle piece and as i said it is having the tail and moreover bachche like see now you know that even spermatid is haploid even sperm is haploid right even spermatid is haploid even sperm is haploid now when you talk about the sperm in the case of sperm right bachche the genetic material is there the haploid genetic material is there so there you are not going to see the 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 uh, histone proteins do you know about it that is something very important that's why you know i am telling you this thing that is something very important do you know that that there the histone proteins are not going to be there basic proteins are there we need that right right so see this is this is the head region this is the head region so in this head region here at this tip there is going to be the acrosome what is there acrosome this is going to be that pro nucleus it is not a proper nucleus it's a it's a pro nucleus so here the genetic material is not uh, <coughs> coiled over the histone proteins here protamines are present okay what is present protamines are present yes what is present bachche tell me what is present protamines are present so basic nature protein called protamines they are present here in the nuclear part of the head of the spermatozoa clear bachche so firstly in the head region anterior side is having acrosome posterior side is having the nucleus clear bachche this is this part is the head region this part is the head region here it is a kind of neck here here it is the middle piece and then there is the tail so in this head region this side is the anterior side so a for anterior a for acrosome that's how you have to remember a for anterior a for acrosome okay a for anterior a for acrosome is there so bachche bachche this acrosome remember this is very important oh oh this acrosome is having the enzymes it is fully loaded with what it is fully loaded with the enzymes what type of enzymes are there here bachche sperm lysins are there what is there sperm lysins are there right right bachche so these are the enzymes which are going to help in the fertilization it is not just the only enzyme which is present in acrosome we are going to talk about different different enzymes do you remember hyaluronidase lysin zona lysin right corona radiata penetrating enzyme so there are various enzymes okay so that we will discuss when we will talk about the fertilization so as of now this is what you need to remember that in the head region in the anterior side there is the presence of acrosome which is having the enzymes the enzymes which will help in dissolving the egg membrane which will help in the fertilization moreover the another important question here is that this acrosome is formed from the golgi body okay golgi body golgi apparatus is going to form that clear bachche who is going to form that the arica who is going to form that yes bachche golgi body golgi apparatus is that clear is that clear yes yes sure now when you look at this this part right when you look at this part the neck part here it's a very small part here na head neck middle piece right head neck 
middle piece and then comes the tail right so when you are talking about this this neck part here no so this is something very important you are going to see the centrioles there i'll write it here so neck is a very small part okay it's a very small part it is having two centrioles how many centrioles are there two centrioles but it towards the nucleus side okay towards nucleus side which centriole do you have you have proximal centriole which centriole do you have you have proximal centriole clear proximal centriole and this centriole this centriole is going to help in the cleavage during cleavage it will help okay i think you know about it isn't it i think you know about it isn't it yes bachche isn't it you know na that when you it comes to the egg when it comes to the secondary oocyte which is released from the female that is having metaphase to arrest at the time of fertilization that arrest right right that arrest will overcome so basically this proximal centriole when there is a fertilization right the sperm is going to pass its content to that ovum right so this proximal centriole will pass there what will pass there the proximal the proximal centriole will pass there so that proximal centriole will help in the cleavage this is important to know so towards the nucleus side the centriole which is present is proximal centriole clear bachche and obviously next to it is going to be what it will be the distal centriole yes or no it is going to be what it is going to be the distal centriole yes or no yes or no what is it that will be the distal centriole so this distal centriole will form axial filament do you know what is that axial filament yes bachche do you know what is that axial filament yes distal centriole will form axial filament do you know what is that axial filament yes but if this axial filament this a kind of rod like structure it will be there in that tail region in that flagella it is arising from the centriole okay it is arising from that centriole related with the chapter cell where we have discussed cilia and flagella i hope you can relate now yes everyone i hope you can relate now right right so this distal centriole it is going to form the it is going to form the axial filament just imagine this is the distal centriole and it is forming the it is forming the axial filament can you see that it is forming the axial filament now around this axial filament what will be there right mitochondria are spirally arranged right mitochondria basically we are talking about the middle piece now this part firstly head then neck then middle piece then tail okay so we are talking about what we are talking about the middle piece so in the middle piece around this axial filament the mitochondria is placed right and you know that sperm in the female vagina sperm needs to move towards the fallopian tube from the vagina to the fallopian tube so obviously energy is required so mitochondria it is the power house of the cell right this is what your wazim sir no right he he knows only two to three things from that biology part and it is one of them that mitochondria is the power house of cell right so mitochondria so that mitochondria is spirally arranged right how that mitochondria is arranged bachche that mitochondria is spirally arranged right how is it arranged bachche it is spirally arranged so one uh, subhashini is using that word vijay kumar is using that word right this is the word that we use nebankan nebankan do you know the meaning of this word yes bachche do you know the meaning of this word nebankan yes right so it is the mitochondrial formation in the sperm isn't it that 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 uh, that mitochondria is spirally arranged around this this uh, axial filament so it is the mitochondrial formation of the sperm this is what you can note down okay that is what that is the nebankan isn't it isn't it and it where is it present it is present in the middle piece okay 
इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द मिडल पीस सो इट इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड द एनर्जी राइट बच्चे इट इज गोइंग टू प्रोवाइड द एनर्जी क्लियर बच्चे यस डन एंड मोर ओवर इफ यू विल सी दिस साइड ओके द पोस्टीरियर साइड ऑफ दस like let's say this is the nucleus this is the posterior side of the nucleus this posterior side of the nucleus this neck region even this middle piece they are covered with a sheath and we used to call that sheath as manchette manchette i hope you know about it right we used to call it as manchette so posterior half of nucleus neck middle piece they are covered with a sheath that is known as manchette so if you don't know these two words please mark it please mark it. kindly mark it okay done so next to it is obviously the tail region right next to it is what it is the tail region so you know that here what will be there this is the axial filament so basically this is kind of flagella right now uh, uh, you know as per the new studies it is not the proper flagellar movement by which sperm moves so uh, that part i'm not going to discuss here but there are you know many different things also okay there are uh, like uh, whatever you are studying okay whatever words that we use they are changed right scientists they have discovered new things they have discovered the different movement of sperm also okay so i am not going in that depth but this is just i'm um, i'm just telling you this thing so as of now this is what you need to remember is that clear so tail is the longest part so sperm is going to move with the help of tail right so you know that this distal centriole has formed the axial filament also known as exoneme which is present here right which is present here hope you remember that arrangement can i ask you one question from that part can i ask you one question from that part in the case of eukaryotic flagella what is the arrangement of the centriole anyone in the class in the case of eukaryotic flagella excellent samriya excellent excellent samriya that is 9 plus 2 arrangement okay that is 9 plus 2 arrangement so is it a triplet the peripheral one are they triplet or what no doubt it is 9 plus 2 arrangement you are right right when it comes to the eukaryotic flagella this is extra of course from your class 11 so when you talk about the eukaryotic flagella so it is 9 plus 2 arrangement so what about the peripheral one two are present in central are they triplet or the doublet triplet or the doublet tell me tell me tell me triplet or the doublet are you sure it's a triplet students think about it please think about it is it triplet or doublet and if you don't remember this so please revise it you are going to revise it i'm not going to give you the answer here i'm literally not going to give you the answer here you, uh, here you are going to revise it and i told you about the other changes also so basically here what will be there prota means are going to be there right which basic protein will be there prota means that's what you have to remember okay chalo so now i will ask you general question i know uh, you know you are feeling low you are like yaar ma'am q why we have seen many one shots where teacher has covered this topic in 3 hours or in 4 hours why are you taking so long because we we are going to provide you the proper content like when the same one shot will be there in the month of february or in the month of march it will be for 3 hours or it will be for 4 hours right then i am not going to stretch it for 5 hours i am not going to stretch it for 6 hours right because at that time i'll assume I, that you know something that's why you are here so even this session is very helpful for the beginners as well okay if you will watch these lectures you will revise the things from ncrt that is more than sufficient for you people literally that is more than sufficient for you people so please be focused please be attentive okay that's a humble request be energetic have a cup of tea or coffee or whatever you want and then please focus here done so this is about the sperm structure so i am going to ask you few general things so sperms they are going to take their energy from yep tell me sperms they are going to take the energy from tell me quickly sperms are going to take the energy from like they are they, what are they using are they using glucose are they using are they using glucose are they using fructose exactly right krutika very good exactly that is the fructose 
that is the fructose so basically sperm is going to use which sugar for its for, for, for taking the energy obviously that is the fructose but but do you know about dynein do you know about dynein dynein do you know this word seriously some students are saying no don't you know dynein trust tell me don't, don't you know dynein yes seriously that's strange bache when you talk about the flagella okay we discussed that 9 plus 2 arrangement yes or no we discussed that 9 plus 2 arrangement this is what we discuss 9 plus 2 arrangement so don't you remember don't you remember uh we draw it like this the arms here outer inner protein and then in and this connecting all connecting one also don't you remember flagella structure dynein protein is in flagella yes you are right right dynein protein it is in flagella it is in flagella you are right that microtubules are having this but do 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 you remember that the flagella structure so actually bachche actually that dynein pro this dynein protein it provides it provides that motility to that flagella this is what you have to remember it is a previous year question and here we have one student who is again and again saying it is out of ncert out of ncert just open up your class 11th ncert right if it is not written in human reproduction that doesn't mean it is not the part of your ncert it is the part of your ncert okay it is the part of your ncert and if you are not able to answer such questions if you don't know right whether there is the doublet or the triplet right then you really need to you really need to revise the syllabus properly it's not bad then it's very bad then just a minute okay so do revise it so that is going to provide the energy that is going to help in the movement the dynein protein and start solving the mcqs right start solving the mcqs you are going to get this question as well so here you can see the hormonal control already discussed this is the structure of sperm it is also discussed see head neck middle piece tail it is given plasma membrane is going to envelop the whole body of the sperm sperm head is having haploid nucleus anterior portion is having cap like structure acrosome right and that acrosome is filled with the enzymes that are helpful for the fertilization so here it is not written but it is a repeated question so acrosome is formed from your who is going to form it the golgi apparatus okay the golgi apparatus so please do not forget such things okay do not forget such things is that clear is that clear so now let's start the female system okay <clears throat> this is the sperm structure if you want to see the diagram acrosome nucleus <clears throat> centrioles in the neck right the mitochondria in the middle piece and then comes the tail part okay so see this axial filament the exoneme like this fine like this okay is that clear okay so now let's start the female system the female reproductive system again of course we are going to start with the diagram first hai na let's start okay hmm so let's start with the diagram first so tell me what do you know about the female reproductive system tell me 
बच्चे पीडीएफ विल बी शेयर्ड इन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप सो टेल मी अबाउट द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम व्हाट डू यू नो अबाउट द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम यू नो ना दैट्स हाउ वी आर डिवाइडिंग आर टॉपिक दैट वी हैव द प्राइमरी सेक्स ऑर्गन वी हैव द एक्सेसरी ग्लैंड्स वी हैव द एक्सेसरी डक्स सो इन द केस ऑफ फीमेल टेल मी व्हाट डू यू नो दैट या पेयर ऑफ ओवरीज वेरी गुड यूट्रस इज देयर फिलोपियन ट्यूब इज देयर व्हाट एल्स एक्सेलेंट बच्चे आई एम लाइकिंग यू पीपल राइट यू आर रिवर्टिंग हियर यू आर नॉट जस्ट सिटिंग आइडली यू आर actually revising the topic very good very nice <coughs> chalo tell me quickly female external female uh, reproductive system that's what we have to discuss ha so obviously we know that the pair of ovaries they are going to be the primary sex organs they are going to be the gonads so when we use the word primary sex organs why are we using this word simple it is because the uh, gametogenesis will be there in that particular organ and that organ is going to release the hormones that's what we know right that's what we know female reproductive system that's what we are discussing so here in the case of female uh, uh, okay so in the case of just a minute let me draw the diagram you please draw it to from this chapter diagrams are very important okay so with the help of that diagram i'll explain you the structure okay so that's what we discussed in the female reproductive system so obviously first thing is pair of ovaries right that is the primary sex organ pair of ovaries okay that is what that is the primary sex organ so next to the ovaries if you can see the tube like structure first of all understand the diagram students right understand the diagrams so if you can see this tube like structure what is it it is the fallopian tube also known as uterine duct right ovarian duct what is it fallopian tube uterine duct ovarian duct right this part can you see that this part so finger like structures right finger like structures what are they they are the fimbri the funnel like structure is infundibulum then bache the widest part of this fallopian tube is ampulla then isthmus by which is it it is connected to the uterus so now when you focus on this structure here this part here right this is a piriform structure what is it it's a piriform structure what is the meaning of piriform piriform means pear shaped okay pear shaped so when you talk about the uterus it is inverted piriform what is it it is inverted piriform structure right it is inverted piriform structures inverted pear shaped structure that's what you need to remember right right now i'm going giving you the overview now then we, uh, after this we will discuss it okay so ovaries ovaries then the fallopian tube is there also known as uterine tube right also known as ovarian duct then this part this is the inverted pear shaped structure for pear shaped we use the word piriform this is the uterus what is it it is the uterus where implantation will occur what is going to happen here implantation will occur you are right it is also known as womb it is also known as hystera okay it is also known as hystera done bachche done then here we are going to talk about what we'll be discussing the cervical canal we'll be discussing the cervix can you see this portion yes can you see this portion this is the cervical canal and this part here is the cervix the internal sphincter external sphincter and next to it is the vagina okay bachche next to it is the vagina okay so this fallopian tube uterus cervical canal or the vagina this is basically the accessory ducts here what are they this is basically the basically the accessory ducts here clear bachche clear bachche okay so this is about the in general i'm telling you about this structure now in the case of females you know that the ovaries they are not extra abdominal they are present in that pelvic cavity only they are present in that abdominal region only isn't it isn't it when it comes to the ovaries yes or no in the case of males we know that during gestation period during the 7th month of pregnancy actually the testes they descend into the scrotum but here there is no such case okay here there is no such case so now let's understand this part first 
okay so when you talk about the ovaries you know their size their size is quite small we didn't discuss the size of these organs no even it is given in testes it is given in ncrt so we should revise it okay we should revise it so when you talk about the ovaries you know they are just like the like <clears throat> if you talk about their shape their shape is just like the almonds actually their shape is just like the almonds right right the unshelled almonds i hope you all have seen that shelled almonds no so if you will remove their shell so unshelled almonds they are they look like that the the pair of ovary it looks like that clear bachche clear bachche so it is near about 2 to 4 cm in length what is it it is near about 2 to 4 cm in length clear bachche vanoth what is it it is 2 to 4 <coughs> centimeter in length now the important things that you need to remember here see ovaries if you will see the structure right i am there is something which is attaching this ovaries to the uterus but your yeah, ovaries are not hanging like this right ovaries are not placed like this ki they are just hanging no of course they are attached to the uterus like so they are attached to the uterus with the help of ligament and that is known as ovarian ligament again a repeated question what is it it is the ovarian ligament again a repeated question clear bachche clear bachche so ovaries they are attached to uterus with the help of what with the help of ovarian ligament but there is one more ligament that is known as broad ligament do you know about that broad ligament bachche do you know about that broad ligament sometimes students they get confused right do you know about that broad ligament anyone in the class okay but a broad ligament is the part of peritoneum now don't tell me you don't even know peritoneum you know na our body organs our viscera right it is covered with a layer it is covered with a serous membrane that is peritoneum and obviously its main function is of protection right it is a, its main function is of what its main function is of protection so when you talk about the broad ligament I, as i said the peritoneum is covering our viscera okay it is covering our visceral organs so this peritoneum the parietal peritoneum this broad ligament is the part of that parietal peritoneum okay it is the part of that parietal peritoneum so basically this broad ligament it is attaching that complete structure okay peritoneum is the covering bache peritoneum is the covering okay right right so basically this broad ligament is helping the ovary see ovaries are attached to uterus with the help of ovarian ligament but that complete structure is also there in that cavity no in that pelvic cavity right so obviously these ligaments and all that things are going to fix it there isn't it they are going to fix it there so broad ligament is the part of parietal peritoneum so this broad ligament it is attached to that female reproductive organ it is attached right it is uh, it is basically attached to the yes bachche right it is the part of the uterus actually this broad ligament okay it is the part of the uterus it, it is basically uh, attached to the uterus right it is the part of the parietal peritoneum and with the it is going to form some folds by which it is attached to that ovaries so basically all that setup is to fix that structure in that pelvic cavity fine right that setup is for what that setup is to fix it into the pelvic cavity is that clear yes bachche <clears throat> done yes or no yes or no so broad ligament it's the part of parietal peritoneum bachche so broad ligament is attached uh, uh, so basically it is attached to that uterus by making two folds i i i hope you know this word meso mesoverium right like in the case of nails we talk about mesorchium here it is mesoverium okay so broad ligament will form some thick folds by which it is attached to that uh, with which it uh, by forming that fold it is attached to that uterus part okay okay so that is meso ovarian that's all so broad ligament and ovarian ligament it is different do not consider it as same do not consider it as same okay this is the first thing now 
so obviously ovaries are also going to release the sex hormone that is estrogen and progesterone that we will discuss now before proceeding let's talk about the structure of the ovary okay what we need to discuss the structure of the ovary so but in the case of ovaries the outermost layer that we have to discuss no doubt first thing is the visceral peritoneum okay the visceral peritoneum peritoneum is that layer which is covering the viscera remember that peritoneum is the layer which is are see visceral peritoneum is what it is the outermost layer okay that visceral peritoneum is what it is that outermost totally right outermost layer of that ovary but next to it is what it is the germinal epithelium now tell me what type of cells are making this germinal epithelium tell me what kind of cells are forming this layer germinal epithelium anyone in the class yes bachche lahrika what type of cells are forming this germinal epithelium quick 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 exactly cuboidal cell so firstly the visceral peritoneum is there then bachche germinal epithelium below that what will be there the germinal epithelium is there right bachche and below that germinal epithelium there is one more layer and that layer is known as anyone here in the class that layer is known as tunica albuginea you need to remember this sequence okay so first of all outermost is the visceral peritoneum then there will be the germinal epithelium and then what will be there akankhya excellent bachche there will be the tunica albuginea there will be the tunica albuginea and guys do not forget that on 21st right on 21st of november we are uh, sorry december we are coming to chennai okay so do do visit that place if possible for you okay do visit that place if possible for you and moreover you know that unlock 20 is there so this is the coupon code that you guys can use to join any of the batch right so i am currently teaching in avengers 3.0 batch there are many batches that are going to that we are going to start soon right for neat 2024 aspirants even for neat 2025 aspirants so this is the coupon code that you all can use okay to join my classes done bache firstly let let us come to chennai then we will come to different different places okay don't worry deepak there is a google form in the description box you check it and fill it done so this part clear the layers clear visceral peritoneum germinal epithelium tunica albuginea so next to it this complete part here in the ovary what is it it is the stroma right please try to understand the structure here if you understand the ovary structure then the next topic the oogenesis topic is going to be very easy for you so try to imagine a structure which is just like the unshelled almond right a very small 2 to 4 cm in length now we are checking the layers there so we are saying first of all we know that the ligament the broad ligament is attaching ovaries to the uterus then we know about the broad sorry ovarian ligament is attaching ovaries to the uterus then broad ligament is there the part of visceral peritoneum right that is also attached to that complete structure why because we have to fix that in that abdominal cavity okay now we are talking about the layers of the ovary so we are saying visceral peritoneum then germinal epithelium and below that tunica albuginea is there so next part to it is the stroma so i hope you remember this thing because i used to repeat it so many times i used to repeat it so 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 many times right that in the case of your kidney in the case of adrenal gland and in the case of ovary you know that how the stroma is divided right remember outer cortex inner medulla do you remember that outer cortex inner medulla so same is the case here in the ovary right right so this stroma is divided right in the ovary also this stroma is divided so outer is the cortex inner is the medulla okay bachche outer is the cortex inner is the medulla so actually it is the cortex right which is the site of oogenesis which is the place where actually oogenesis will occur fine is that clear 
is that clear sure so outer cortex inner medulla so if this is the structure of the ovary this portion here as i said the innermost portion here is medulla so this is the cortex here and here the oogenesis will occur so when you talk about this medulla right when you talk about this medulla so here in this medulla which a connective tissue what will be there the abundant blood supply what will be there the abundant blood supply so is it is not like that ki you can differentiate ki this one is cortex this one is medulla no no there is no proper demarcation right there is nothing like that ki you can demarcate okay this one is cortex this one is medulla no it's not like that but in general the medulla is the part where abundant blood supply is there okay where abundant blood supply is there and moreover students this blood vessels entry and the exit of blood vessel right obviously it is also from a point here also you are going to call that point as hilum okay the way we uh, yeah the way we study it in the case of uh, kidney no here also the story is same fine understood yes but is that clear or not is that clear now i see in the case of oogenesis many times students they complain that they are not able to understand that topic why because they do not have the clarity of the structure okay so now this cortex part here what are you going to get ovarian cells right which cells are present here ovarian cells you used to call them as follicular cells also what we used to call it follicular cells also so in the case of ovaries it is not just the oogenesis that we have to understand that we have to focus we should even we we even need to know about the folliculogenesis okay we cannot even miss what we cannot even miss the folliculogenesis that's what you need to keep in your mind okay that's what you need to keep in your mind so folliculogenesis is also there oogenesis is also there that we have to understand so we will come to this part later now let's move to the next part here and that is nothing that is also the uh uterine duct or the fallopian duct <clears throat> firstly let's finish that and then let's come back to the ovary part we will discuss that structure in detail and along with that we will understand oogenesis and the menstrual cycle another most important topics of this chapter okay so uterine duct or the fallopian tube my first question is that which part is the closest to the ovary that's what you have to answer which part is the closest to the ovary that's what you need to answer first quick anyone very good bache in fun, uh, sorry fallopian tube is near about 10 to 12 cm long structure when you talk about its part you first talk about in fundibulum yes i know some of you will be like no ma'am it should be isthmus but actually it is the infundibulum which is closest closest to the ovary okay this is the part which is closest to the ovary so it is a funnel it is a funnel shaped structure what type of structure it is it's a funnel shaped structure are you getting it infundibulum so just look at it like see i'm holding something okay i'm holding something so basically this part imagine this is the infundibulum part the funnel shaped part so actually it's like that right ovaries are closest to this infundibulum and these fimbriae finger like projection you know they are not even considered as the actual part of fallopian tube they are actually considered the extensions of that infundibulum okay okay so infundibulum is the closest part right it is the closest to the ovary right bachche right it's a tube like funnel shaped structure right it's a funnel shaped structure and uh, okay so it is going to form that finger like projections understood and that finger like projections are fimbriae fine that finger like projections are what that finger like projections are fimbriae is that clear is that clear yes bachche so the end of this the end of this tube is finger like projection the fimbriae
अरे ओके डन फाइन बच्चे सो यू नो दैट व्हेन ओवरीज दे आर गोइंग टू रिलीज द एग दीज फिंगर दीज फिम्बरे दे आर गोइंग टू hold it they are going to carry it and then they will further pass so obviously if the if the fallopian tube is the one which has to pass the egg so of course 110% the ciliated epithelium right ciliated epithelium is lining this fallopian tube is it understood is it understood yes or no yes bachche is it understood yes or no yes or no Done. So in fundibulum, fimbria clear, and then the S. Okay, ampulla. So ampulla, you know that it is the widest. It is the widest part of fallopian tube. Okay, and you know that it is the part where what is going to happen? It is the site of fertilization. This ampulla is what? It is the site of fertilization. So another important question. Fine. What is it? It is another important. question ampulla okay the widest part of the fallopian tube so it is the site of fertilization then comes bachche isthmus isthmus is very narrow okay it is very narrow so it is you know that it is connecting this fallopian tube to to the uterus so you know even it is its thickness is just like the thickness of our hair it is that मतलब इट इज दैट थिक इमेजिन सो इट्स नॉट वेरी थिक इस्थमस इट इज द नेरोअर पार्ट ऑफ द फिलोपियन ट्यूब सो इट इज अटैचिंग दैट फिलोपियन ट्यूब टू द यूट्रस सो इट्स थिकनेस इज जस्ट लाइक द थिकनेस ऑफ आर हियर इमेजिन दिस इमेजिन सो दीज स्ट्रक्चर्स आर नॉट दैट बिग राइट यू कैन यू कैन जस्ट कंपेयर नो सो ओवर इज जस्ट टू टू फोर सेंटीमीटर इन लेंथ फाइन इट इज जस्ट टू टू फोर सेंटीमीटर इन लेंथ ओके क्लियर सो एम्प्यूला इस्थमस दिस पार्ट डन Then, bache. So this is something important. This is something important. They all are PYQs. Fine. They all are what? They all are PYQs. So fallopian tube. It is lined with what type of epithelium? It is lined with the ciliated epithelium. So that ciliated epithelium is going to, with the help of its cilia, it is going to move that. Egg towards that ampulla, and then finally, you know, even if fertilization occur, it it will that the cilia will move it towards the uterus as well. Fine. So clear, bache. Sure. So next part is next part is what? Next part is uterus. So this fallopian tube, uterus, cervical canal, they are considered as that accessory ducts here. Fine, bache. They are considered as accessory ducts. So uterus, hystera, we also call it as womb. Okay. We also call it as womb. So, what is it? It is inverted pyriform structure. What is the meaning of pyriform structure? Right, it is the pear-shaped structure. Okay, it is the pear-shaped structure. Understood? Done? Done, bache. Sure. So, but Jay, what do you think? Like, if I talk about its structure, so you know that it is a hollow muscular structure. Uterus is hollow, right? And even it is muscular as well. So, it is hollow muscular structure. When you look at the structure of the uterus, you know, even it is divided into parts. We don't talk about it. Like, see this upper por portion here, this portion here. Can you see that part? This is the fundus. What is it? It is the fundus. right this part where you know the ov ducts they join it is a cornua it's cornua i'm not uh, telling you to write it down just telling you this main body is the corpus and then here here you know the cervix so we need to focus on this part that is known as cervix okay so any doubt in the diagram here niharika yes everyone any doubt in the diagram here quickly tell me priya hari <coughs> yes bachche any doubt here quickly tell me please sure if there is any doubt i'll answer all the questions please ask me 
okay so this lower cylindrical part is the cervix and when you talk about the cervix bache so it is having internal sphincter muscle also external sphincter muscles also right it is having this internal orifices external sphincter orifices so in between this is the cervical canal this the cylindrical structure is the cervical canal understood sure sure bache so this cervix you know that further it is contacting with what basically it is attached to this anterior portion of vagina next to it is what next to cervix is what manod it is the vagina what is it it is the vagina okay so uterus is going to open into what uterus is going to open into i am writing it here fibromuscular but yeah non glandular when it comes to vagina vagina is not having any glands right vagina is not having any gland so it is fibro muscular non glandular structure what is it it is it opens into fibro muscular non glandular this is something very important please pay attention non glandular structure called vagina so actually in the case of females it is the vagina which is the copulatory organ right it is the vagina which is the copulatory organ so it is non glandular that is the key word here fine that is the key word here bachche leharika in the old books it is written ampullary uh, ampulla is uh, ampulla isthmary uh, junction ampullary isthmus junction my bad but normally it is ampulla so don't worry about this clear clear bachche so uterus is going to open into vagina and that vagina is fibromuscular non glandular so vagina is the copulatory organ in the case of males it is the penis in the case of females it is the vagina understood guys understood what about your energy is it that low seriously seriously yes bachche is seriously is it that low so this part clear this part clear so this cervical canal plus vagina together they are making the both canal okay cervical canal plus vagina together they are making the both canal let me write it fine together it is making the birth canal now when you talk about uterus right we need to discuss the histology of uterus as well right so outermost layer do you know now we used to call it as perimetrium it's important what is it it is perimetrium the outermost layer is what yes leharika outermost layer is what hi hi hsp sir what's up how are you sir ne bahut dino baad yaad kiya how are you sir ha we will welcome sir we are not going to welcome wasim but we are going to welcome hsp sir thanks sir thanks 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 same to you Chalo. So everyone, please welcome HSP sir, and please keep answering the questions that I'm asking. Okay. So we are talking about the, we are talking about the yes, histology, the histology of the uterus. So we are talking about the perimetrium, the outer most layer. What is that perimetrium? What is that perimetrium, bache? It is the outer most layer. Done, bache? done bache so it is also known as see it is outermost so basically it is the visceral peritoneum if you don't know the peritoneum please revise it right the outermost covering of the visceral organs that is peritoneum like i'll give you one example kidneys for kidneys we used to say kidneys are retro peritoneal right kidneys are retro peritoneal because they are present ventrally to that peritoneum so peritoneum is a layer which is covering the viscera thank you thank you 
एज एस पी सर एब्सोल्यूटली राइट राइट सो गाइज प्लीज प्लीज बी एनर्जेटिक सी एच एस पी सर इज हेयर टू मोटिवेट यू पीपल एंड आई नो इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू अटेंड वेरी लॉन्ग सेशन बट यू डू नॉट हैव सफिशियंट टाइम नाउ राइट सो रियली यू नीड टू वर्क हार्ड देर इज नो सब्सिट्यूट फॉर दैट हार्ड वर्क सो यू हैव टू एट लीस्ट कवर योर सिलेबस वंस राइट एंड वंस विल फिनिश इट देन अगेन देर विल बी द रिविजन सेशन्स देर विल बी द एन सी आर टी रीडिंग सेशन्स बट बिफोर दैट योर कॉन्टेंट नीड्स टू बी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग fine okay so come back now focus here guys focus here so what are we talking we are talking about the perimetrium which is the outermost layer it is actually the visceral peritoneum what's that it is actually the visceral peritoneum we even call it as adventitia okay this layer is also known as adventitia so this is extra that i'm telling you you want to write it you can you want to leave it you can it's pure, purely your choice right perimetrium so it is the outermost layer its main function is of protection so next to it is the myometrium next to it is what next to it is the myometrium so myo means muscles what is the meaning of myo myo means muscles and m for myo m for middle layer what is it it is the middle layer so when you talk about the middle layer of the uterus right that is myo so bachche it is having the smooth muscles do you know smooth muscles yes smooth muscles uh they are they are having spindle shaped right they do not have the striations and if you remember smooth muscles they are so obviously they are involuntary okay involuntary and these smooth muscles they show rhythmic contraction relaxation rhythmic contraction relaxation which is very important right so here in the uterus these muscles they are very important because during childbirth when there will be the hormonal release when there will be the signal right these muscles will undergo rhythmic contraction relaxation contraction relaxation and that will help in parturition and moreover bachche when semen is there in vagina the prostaglandins are there right they also help in that you know the stimulation of that contraction so that sperm can move so that's how you have to remember this so myometrium the middle layer bachche right what is it the middle layer and it is having the yes mera bachcha it is having what it is having the muscles which muscles are there smooth muscles okay which muscles are there smooth muscles okay understood sure bachche right so next to it or the innermost layer is what that is the endometrium and i think you all are aware of this endometrium so endometrium is what endo means inside what is the meaning of endo endo means inside so it is innermost right innermost glandular layer so if it is glandular means it is having the gland so of course this layer is secretory right it is going to secrete the things it is secretory layer right it is glandular layer okay innermost glandular and yes you are right it is the layer where the implantation occurs okay it is the layer where implantation occurs any doubt yes students any doubt yes or no it is the layer where what is going to happen the implantation occurs fine bachche fine bachche and of course you know it very well that when it comes to the endometrium it will undergo it undergoes rid yes it undergoes periodic changes remember during menstrual cycles so during menstrual cycle it will undergo the periodic changes right you know that with every cycle you know that endometrial lining it will degenerate it will be discarded then again the growth will occur again the cell uh, you know that uh, uh, proliferation of the endometrial cells will be there so that's what you need to remember so periodic changes means that cyclic changes so no need to uh, get confused clear bachche clear bachche so endometrium it is glandular secretory myometrium muscular which muscles are there very important smooth muscles smooth muscle means involuntary means you cannot control the the contraction and relaxation of these muscles with your own will okay so here we will talk about the oxytocin we are going to talk about the hormones here understood understood bachche yes so this is about the uterus where the implantation 
is going to take place understood done next is the vagina which is again a tube like structure next is what next is the vagina again a tube like structure so approximately 10 centimeter long it is what is it it is approximately 10 centimeter long and you know that in the case of females it is going to be the copulatory organ so the most important point here is again i am repeating this point students that it is fibro muscular and glandular and non glandular right it is fibro muscular and non glandular structure fine it is fibro muscular muscles are there okay muscles are there right but it is it is non glandular yes but uh, zifan yes but the perimetrium and the visceral peritoneum here is same okay visceral peri uh, uh, perimetrium or visceral peritoneum here is same clear but clear but now the next part now in the case of females right we know it very well isn't it in the case of males there is only one aperture through which semen will come out and even the urine will come out right the urinogenital aperture is there but in the case of females the story is not like that right we have two different openings one is the urinary opening urinary meters is there but another one is the vaginal opening right so now when you talk about the vagina the opening of a vagina which it is yes it is known as vaginal opening or vaginal orifices so this orifices word is for the opening right this orifices word is for the opening is that clear yes but this orifices word it is it is basically what it is what it is the opening right right so in the case of female urinary opening is different and the vaginal opening is different right or the genital opening is different but one thing one more thing that you need to remember but when it comes to the urinary opening it is towards the anterior side okay it is towards the anterior side sometimes you know they can ask you the question on the basis of that okay and then there will be the vaginal opening so you can also use the word orifices okay so this vaginal opening you know it is covered with a layer can you tell me the name of that layer yes but right can you tell me the name of that layer yes anyone yes can you tell me see but this layer is covered with hymen so what is hymen hymen is a mucous membrane actually this vaginal opening it is in completely it is not completely covered it is incompletely covered with mucous membrane it's a kind of strong mucous membrane right that is known as hymen okay that is known as hymen so vaginal opening is covered with hymen understood so it's a septum of mucous membrane right it's a septum of mucous membrane so focus focus on this word where they are saying you know that it is incompletely covered can you tell me the reason behind it that why is it incompletely covered right why is it incompletely covered can you just tell me about it yes to prevent infection no exactly anjani excellent anjani so that vagina see menstrual blood is not going to come out from the urinary opening menstrual blood comes out from that vaginal opening okay okay are you getting it so that is why that is why it is incompletely covered with the septum of the mucous membrane so that menstrual blood can come right so that is the hymen and but no doubt hymen is considered as a sign of virginity which is not true right it is considered that during first sexual intercourse right the bleeding will be there to the female who's virgin which is not true why like uh, still right it is a mentality people consider that rupturing of hymen is the sign of virginity okay which is, which is literally not true why is it so because in some females it it is the right in some females that can also be possible that in their case even after the sexual intercourse the hymen is not ruptured in their case this can happen 
this can happen and sometimes what happened the this hymen can rupture uh, without uh, you know without any sexual intercourse like let's say even even sometimes because of the use of the tampons like these days females they use tampons also right even because of horse riding because of cycling right any type of such activity because of that because of stretching exactly so it should not be considered like that okay okay so this part clear so hymen is actually covering what it is covering the vaginal opening is that clear it is covering the vaginal opening done bache done bache sure understood so if there is any doubt do let me know nothing so next part to it is the external genitalia now we will talk about the external genitalia that is vulva vulva okay what is that that is vulva in the case of female in the case of male also right that external genitalia is penis okay that is the external genitalia but here it is the vulva so what are we going to discuss here you know na mons pubis labia majora labia minora right clitoris that is what we have to discuss here in the external genitalia clear bachche clear bachche yes so let's start with the mons pubis first so can you tell me what is this mons pubis yes students can you just tell me what is that mons pubis now i think i have missed this miss the diagram of this particular part prajwal i have already answered this that the presence and absence of hymen is not at all uh, related to the virginity very good vijay excellent vijay excellent so mons pubis is that cushiony fatty tissue that area which is having the pubic hair and what is the role of this mons pubis to provide the protection right to provide the protection clear bachche clear bachche so mons pubis is anterior most portion of external genitalia it is a cushion of fatty tissue right it is a cushion of fatty tissue covered with skin and pubic hair okay it is covered with skin and pubic hair okay that is the mons pubis so it is towards the anterior side it is the anterior most okay it is the anterior most part of the external genitalia understood understood sure bachche sure 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 okay so next is the clitoris bachche clitoris is posterior to mons pubis okay it is posterior to mons pubis and the important point here is that this clitoris it is homologous to glans penis do you know that it is homologous to glans penis remember in the case of penis that interior most part that conical kind of structure is considered as that glans penis na which is covered with a loose fold of uh, skin the prepuce or foreskin so homo it is homologous homologous like we are comparing it like in a labia majora labia majora is homologous to scrotum like this so this part this clitoris is homologous to glans penis and yes bachche this clitoris it is also considered as reduced penis right because this clitoris is also having the erectile tissue right it is also having the erectile tissue in the case of penis we were talking about the erectile tissue na where during sexual arousal there will be the supply of the blood same here so you are talking about the clitoris it is posterior to mons pubis it is homologous to glans penis it is also referred as reduced penis because it is also having the erectile tissue right it is also having the erectile tissue are you getting it are you getting it yes bachche <coughs> right yes or no yes or no clear bachche so it is having the erectile tissue fine fine so obviously if it is having the erectile tissue so it is understood bachche isn't it it is understood that during the sexual arousal during the sexual arousal the blood supply will be there 
in the case of penis i told you that three bundles of erectile tissue will be there two corpus spongio uh, two corpora uh, cavernosa and one corpus spongiosum here two erectile tissues are there okay and moreover if you talk about the position of this clitoris it's a bache tiny finger like structure and it is given in ncert right it's a tiny finger like structure and where is it located like let's say when you talk about the female yes when you talk about the female external genitalia na you talk about these folds these folds of skin okay the outer most one it is the labia majora and the inner one it is the labia minora okay it is the labia minora so this at the junction of these two labia minora here here that tiny finger like structure will be present and it is just right anterior to the urinary opening fine this structure is just anterior to the urinary opening okay the what the clitoris fine bache right so it is at the junction of two labia minora just above the urethral or the urinary opening clear bache done so it is this clitoris is also covered with that skin the prepuce right as we discussed in the male external genitalia fine bache clear so next part is next part is labia majora okay next part is labia majora okay bache so bache i'll ask you one question like in the case of males we uh, discuss the seminal vesicles we discuss the corpus gland we discuss the prostate gland so in the case of females do we have any glands here in the system yes right do we have the glands there tell me do we have the glands there some are saying no some are saying yes just give me one answer yes bachche bachche there are glands we will talk about it so labia majora these are the two folds of skin two fleshy folds of right two fleshy folds of skin and the most important thing that you need to write down here is that it is homologous to yes bachche it is homologous to scrotum right it is homologous to what it is homologous to scrotum labia majora and here when you talk about this labia majora so two fleshy folds of skin they are okay so here inner surface is hairless but outer side is having hair and sebaceous gland okay done so when you talk about the labia majora these are the outer two fleshy folds of skin where inner side is hairless right it is not having any gland or something but outer side is having hair and even the sebaceous gland clear bachche and even the sebaceous gland so these are kind of you know elevated what are they they are just kind of you know elevated fleshy folds of skin understood yes bachche understood so next is the labia minora i hope you know about it i hope you know about it do i need to explain the labia minora as well yes so let's say this is the labia majora next to it these two thin folds they are the labia minora and labia minora is considered homologous to pineal urethra right that penis is having that urethra part na so it is considered homologous to pineal urethra fine okay right is that clear so that labia minora is homologous to pineal 
urethra right they are comparatively two thin folds of skin understood they are what they are the two thin folds of skin yes prajwal you are li right that two labia minora they fuse they will form that fauchette okay they will form that fauchette understood any other doubt okay so see these two folds of skin they will get fused they are going to form the fauchette done any other doubt any other doubt fine so it is also having many 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 sebaceous glands okay it is also having many sebaceous glands fine bachche fine 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 okay so now let's move to the next part okay so uh let's talk about the glands here so bachche one is the lesser vestibular glands and another is the greater vestibular gland these are the glands that we have to discuss here lesser vestibular gland it is also known as gland of skin i don't know you know about it or not but this is important okay this is important clear bachche yes or no so what are we talking we are talking about the gland so the lesser uh, vestibular uh, so, uh, gland is also there and the greater vestibular gland is also there so this is also known as gland of skin what are they they are also known as gland of skin clear bachche so they are present around urethral opening they are present on the either side of the urethral opening do you know that they are present on the either side of the urethral opening and this gland of skin it is considered uh, uh, as homologous to prostate gland so it is also going to provide that you know the secretions the gland of skin it is also going to provide what it is also going to provide the secretions right bachche right bachche so it is homologous to the male prostate fine it is homologous to the male prostate clear bachche done okay so uh that will be better present on either side of urethral opening so male prostate done so obviously it is also going to secrete the mucus so next is the greater vestibular gland so you need to remember which one is the lesser vestibular gland and which one is the greater vestibular gland so greater vestibular gland is also known as bartholin's gland and bachche this is important please write down it is homologous to copper's gland okay it is homologous to copper's gland clear then it is homologous to copper's gland so now you know the uh, function of copper's gland right right that is going to lubricate the penis during sexual arousal uh, right uh, during sexual intercourse so here also it is also going to provide the secretion so this uh, bartholin gland it is present on either side right it is present on either sides of vaginal opening Here it is present on either side of vaginal opening. Done, bache. The Bartholin gland. So obviously, alkaline fluid during sexual excitement will be released by this. any doubt yes okay any doubt here bachche so we will discuss the structure of ovaries in detail also but firstly let's complete the secondary sexual char uh, character that is mammary gland or the breast right then we'll be discussing the then we will be discussing the ovaries as well okay okay aha uh -huh. Done. Doubt, doubt, doubt. Any doubt?
okay so firstly let's talk about the breast the mammary gland and then we will discuss the next part so bachche we i am saying that it is a secondary sexual character right like uh, so can you just explain what is the meaning of secondary sexual character even i explained it before yes bachche even i explained it before that they are you know going to help in the union of male and female gametes they can act as a passage for the gametes and moreover moreover if you talk about this mammary gland they are it is the sex, secondary sexual character because it is not playing any direct role in the fertilization after the fertilization after the child birth it is going to nourish the baby okay it is going to nourish the baby right okay yes or no it is it is going to provide the nourishment to the baby okay so directly it is not play, playing any uh, role in that uh, you know the union of gametes fine okay so mammary gland breast this is what we need to discuss so can you see the ribs here can you see the ribs here right so in the case of human females they are well developed but in the case of male they are not right they are not in the case of males nipples are present but you know that they are vestigial but in the case of females they are well developed right their size will also grow and during pregnancy further growth will be there milk production will also start after child birth right you know it very well so what do you need to focus here so see this diagram as well it is from ncrt it's very important so see this ribs are present and can you see the muscles between the ribs if you, even if you cannot see you should know what to write here because diagrams can come right in your final paper diagrams can can come so you really need to remember that so just above the ribs so focus here what is it it is pectoralis major muscle important it is important right it is very very important clear bachche so breast they lie over the pectoralis major muscles right bachche right so they are present in males also but you know that they are rudimentary so it lies just above the pectoralis major muscle so this question can be asked fine this question can be asked clear bachche clear 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 done so you know that when female when female will attain the puberty then it will start its growth na otherwise it is not isn't it otherwise it is not yes or no so when there will be the hormonal release okay then it will start its growth right so you know that this part is the nipple here and it is covered right it is in its surrounding the darkly pigmented area that is areola you should know the naming okay you should know the naming here that is known as areola isn't it isn't it right and it's not like that 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 areola is not having the glands like let's say if this is the darkly pigmented area and there is a nipple so in that darkly pigmented area also we are going to see some areolar glands that are basically sebaceous right you know na sebaceous gland can you just tell me the difference in between the sweat glands and the sebaceous glands yes can you just tell me the difference in between the sweat glands and the sebaceous glands anyone what is the difference in between the sweat glands and the sebaceous gland so obviously sebaceous glands they will provide oily secretions right the oily secretions will be there exactly the oily secretions will be there that's what you need to remember even okay sebaceous gland fine okay so now see this <laughs> let's revise this part from the ncrt itself so you can see here bache that a functional mammary gland is the characteristic of all female mammals and the mammary glands they are paired structure that contain glandular tissue so if the word is glandular tissue means secretory it is going to release something okay it is going to release something and moreover variable amount of fat is there like after puberty okay after puberty you know that breast growth starts why estrogen right 
estrogen will be released we will discuss that now after uh, finishing this topic we will discuss the structure of ovary then we will talk about oogenesis then menstrual cycle so after completing that menstrual cycle i'll give you the break okay i'm going to give you the break after that and then after that we will start the next part okay the fertilization part and uh, the cleavage part so then it is not going to take much time so these are the most important topics right the one we are discussing now okay so but uh okay so see fsh and lh is also there in female system also follicle stimulating hormone that will act on the follicular cells of the ovary we'll explain it in detail in result to that follicular cells are going to release estrogen and that estrogen when it is released right when a girl when when she will attain the puberty that estrogen will be released and that estrogen will help in the growth of the uh, in the growth of that breast so basically that fat growth will be because of that clear bachche clear bachche sure yes or no and even i don't know whether you know it or not uh, sometimes it is a, like mostly it is advised that we should not we should not have that packed food right which is wrapped in the plastic covers if that plastic is not of yes bachche if that plastic is not of uh, you know good quality because there is there are certain chemicals that mimics estrogen so estrogen is is basically responsible for that you know fat uh, uh, product for fat growth in the case of females fine in the case of females so that's what you need to remember so glandular tissue of each breast is divided into the lobes look at the structure okay so here no doubt it is not that clear the yellow yellow part is basically the uh, the yellow yellow part is basically your fat right so here the lobes are there so you need to remember this part fine you need to remember this part okay so if you if you are going to talk about the structure of each lobe let me write it here structure of lobe let's say we are discussing about a single lobe here so obviously right in the case of female breast you will see many lobes look at this part right 15 to 20 mammary lobes are present and that lobes are having what group of cells cluster of cells and we call that cells as alveoli no doubt we discuss this word alveoli in the case of uh, lungs also you know na alveoli a thin walled sac like structure where the gaseous exchange will be there but again alveoli alveoli is here the cluster of cells alveoli okay okay so these alveoli they secrete what they secrete milk under the hormonal influence these alveolar cells they secrete milk okay and that milk will be stored here in the cavity of these alveolar cells this is what you need to remember i'll tell you about the hormones as well first of all understand the structure so in a breast basically what is going to happen 15 to 20 mammary lobes are there 15 to 20 mammary lobes are there and that mammary lobes are also having the cluster of cells group of cells and we used to call it as alveoli please highlight this part students please highlight this part okay okay so basically in a single structure of lobe what do we have we have many alveoli they are also known as sni understood so many alveoli or sni are there and then that alveoli they are going to form what they are going to form the tubules right they are going to form the tubules what will they form yes or no tell me are you getting it bachcha you need to remember it it's very simple it is simply present in a female body this is what you have to you just need to remember it okay you just need to remember it so many alveoli or sni are there then right many alveoli and sni are there and then bachche they will open up many mammary tubules will be there it's t d a okay so basically cluster of cells they are forming the tubules so we have 15 to 20 mammary lobes so basically accordingly the tubules will be there yes or no smiling accordingly the tubules will be there yes or no and then these tubules they are they are further going to form the ducts right these tubules they will join 
from all that cluster of cells the tubules are coming out they right so there are many mammary tubules so they are forming what they are forming many mammary ducts as well what are they doing they are forming many mammary ducts as well so many mammary ducts they will also join right many mammary ducts they will also join and then they are going to form what ampulla so in general when we use this word now ampulla it is something funnel like something having you know wide face right something which is wide that is ampulla okay that is ampulla remember even in the digestive system we used to discuss like this hepato pancreatic pancreatic duct or ampulla something like this are you getting it something like this so many mammary lobules then many mammary ducts and then there will be one because so, so many ducts they will join they will form one ampulla right that's why i said that it is tda tubules ducts and then comes the ampulla tubule ducts and then comes the ampulla so a is the first alphabet first letter right so that's why one okay that's why one understood so one mammary ampulla and then finally one lactiferous duct from where the milk will come out clear bachche one lactiferous duct from where the milk will come out understood understood sure so this is what you need to remember many alveoli many mammary tubules then many mammary ducts uh, then one ampulla and then further that ampulla is forming that one lactiferous duct from which milk will come out when baby will provide the suckling stimulus so basically this lactiferous duct will open up on the surface of the nipple बच्चे प्रज्वल मेमोरी एलविल आए व्हाट विल दे डू सी बच्चे एंटीरियर लोब ऑफ पिट्यूट्री ओके एंटीरियर लोब ऑफ पिट्यूट्री मींस पार्स डिस्टेलिस ओके दिस एंटीरियर लोब ऑफ पिट्यूट्री इट रिलीजेस द हार्मोन प्रोलैक्टिन right the pro means production right pro means production so obviously this is the hormone which helps in the milk production right this is the hormone which right which which is going to do what the production of the milk prolactin it is not just the prolactin right during pregnancy even progesterone also acts on the female breast right it increases the size it increases the uh, progesterone and estrogen both uh, both act the size of the breast increases the alveolar growth accordingly changes accordingly change so prolactin prolactin means pro means production milk production this this hormone so under the influence of this hormone majorly somewhere progesterone is also playing the role but i am saying what am i saying i am saying majorly so this prolactin will act on that alveoli right will act on that cluster of cells so under the influence of this hormone right these alveoli i am using the word secrete these alveoli they will secrete the milk which will be there in the alveolar cavity and then then that milk will be passed to the mammary tubules so many mammary tubules will join they will form mammary ducts then further milk will be passed then many mammary ducts they are joined they form one this is what you need to remember that's why i am emphasizing this one mammary ampulla then further that one mammary ampulla will further form that uh, further open into a, uh, open up into that uh, lactiferous duct on the surface of the nipple it's like that okay it's like that right and how the milk will come out hope you know this right hope you know this how that milk is going to come out milk will come out from the when the baby will give the suckling stimulus and the oxytocin is released right this oxytocin o means out so it is also known as milk ejection hormone it is also known as milk let down hormone okay also known as milk ejection hormone it is also known as milk let down hormone it is also the bonding hormone it is also known as the birth hormone 
clear it is also known as the birth hormone so birth hormone bonding hormone milk let down let down hormone right milk ejection hormone it is it it acts on even it acts on that smooth uh, muscles right and it is responsible for that rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscle okay okay oxytocin so prolactin is released from the anterior lobe of pituitary it is secreted from the anterior lobe of pituitary but when it comes to the oxytocin see i am helping you people to revise the hormone part as well so hypothalamus secrete oxytocin that will be stored in posterior lobe of pituitary known as pars nervosa so when suckling stimulus will be provided that pars nervosa will release oxytocin focus on the words here okay focus on the words here clear exactly done so milk let down hormone milk ejection hormone birth hormone bonding hormone love hormone these are the names for that oxytocin so even i hope you have noticed that that milk made right uh, before uh, taking the milk from that cow or buffalo they used to right the calf used to go initially right then that calf is going to provide the suckling stimulus then it become easy for that milk to come out okay that's important Zephan, it's same. It's same. Okay, but milk ejection, milk let down will be because of the oxytocin production is because of the prolactin. So that's how you have to remember. Now, prolactin, pro means production, oxytocin, o means out, out. So that's how you have to remember. And yes, you are right. Even that is also the thing, bache. That uh, labor pains they are induced by what? they are induced with the help of what yes can you just tell me labor pains they are induced because of anyone B with the help of that oxytocin clear bache so this is about the memory gland okay so one uh take it so it's done so next is the structure of ovary that we have to discuss so with that right bache we will also discuss the follicular genesis the oo genesis and uh, everything so trust me if you understand structure of ovary properly right the the oo genesis topic and the menstrual cycle topic is going to be very 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 simple for you okay colostrum is healthy colostrum is very important very good for that baby it's very healthy Done. Just okay. Hmm. Okay. So it's a kind of uh, you know lengthy topic. It will take another one hour in which we'll finish. You know the oo genesis. the follicular genesis the structure of ovary oo genesis follicular genesis plus menstrual cycle so it will near about it is going to take you know uh, 45 minutes or 1 hour okay so i'll say getting sleeping mode nahi 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 no nahi yaar yeah. please we started the class at 7 it's still it's just 11:33 so you can have a cup of tea or coffee theek hai support me at least uh, i think you you should support me till 1 what say है ना नहीं टेन मिनट्स ब्रेक ठीक है फाइन फेयर इनफ आई डोंट हैव एनीथिंग टू डू सो टेन मिनट्स मींस टेन मिनट्स देयर सो सी यू ऑल एट चलो ट्वेल्व मिनट्स ब्रेक सी यू ऑल एट इलेवन फोर्टी फाइव व्हाट से ठीक है सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द लास्ट ब्रेक एंड देन व्हेन वी वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू
fine then we are going to continue okay ha it will go till 1 
Hello, hello, hello. So you people are back with the same energy. Seriously. Seriously. Are you sure? So many students, you know, they have left the class. Seriously. Like even I am taking the session from 7 p.m. You just need to watch it. And you have to make the notes as well. So guys, please share the session link with your friends as well. Invite them, tell them to join the class because now we are going to discuss the structure of ovary, right? The folliculogenesis, the oogenesis, the most important topics we are going to discuss now. Okay, so ask everyone to join the class quick. Ask everyone to join the class quickly, quickly, just do it. Right, just do it and then uh, let's finish this particular topic. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you so much. Okay. So now the next topic is structure of ovary. Already you know that, that when we talk about the ovary, right, the outermost covering is going to be the visceral peritoneum, then tunica, uh, then germinal epithelium, then tunica albuginea. This is what I explained. I'm again, I'm just writing the uh, initials here. So visceral peritoneum is there, germinal epithelium is there, and then what do we have? We have the tunica albuginea. Now, Bache, after that, there will be the stroma, and I already told you that this stroma is divided into two parts. The outermost is the cortex and the middle, uh, the innermost is going to be the medulla where there will be the abundant blood supply. So the blood vessel will enter and leave that point is going to be the hilum. So up to this part all clear? Yes, Bache. Right. Up to this part all clear. Now what is the next part here that we need to understand? See Bache, when it is the cortex, okay, here there are the follicular cells. Here, there are the ovarian cells or the follicular cells. And within these follicles, that oocyte is going, is oocyte is present that will grow under the hormonal in, uh, influence. Now, if you want to understand this particular topic, right, uh, let's relate this topic with the oogenesis. I know, guys, is there any issue with the voice? Is there any issue with the voice? I okay 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 guy got it got it got it okay i got it now now i think it's fine now i think it's fine yes Anna, now it's fine so my point is that here the in the cortex the follicles are present within that follicles oocytes are there that oocytes will grow right and ultimately uh, uh, the, that oocytes will grow and it is all after the puberty but in the case of females the things are you know uh, different from the spermatogenesis clear bache so if you right if you miss any point i will ask you ask you this topic again and again again and again i'm going to ask you so if uh, you don't understand anything then please ask me the questions okay so first of all so now we'll be discussing the topic now we know the structure of the ovary this is what we know yes or no students we know the structure of ovary tell me quickly uh 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 mm, yes we know the structure of ovary Oogenesis is not a problem at all. Do you understand the structure? Then everything will be easy for you. Right? Everything will be easy for you. Okay. So, in the case of spermatogenesis, you know that genesis means formation, spermatogenesis means sperm formation. So, it is going to start when the boys, they will attain the age of puberty. This is what we know. Right, bache, and that is a you know kind of lifetime event. No doubt, uh, with age, the sperm production decreases. But in the case of males, it's not like that. That uh, it will you know the sperm production will be there till thirties only or till forties only. It's not like that. Okay. But on the another hand, when you talk about the oogenesis, in the oogenesis, the story is different. Okay. So please understand it. I'll go little slow here. Uh, slow here. Okay okay i will go little slow here clear bache so in the case of oogenesis 
in the case of oogenesis so it is going to start in the embryonic uh, it will start during embryonic stages okay bachche so this is a kind of point of difference as well this is what you need to note down so when will it start when will it start right bachche during embryonic stages so during embryonic stages what is going to happen see in the case of females they will start their work in embryonic stages but it will not be done till fertilization okay it will not be done till fertilization clear 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 right so during embryonic stages what is going to happen now little little ovaries are there little little ovaries they will form so now in these ovaries follicular cells are already there right the rest story is same right in the case of females also primordial germ cells from the yolk sac they will find their way they will come to the gonads and that yolk sacs are going to form the germ cells right and finally we are going to get that oogonium right right that pgcs from yolk sac they will come to the gonads and then in the gonads that uh, uh, primordial germ cells will form the germ cells right we are going to get the oogonium there right this first point clear this first part clear yes or no that we are going to get the oogonium there oogonium is singular oogonia will be the word so basically the proliferation will be there basically the multiplication will be there are you getting it or not yes i know in this topic many students they they don't understand this topic right so again i'm explaining are you getting it i want the, the responses bachche be quick and if you are new na if you just join the session quickly hit the like button and subscribe our channel quick right but you see precursor germ cells means primordial germ cells means something which is going to form the germ cells that germ cells are what that oogoniums right that oogonia because they are the one which are going to further form the gametes okay okay this part clear so we'll be having so many so many so many so many so many so many oogonia what will be there oogonia and you know that right rest story is same the, there will be no change in the sequence you just understand the stages okay okay you just understand the stages so we are talking about the embryonic stages okay so oogonia will form oogonia will form oogonia will form so there this is the simple multiplication what is going on there this is the simple multiplication what is the meaning of multiplication like one cell is dividing into two two cells are dividing into four four cells are dividing into eight like this any doubt yes bachche be quick any doubt sort it now this oogonia right this oogonium i'm talking again i'm repeating i'm talking about the embryonic stages i'm talking about the embryonic stages so this oogonium will start the growth it will grow a little it will form primary oocyte what will it do it will form primary oocyte even it is also deployed oogonium is also deployed oogonium is also deployed primary oocyte is also deployed basically this oogonium will grow its cytoplasm will increase so it will show the growth then during embryonic stages this primary oocyte bachche it will start meiosis 1 what will it do it will start meiosis 1 up to this word any doubt thank you anusha thank you so much yes bachcho any doubt no sure so oogonium primary oocyte then it will undergo meiosis 1 but here what is going to happen guys i'm going very slow please listen to me carefully see you know that when it comes to the meiosis it is going to take place in two rounds when it is the meiosis 1 you will be having pmat what is pmat what is pmat pmat is prophase 1 metaphase 1 anaphase 1 telophase 1 that is the pmat then when you talk about the prophase 1 remember the trick l z p d d do you remember the trick l z p d d l z p d d what is that l z p d d that in prophase 1 there are five sub stages leptotin is there zygotin is there paketin is there diplotin is there dikinesis is there right dikinesis is there are you getting it l z p d d l z p d d leptotin zygotin paketin diplotin dikinesis leptotin zygotin paketin diplotin dikinesis right so 
this is what we have and you know that after this telo phase 1 then there will be the interkinesis then prophase 2 metaphase 2 anaphase 2 and the telo phase 2 is there that's what we have isn't it that's what we have so now what is happening here the oogonium is there the oogonium is forming the primary oocyte that primary oocyte will undergo meiosis 1 basically the meiosis 1 will be initiated bache but it will be till diplotene basically there will be an arrest in the diplotene stage of the prophase 1 are you getting it here but che rahul this is the most common mistake that you people make that's why i'm saying please listen to me very carefully okay Embry during embryonic stages in the case of females when female is still in the embryonic stages within her ovaries these kind of activities will start there will be the oogonium that oogonium will divide divide it will increase its number the oogonium will start its growth it will become primary oocyte that primary oocyte will start meiosis one but that will not be completed not even the prophase one will be completed okay so there will be an arrest in the diplotene stage there will be an arrest in the diplotene stage so this is a block and we also call it as a dictate block dictate block like it's like that in during embryonic stages in the ovaries that function has started but it will take a break right when will it take a break in that yes bache in that diplotene stage this part clear samriya laharika this part clear guys okay okay now now one more thing is going to happen within the ovaries during the embryonic stage right during embryonic stage one more thing is going to happen right bache right bache so now what is going to happen here this primary oocyte right this primary oocyte it is covered it 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 will be covered with the group of cells right bache it will be covered with the group of cells are you getting it this primary oocyte will be covered with the group of cells always remember whenever there is a group of cells right we use the word follicle we use the word follicle whenever there is a group of cell which word do we use we use the word follicle now during embryonic stages that primary oocyte has formed that primary oocyte is in the diplotene arrest and that is covered with the layer of cells group of cells right so this is the follicle so if you remember the stages of that follicle so you remember initially there is the primordial follicle then further there is a growth right right then what is happening further there is a growth then it will become primary follicle hai na so if you remember these stages initially primordial follicle then primary follicle so follicle means group of cell when i'm using the word primary follicle i am saying that there is a primary oocyte which is covered with a layer of cells and which cells are they these are that follicular cells that ovaries contain the cortex of the ovaries contain the follicular cells no or you can simply call them as ovarian cell you can also call them as granulosa cell soon they will become granulosa also this part clear this part clear so these are the cells of the ovary cells of that ovarian cortex right these are the cells of that ovarian cortex students right bache that is forming a layer around it understood that is forming a layer around it understood sure 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 so during embryonic stages i'm repeating this again right primary oocyte will start meiosis but there will be a there will be an arrest in the diplotene stage and moreover this primary oocyte when it is covered with a group of cell when it is covered with these ovarian cells then you use the word follicle and you are calling it as what the prime initially the primordial follicle then it is the primary follicle understood then it is the primary follicle understood neharika sure sure bache sure so now uh oh now when you are talking about the embryonic stages right 
no oogonia this is what you need to note down everyone that no more oogonia are formed no more oogonia are formed after birth no more oogonia are formed after birth okay write down quickly write down even added after birth okay so basically when female is in her embryonic stages vijay right the oogonia will form 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 that oogonia will grow primary oocyte is there that is having the diplotin arrest that's all when these primary oocyte is covered with a group of cells group of ovarian cells you are using the word primary follicle understood understood clear bachche so so during embryonic stages only so many follicles will form they will form in lakhs are you getting my point they will form in they will form in lakhs what is the meaning of follicle follicle means group of cells what is the meaning of follicle follicle means group of cells so no further follicles will be or no further oogonia ya no further follicles will be added after birth up to this point all clear up to this point all clear so this is the story of the embryonic stages in the case of female still if there is doubt do let me know students really this i really want you people to understand this topic right i really want you guys to understand this topic okay okay now the child birth is there that baby girl will come to this beautiful uh, world so from child birth to puberty nothing is going to happen in the ovaries but but during this period there will be the degeneration of these follicles from child birth to puberty there will be the degeneration of follicles and we call it as follicular atresia what we call it we call it as follicular atresia so these follicles right these oogonia oogonia when it is covered with the ovarian cells when it is covered with that layer of cells you are using the you are calling it as follicle right what are you calling it you are calling it as follicle so basically what am i saying here that from child birth to puberty right because these follicles are in lakhs they will degenerate and we are going to call it as follicular atresia what we call it we are going to call it as follicular atresia now bachche at puberty right 60000 to 80000 follicles are present in each ovary Are you getting it? At puberty, sixty thousand to eighty thousand follicles are present in each ovary. Imagine they were in lakhs. They were in lakhs. Now they are just few thousands. Okay, okay. So now, what is going to happen when a girl will attain the age of puberty? You know that, right? I'm just quickly revising it. Hypothalamus will release GnRH, right? In response to that. anterior lobe of pituitary your pars distalis will release fsh lh right it will release fsh lh and this fsh will this fsh is going to act on the follicles and that will help in the growth of the follicles that's the story you know the hormonal control right yes bachche ganesh what is the doubt right you know the hormonal control hypothalamus will release gonadotropin releasing hormone right and because of the, and then what is going to happen bachche that will act on uh, uh, anterior lobe of pituitary that will release fsh and lh right They, that will release fsh and lh clear bachche 
जर्नी ऑलरेडी दे आर टू मच एंड यू नो द हॉर्मोन्स आर नॉट प्रेजेंट सो देर नंबर इज ऑल्सो मोर राइट सो मे बी दैट्स वाई दे आर डी जनरेटिंग आई डोंट नो द एग्जैक्ट रीजन हेयर जर्नी ओके सो एफ एस एच फॉलिकल स्टिमुलेटिंग हॉर्मोन वॉट इज द वर्ड हेयर जर्नी फॉलिकल स्टिमुलेटिंग हॉर्मोन मीन्स इट इज गोइंग टू स्टिमुलेट द ग्रोथ एंड द प्रोलीफेरेशन ऑफ द फॉलिकल्स लाइक सी एफ एस एच इज कमिंग एफ एस एच इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द पिट्यूट्री इट इज एक्टिंग ऑन ओवरीज within the ovaries in the cortex of the ovaries what do we have we have these follicles which are not growing we have the remaining follicles we have the remaining follicles right ganesh let me finish this you will understand that also hai na bachche so fsh ovary cortex fsh ovary cortex and within that cortex what do we have we have these follicles so under the influence under the influence of this fsh these follicles will now show the growth they will show that proliferation now can you understand that so i use the word folliculogenesis genesis means formation folliculogenesis means follicle the formation of follicles right it means the formation of follicles are you getting it are you getting it yes or no yes or no okay now see follicle so initially you know that it is primordial follicle initially you know that na how the story started even during the embryonic stages it was it started from the primordial follicle right yes or no yes or no Yes, bache. Yes or no? So, in the primordial follicle, see, already I explained you it in embryonic stages, but still, just for the quick revision, right? Just for the quick revision. So, what was happening? The oocyte, it was covered with cells. It was covered with cells. Yes or no? And that cells, right? That cells are known as what? They are ovarian cells. That cells are known as what? That cells are known as what? That cells are ovarian cells. है ना फॉलिक्यूलर सेल्स यू ऑल्सो कॉल दम एज फॉलिक्यूलर सेल्स यू ऑल्सो कॉल दम एज ओवेरियन सेल्स राइट सो इनिशियली तो दे आर फ्लैट इनिशियली तो दीज सेल्स आर फ्लैट बट देन दे विल ऑल्सो बिकम कॉल्यूमिनर राइट दीज सेल्स विल बिकम कॉल्यूमिनर ओके सो बेसिकली दैट इज हाउ द प्राइमोडियल फॉलिकल विल फॉर्म एनी डाउट डू आई नीड टू राइट इट नो आई विल टेल यू इन डिटेल द मेच्योर फॉलिकल इज दैट क्लियर is that clear now next is your primary follicle this is about the primordial next is your primary follicle please understand please listen to me carefully okay now already you know that there is an oocyte inside right there is an oocyte inside now bachche this oocyte it forms a layer around it this oocyte it forms a layer around it everyone please focus here this oocyte it forms a layer around it clear bachche and already the layer in the surrounding that that ovarian follicular layer is also present can you see that ovarian follicular layer is also present please focus here yes bachche yes bachche right i know these stages were there in the uh, we have discussed this part in the embryonic stages no we have discussed this part in the embryonic stages no during the embryonic stages we have studied that so now please focus so primary follicle is the word so in primordial follicle there is only one layer which is covering this oocyte initially it is flat later on it will become columnar now how can you differentiate primordial follicle from the primary follicle in the case of primary follicle bachcha there will be one more layer of glycoproteins within the follicular layer and the oocyte that is zona pellucida that is zona pellucida so i hope you remember that this zona pellucida it is a cellular right it is not made up of any cell yes bachche it is not made up of any cell it is a cellular this layer is made up of glycoproteins zp1 2 3 like this it is a cellular it is made up of what it is made up of glycoprotein and moreover let me tell you it is also known as primary egg membrane right it is also known as primary egg membrane are you getting it are you getting it 
इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज प्राइमरी एग मैम्रेन क्लियर बच्चे एंड मोर ओवर इन प्राइमरी फॉलिकल दिस दिस ओवेरियन सेल्स दे ऑल्सो प्रोलीफेरेट नाउ इट इज नॉट जस्ट द सिंगल लेयर दे ऑल्सो प्रोलीफेरेट दे ऑल्सो ग्रो लाइक दिस क्लियर सो इन प्राइमरी फॉलिकल वी हैव सीन दोना पेल्यूसिडा क्लियर बच्चे वी हैव सीन द जोना पेल्यूसिडा एंड वी हैव सीन दट दिस ओवेरियन फॉलिकल्स दे आर डिवाइडिंग 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 दे हैव फॉर्म द लेयर नाउ वी आर कॉलिंग इट एज मेम्ब्रेनस ग्रेन्यूलोजा और यू कैन सिंपली कॉल इट एज ग्रेन्यूलोजा लेयर ओके सो दिस हैज हैपन ड्यूरिंग द एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेजेस नाउ now this primary follicle you know that no further follicles no further oogonia will be added after birth right they are not added after birth yes or no yes or no so now primary follicle when the puberty will be attained under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone this these follicles they will grow every month one follicle randomly right right it will undergo maturation yes or no it will undergo maturation right bachche yes or no tell me tell me tell me tell me yes now see when you are talking about the secondary follicle already you are having primary oocyte that primary oocyte is covered with zona pellucida that primary oocyte is covered with zona pellucida and as i said because now follicles are growing even hormones are also there right hormone hormonal secretions are there hormones are grow, uh, this uh, follicles are growing yes bachcha these follicles they are growing these layers are growing so now what is happening because the size of follicle is increasing clear this is zona pellucida again this is our oocyte again okay so now the cell right what is happening here everyone what is happening here follicle is expanding follicle is expanding so stromal cell which are covering the right see follicles are expanding so fo follicles are expanding so stromal cells covering the membranous granulosa this is the membranous granulosa this layer basically we are calling it as membranous granulosa so follicles because they are expanding so the stromal cells don't get confused with the stromal cells you are talking about the ovarian cells here right you are talking about the ovarian cells here right okay 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 yes bachche so stromal cells which are covering the membranous granulosa they are now right what what is going to happen right uh covering the membranous granulosa they become theca interna so actually there is nothing to worry about simply one thing that you need to keep your in your mind is like see membranous granulosa is there so innermost cells now you are going to call them as theca interna it's like something is growing and you are giving that complete structure different different names it's like that clear bachche clear bachche are you getting it yes or no yes or no right so stromal cells covering the membranal granulosa they will become theca externa why because they are condensed it's not like that ki uh, simply we have named it as theca interna no no it's just that because these cells because it is growing so some cells inner cells they will become uh, condensed so you are calling it as theca interna and you know the theca interna what do they do the cells of theca interna they are the source of estrogen i hope now you guys can rela uh, relate so cells of theca interna they release estrogen the primary female sex hormone and this estrogen is ovarian hormone it is steroidal in nature its receptors are present within the cell intranuclear receptors are there okay bachche intranuclear receptors are there understood understood yes or no yes so in the secondary follicle what is happening see this is the theca interna theca interna has formed 
interna you know that means internal so these are the cells which are the source of estrogen and it in its surrounding what do you have you have theca externa right theca externa and that's not it further ovarian cells are also covering this structure that's how the follicle grow so now trial gamer interesting video now i think you can relate that why why do we say that when fsh acts on the ovaries ovaries start releasing estrogen right right when fsh acts on the ovary ovaries start releasing estrogen now i think you all can relate okay because that fsh will help uh, will grow these follicle size the cells the, the follicles will expand the cell layer will become condensed now it is the theca interna which is the source of estrogen and here this fibrous this fibrous layer is what this is theca externa so theca externa is not releasing estrogen it is the theca interna which is releasing naruto thank you so much thank you so much but please focus here done bachche understood so after secondary follicle the next stage of growth is also there right the next stage of growth is also there that is the tertiary follicle now see in the secondary follicle see ultimately there is a, the expansion of that follicle the further layers will be added right the further layers will be added and one thing you know primary oocyte covered with zona pellucida and then in the surrounding you have the theca interna you have the theca externa right and further 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 granulosa cells they are also forming the layers in the surrounding clear bachche they are further forming the layers in the surrounding done please tell me is it clear or not see oocyte zona pellucida theca interna theca externa and still we are going to see the uh, what granulosa cells here they will form that cumulus oophorus okay they are going to form that cumulus oophorus now can you see that i formed a very small i formed a kind of structure here within this oocyte can you see that I formed a structure here within the oocyte. Can you see that? But see, this is antrum. Right? What is this? This is antrum. It's a fluid filled cavity. It's a fluid filled cavity. That fluid within is also known as liquor folliculi. Right? That follicles has released that. No. So it is nothing but that fluid is the estrogen there. right so now please try to understand the stages here okay try to understand the stages here what has happened bachche the follicles they were growing in embryonic stages primordial or primary follicle then when uh, the girls they attain the puberty right the further because of hormones the follicles will further grow secondary follicle will form what has happened in secondary follicle we have seen that these these follicular layers they will show the growth their expansion is there right the more clearly we will we'll see theca interna theca externa right bachche right and now when it is the and theca interna is the source of estrogen now in the tertiary follicle further growth is there further growth is there now in the tertiary follicle what is happening now in the tertiary follicle what is ha happening bachche we will see a cavity right and that cavity is known as antrum the fluid filled cavity antrum is there right bachche and why because theca layer right why is it so bachche why is it so can you just tell me why is it so can you just tell me please anyone yes obviously so here because theca interna is releasing the estrogen that estrogen will be stored here 
right and you will get the fluid filled cavity now bachche now so see this this follicle is still growing even in the secondary follicle you see this thing these follicles are still growing so these na so growing follicles see these growing follicles are covered they are covered with what growing follicles are covered with granulosa cells they are covered with what they are covered with the granulosa cells hai na these growing follicles they are further covered with what they are covered with the granulosa cells and that and we call it as cumulus oophorus what do we call it we call it as cumulus oophorus that cell cell layer that is covering the developing uh, follicle and further here you will see right further here you will see that that cells right they will become columnar and now now you will call them as corona radiata so firstly there will be the zona pellucida released by right zona pellucida it is formed by the oocyte itself who formed it oocyte itself and when you talk about the corona radiata it is formed by the ovary so basically because the growing follicle is covered with the granulosa cells you are calling it as cumulus oophorus so some cells of that cumulus oophorus some cells which are close to that zona pellucida right that cells they will become columnar you are calling it as corona radiata clear bachche you are calling it as corona radiata any doubt yes bachche any doubt right this growing follicle is actually covered here this growing follicle is actually covered here right and you are calling it as what okay yes bachche so you are calling it as what you are calling it as corona radiata understood understood as of now it is see it's like that fine then bachche tell me is that clear or not and it's not like that actually see this is the this is the zona pellucida sorry this is the oocyte no this this is the oocyte na so see this one is having the cells this is the cumulus oophorus right this is the cumulus oophorus and slowly 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 so basically the oocyte is growing within now this is the tertiary follicle it is having the estrogen right it is having the estrogen there now it's the time that within this follicle you know even that further that meiotic stages they'll be completed okay they'll be completed clear bachche bachche this cumulus oophorus the innermost cells of cumulus oophorus they forms the corona radiata बच्चे मोहम्मद जहीर एंड गणेश बच्चे कोरोना रेडिएटा इज द सेकेंडरी एग मेम्ब्रेन प्राइमरी एग मेम्ब्रेन इज जोना पेल्यूसिडा इट विल फॉर्म फर्स्ट इट आल्सो हेल्प इन द स्पर्म एंड एग बाइंडिंग देन कम्स द कोरोना रेडिएटा लाइक दिस इज द जोना पेल्यूसिडा देन कम्स द कोरोना रेडिएटा हियर सो कोरोना रेडिएटा इज फॉर्म्ड बाय द ओवेरियन सेल्स राइट दैट ओवेरियन सेल्स राइट इनर मोस्ट ओवेरियन सेल्स दे आर फॉर्मिंग इट दैट्स हाउ यू कैन रिमेंबर फाइन दैट्स हाउ यू कैन रिमेंबर बच्चे जोना पेल्यूसिडा इज सिक्रीटेड बाय सेकेंडरी ऊसाइट अखंख्या एंड इट मीन्स द प्राइमरी फॉलिकल प्राइमरी ऊसाइट कन्वर्ट्स टू सेकेंड बच्चे सी इन द अखंख्या प्राइमरी ऊसाइट हैज स्टार्टेड द मियोटिक डिविजन इट इज देयर इन द अरेस्ट ओके इट इज देयर इन द अरेस्ट वंस द मियोस वन विल बी कंप्लीटेड देन यू विल गेट द सेकेंडरी ऊसाइट नो राइट राइट सो इवन इन द प्राइमरी ऊसाइट यू विल स्टार्ट सींग दैट जोना पेल्यूसिडा बट सी more over further growth will be there then that layer will be proper no so it's like that so these are the stages of growth okay these are the stages of growth okay so like see if i have to make it like this so here you can simply see this is the oocyte right covered with the zona pellucida and further this oocyte this oocyte is further covered with because overall it's a follicle this oocyte is going to further covered with the cumulus oophorus where innermost layer will form your uh, corona radiata later on right right innermost layer will become columnar that will form corona radiata and the cells of this right cells of this granulosa itself they are going to form that cumulus oophorus so it's like ki it's like a group of granulosa cells are there right many granulosa cells are there the innermost one which will become you know columnar you are calling them as corona radiata surrounding me the granulosa cells which are placed you are calling it as cumulus oophorus that's all that's all 
क्लियर बच्चे दैट्स ऑल एंड बिकेज बिकेज फर्दर फर्दर यू आर हैविंग थीका फॉलिकुलर सेल्स हैज फॉर्म थीका इंटरना एक्सटर्ना सो दैट थीका इंटरना हैज स्टार्टेड रिलीजिंग right it has started releasing the estrogen so that estrogen will result in the formation of this fluid filled cavity okay it will result in the formation of this fluid filled cavity that is your antrum so initially that antrum is small so now 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 i think it is clear to you yes or no right now i think it is clear to you fine right fine so that's the tertiary follicle so it's just the stages of growth fine it is nothing but the stages of growth so you understand this part you will understand the process then then after tertiary follicle the next to it is the mature follicle this mature follicle is also known as graafian follicle clear this mature follicle is also known as graafian follicle now what is going to happen this layer let's say this is the oocyte now it is the secondary oocyte try to understand this part students this thing we have studied during the embryonic stages now here we have seen the expansion of the follicle obviously because hormones are available because estrogen has started releasing so obviously that arrest will overcome also right that arrests they are going to overcome also yes or no you tell me that arrest they will overcome na dictate arrest was there these oocytes they are having arrest in the prophase stage so they will further grow so prophase 1 will be completed metaphase 1 will be completed your anaphase 1 will be completed telophase 1 will be completed prophase 2 will be completed but again there will be an arrest in the metaphase 2 sub stage the metaphase 2 stage remember samiksha remember so in tertiary follicle right in the tertiary follicle what has started bachche what has started that meiosis right that meiosis has started continuing okay now when it is the right now when it is the mature follicle in the mature follicle definitely this fluid filled cavity antrum its size has increased right because estrogen secretion they are induced right estrogen secretions they are too much they are induced that's why the size of the cavity the antrum will also increase further you know the secondary oocyte is further having the zona pellucida then it is also having the corona radiata then further the ovarian cells which are covering it you are calling it as cumulus oophorus you are calling it as cumulus oophorus and within the layers right within the layers of this follicle the the antrum has created the antrum has formed understood yes or no so in the tertiary follicle that meiotic divisions they are taking place and when it is the mature or the graafian follicle again right because now it is the secondary oocyte me see bache it's very simple no meiosis one done primary oocyte will become secondary oocyte meiosis two done right compare no meiosis one done secondary oocyte meiosis two done then what ooted it is then it will become ooted let's related with the spermatogenesis primary oocyte after meiosis one secondary oocyte after meiosis two spermated then sperm but here you know that it is little different right it is little different yes or no here the story is different so what's the point here mature follicle graafian follicle okay the antrum the fluid filled cavity is there and here within this right because here the the first meiosis 1 it is completed second meiosis has started so obviously it is now it is the secondary oocyte no and it is having metaphase 2 arrest right i hope you remember it is having what it is having metaphase 2 arrest what is there metaphase 2 arrest you know now the secondary oocyte which is released from the mature follicle from the graafian follicle that is having the metaphase 2 arrest okay okay so in the graafian follicle you will see that proper corona radiata cumulus oophorus is there antrum is too much and by this time you know what is going to happen do you want to know what is the situation of hormones in our body yes do you want to know what is the situation of hormones in our body
exactly see what is happening in our body FSH will act on ovaries right follicles are growing in response to that estrogen estrogen is getting secreted slowly slowly that there will be an increase in the amount of estrogen there will be an increase in the amount of estrogen somewhere the increase in the amount of estrogen it also triggers LH secretion it also induces LH secretion so by this time you know by this time right in the female body there will be the LH surge right there will be the LH surge means the level of LH luteinizing hormone it will be too much now when this luteinizing hormone it is released see if the folds of estrogens are increasing that induces LH it is having a positive feedback on LH if LH if estrogen is increasing LH is also increasing LH is also increasing right right so LH where once it will be released it will start acting on it again the receptors are there no so it will start acting on that lutein formation it will increase lutein is a protein that will be increased here when LH is released it will act on these follicular cells right lutein protein production will increase and slowly 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 because estrogen is also getting increased a kind of pressure will form here right because imagine now the more and more stuff more and more stuff will be synthesized like it's like that you have a bag you have a polythin right you are putting a lot of stuff there or you can say that you have a paper bag you are putting a lot of stuff here you are just putting the things there putting the things there obviously there comes a time when that bag will be like bus done bye tata okay obviously obviously so lh is there it will produce the lutein protein there a kind of pressure will increase so from this mature follicle from this graphene follicle what will come out the egg it is actually not the proper egg it is actually the secondary oocyte having metaphase to arrest for the convenience of the language we use the word ovum here but actually it is not that ovum it is the secondary oocyte having metaphase to arrest right so when this egg this secondary oocyte is released we used to call it as ovulation we used to call it as ovulation what we used to call it we used to call it as ovulation and if we call it as ovulation right means ovulation means release of egg release of ovum but actually it is not the ovum it is the secondary oocyte and why that L, uh, ovulation has occurred because of a very high amount of LH so by this time LH is also high estrogen is also high FSH is high but in comparison to LH compa low no it is not that high okay it is not that high are you getting it sure are you sure 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 so now once this so once this uh, of uh, secondary oocyte is out you know that what is going to happen your mature follicle it will turn into a yellowish body and we used to call it as corpus luteum isn't it we used to call it as what we used to call it as we used to call it as corpus luteum yes or no mature follicle after ovulation it is the corpus luteum the yellowish body why is it yellowish because of the presence of lutein right the color of the autumn leaves the autumn foliage it is also yellowish why because of lutein now again because of LH there is the production of lutein protein within that follicle which will turn that follicle into a yellowish structure and that is the corpus luteum and that corpus luteum is the source of progesterone the second female sex hormone released from the ovary that is the progesterone right that is the progesterone so can i say that that when fsh is there estrogen is released or because of lh progesterone is released because lh is continuously acting on this corpus luteum and it is forming this progesterone right it is forming that progesterone can i say so yes or no so corpus luteum it's the temporary yes but it is the temporary endocrine gland it's the source of progesterone and what that progesterone will do it is the anti-avoshin hormone right but 
it will not let the abortion to occur right it promotes pregnancy clear clear so that happens in our body right every month after attaining the puberty so from primordial follicle primary oocyte will form but when it is the puberty you know that primary oocyte is already present so in the age of puberty further it will grow because of hormones into secondary oocyte then it will grow into tertiary oocyte everything is occurring in the cortex then there will be the mature graphian follicle right bache so from that follicle the ovulation will occur due to lh surge right due to lh surge so in the so in this stage what is happening bache right it is the secondary oocyte which is out having metaphase to arrest now this will turn into a yellowish body that is your corpus luteum right that is your corpus luteum what is it corpus luteum that will release what progesterone right ma'am when lh acts do estrogen stop no no estrogen is still there estrogen is still there okay okay so corpus luteum the yellowish body which is the source of progesterone now can you relate the periods here the menstrual cycle here yes can you just relate the periods here the menstrual cycle here guys tell me can you just relate the periods or the menstrual cycle here anyone in the class it's very simple now see ovulation is there if in the ampulla this egg this egg is viable for 24 hours the secondary oocyte is viable for 24 hours so within that 24 hours especially for initial 15 hours if sperm is available in the female fallopian tube then there will be the fertilization then there will be the fertilization otherwise otherwise after 24 hours this secondary oocyte will be degenerated it will be degenerated so if it is degenerated then you know that obviously the bleeding is going to occur the endometrium lightening will shed off because once this ovulation is there after some days if there is no signal if there is no signal to corpus luteum for implantation that there is no signal to corpus luteum that implantation has occurred so corpus luteum will also degenerate and you know that corpus luteum then turn into a whitish body which is known as corpus albicans right it will turn into a whitish body that is known as corpus albicans right so on 14th day of the menstrual cycle the ovulation will occur right bachche the ovulation will occur finally there will be the corpus luteum so it will be stable if there is pregnancy it will be stable for next 9 months right but if there is no so after about 9 days of its formation it will degenerate okay right so degenerated corpus luteum is known as corpus albicans understood right that whitish whitish bodies are there in the yes bachche it is there in the ovaries understood sure are you sure bachche please uh, yes obviously corpus luteum release progesterone progesterone and estrogen both act on the endometrium they will help in the you know endometrium proliferation is because of estrogen further progesterone is there that will maintain it that will maintain the endometrium suitable for the implantation but once there is no implantation there is no human chorionic gonadotropin the corpus luteum will also degenerate clear bachche the corpus luteum will also degenerate so that's how it works clear now the one question that can arise here is that ma'am you explained folliculogenesis but you didn't explain the oogenesis it's very simple it's very simple please focus here i think now you can relate but you have to listen to me very carefully right you can relate it with that See, you can relate it with the spermatogenesis also. The story is different. A little bit, it is different, but 
not completely now see students you can draw a comparison here it's important so please listen to me carefully that's the story here students yes you can see that right you can see that that's the story here see in the case of spermatogenesis spermatogonium primary spermatocyte secondary then comes the then comes the spermatid and finally there will be the sperm so basically if there is one spermatogonium you will get four sperm if there is one spermatogonium you will get one spermatocyte you will get two secondary spermatocyte yes or no from one one from one spermatogonium you are going to get two spermatocytes and four spermatid or sperm this is what you need to remember now come to this part female part one oogonium will give you one oocyte but when this one oocyte divides right bache so this division is unequal this division is unequal so because of that a large sized secondary oocyte form and comparatively smaller polar body form so sometimes right in the paper they even ask what is the function of polar body so basically the division is unequal you are getting one haploid secondary oocyte but there is one another polar body as well that polar body is just to reduce the chromosome number to half right it is not having a proper role it is not having anything like that right it's like that okay so now secondary oocyte it also undergoes uh, meiosis too and then there is the formation of ooted and one polar body there is the formation of ooted and one polar body are you getting it are you getting it so now you can relate it with the folliculogenesis see in the folliculogenesis you know that in primary follicle there is a dictate arrest but when the girl will attain the puberty this primary oocyte will further grow within that follicle it is going to form secondary oocyte and one polar body is also formed that will come out so if that polar body if it not get degenerated even it it can get degenerated after its formation if not right right if not then it will undergo meiosis too okay then again this polar body will also divide into two and moreover the secondary oocyte when there is the fertilization bachche you know na at the time of fertilization this metaphase two arrest will overcome so by then ooted will form and there is the formation of one more polar body so if this polar body will not get degenerated it will divide into two one two plus one so total three polar bodies will be there okay okay is that clear tell me bachche they are all similar they are not different they can have x or y chromosome that's all tell me guys tell me up to this part all clear sure up to this part all clear the comparison clear now you know how that further that growth will be there in the cortex sure are you sure so just look at this diagram 
see primordial then primary secondary there comes the tertiary right tertiary follicle showing antrum graphene follicle is there ovum is out that is ovulation corpus luteum and then it will get degenerated then it will be the corpus albicans right that then it will be the corpus albicans understood sure you can see this here also so see in fetal life this is happening primary oocyte so first meiotic division has started in fetal life again i'm repeating but it will not be completed that is dictate arrest so once there is the when the girl will attain the puberty so look at this part birth childhood puberty so when she will attain the puberty because of the hormones first meiotic division will be completed so see first meiotic division completed prior to ovulation means before ovulation first division is completed of course because during ovulation that that secondary oocyte is there in the metaphase 2 arrest right right metaphase 2 arrest are you getting my point so now see first polar body if it will survive it will divide it will undergo meiosis 2 then it one will give you two polar bodies and here secondary oocyte then further after you know during the when fertilization will be there it will further divide it will form ooted or ovum and the second polar body will be formed so that's how it works so please after the class right tomorrow i know today you are not going to get the time so tomorrow please sit discuss uh, revise this topic please make the notes still if there is any doubt you can just tell me okay right you can mention the doubt in the comment section i will definitely answer so any doubt here any doubt here even after the class do revise it okay do revise it done so this is this is that diagram so i hope now it is clear yes bachche i hope now it is clear so look at the different stages of the follicle follicle activation primary further growth secondary then comes the tertiary right bachche and finally that phase so see that's how it is growing primordial then early primary primary secondary follicle right the tertiary the graphene and that's how it proceeds right okay so first meiotic division will be completed in secondary follicle and second will see second meiotic division will starts in that tertiary follicle so in graphene follicle up to metaphase 2 arrest it will stay fine it will stay okay so see i have added so many diagrams here because i know this is the topic which disturbs you the most okay so see how that oocyte is getting covered with the ovarian cells we are calling it as granulosa cells right and with the time that granulosa cells they are proliferating they are dividing slowly slowly you know inside they will form theca interna externa further that cumulus oophorus then corona radiata so remember primary egg membrane is your zona pellucida secondary egg membrane is your yes bachche secondary egg membrane is your which one the corona radiata right so in our case we do not have the tertiary right some uh, uh, like i i don't know whether you know it or not yeah so we do not have that right we do not have that tertiary fine so we'll share the pdf okay so you will get all that things all that flow charts in the notes so now come to the menstrual cycle and trust me now you are going to love this topic the menstrual cycle right you are seriously you are going to love this topic menstrual cycle repeat to genesis zahir please check the recorded session once still if it is not clear i'll post a short video on it okay no worry is it still confusing vijay is it still confusing acha menstrual cycle na na it's very easy it's very easy chalo so now tell me about your biggest fear akankya zahir theek hai let's chit chat for 1 minute and then let's continue are let's chit chat see uh, surgeon bachche if i'll give you the break now na even i will sleep even i am tired so i'll sleep so it's better to you know just chit chat 
अच्छा बिगेस्ट फियर माई डैड सीरियसली विजय वाई इज इट सो वाई इज इट सो नाइट टाइम्स हॉमोन्स अच्छा लहरिका विल डिस्कस दैट अच्छा योर फियर इज होम अरे आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस इन जनरल इफ यू हैव एनी फियर यू कैन शेयर थैंक यू डी डी सिक्स डी डी जे सिक्स अच्छा नीट इज द बिगेस्ट फेयर थैंक्स विनोदिनी अच्छा लिजर्ड अरे चिल ओ जिसन हॉर्मोन्स अरे हॉर्मोन्स इज इजी लाइक आई स्टार्टेड द लेक्चर विद दैट हॉर्मोन्स पार्ट मैम प्लीज कॉल वजीम सर नो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू कॉल हिम He must be sleeping. He doesn't have any class today, na? Competition of neat, chill. Prank was him, sir. Wow. Seriously. Thanks, thanks, Ganesh. Chalo, now come back. Acha, ठीक है. Your hormones वाला topic is your biggest fear, no? Let's make it easy. Start the story with hypothalamus. I don't know why. Why don't? Why do you hate this topic, hypothalamus? See, when it comes to the chapter human reproduction, no. So this is what you need to remember. You have to start the story with G N R H, right? You have to start the story with G N R H, right? So now this gonadotropin releasing hormone, it is going to act. It is it is going to give a signal to pituitary. So in response to that, what that pituitary will do? Pituitary will release gonadotropins F S H or L H. Which gonadotropins will be released by pituitary? FSH and LH. So when it comes to the FSH, it is going to be follicle stimulating hormone. You know that. What is it? It is the follicle stimulating hormone. LH. You know that it is the luteinizing hormone. Right? What is it? It is the luteinizing hormone. Yes or no? Tell me. Yes or no? Hey na. So now in the case of males, it's very 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 simple. When it comes to the males. FSH is going to act on Sertoli cells, and you know what Sertoli cells will do. LH is going to act on the Leydig cells, and you know what that Leydig cells will do. So I think there is no confusion when we talk about the males, है ना? And moreover, when spermatogenesis is too much, this Sertoli cell it releases inhibin, right? It releases inhibin. So that acts like a negative feedback. That inhibin will stop FSH secretion. है ना दैट इनहेबिन इज गोइंग टू स्टॉप एफ एस एस सिक्रीशन सो एनी डाउट सो फार टेल मी एनी डाउट सो फार थैंक यू ये सीन ओके नाउ नाउ वेन इट कम्स टू द फीमेल एफ एस एच इट इज गोइंग टू एक्ट ऑन द फॉलिक्यूलर सेल्स and in response to that follicular cells what will they do they will proliferate what is the meaning of proliferation they grow they divide they increase their number and then they proliferate they grow they release estrogen what will they do they release estrogen any doubt tell me any doubt what will they do a uh, crazy boy ma'am biology practical when run first of all अच्छा ठीक है विच बायोलॉजी प्रैक्टिकल आर यू टॉकिंग अबाउट विच बायोलॉजी प्रैक्टिकल आर यू टॉकिंग अबाउट सो अप टू दिस पार्ट ऑल क्लियर द एस्ट्रोजन द एस्ट्रोजन इज रिलीज द एस्ट्रोजन इज रिलीज ठीक है नाउ फोकस हियर this estrogen it will act on the mammary gland right it will act on the mammary gland so it will play role in the growth of that mammary gland first thing secondly this estrogen acts on the uterus right what will it do with the uterus in the case of uterus right it helps in the proliferation the growth of the endometrium it will help in the growth of the endometrium first part secondly when it comes to the myometrium this estrogen is responsible for the uh, growth of that layer also the myometrium also right so overall this estrogen acts on the uterus it helps in uh, increasing the thickness of the uterine uh, uterine wall are you getting it thanks hsp sir thanks 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 
okay so it helps in the growth of it helps in the growth of that uterine wall that's what you need to keep in your mind this part clear proliferate uh, sorry this part clear this estrogen okay so it will act on the mammary gland it will act on the uterus that's how it is working now estrogen level is increasing in our body that also send a signal to the hypothalamus to the brain and in response to that you know what hsp sir you know what is happening hsp sir in response to that because already already hypothalamus has given the signal so slowly lh is there i am not saying that there is no secretion of lh before lh is there right but when estrogen is increasing it is further acting like a positive signal positive feedback for the positive feedback for the lh so parallelly lh will also increase and you know how lh will work slowly slowly its surge will be there the ovulation will be there and once after that you know that even there will be the progesterone right after that the progesterone will also be there and that progesterone that will also act on the endometrium right that will increase the secretory nature of endometrium that will make it more glandular okay that will make it more glandular are you getting it are you getting it yes bachche so that uh, this uh, progesterone it is going to maintain the thickness of uterine lining it will increase the adhesive nature of endometrium it will decrease uterine contraction so that implantation can occur that's how it helps okay that's how it helps fine 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 sure sure so now you tell me what is the issue with these hormones why can't you understand that and same way right in the same way we have to related with the menstrual cycle so now you know when you talk about the menstrual cycle the first time first time when that cycle when that uh, periods will start that is menarch and you know that in the case of females they are not fertile for their lifetime right in late 40s or in early 50s there will be an there will be a halt right but the menstrual the menses will stop and that is known as the menopause so starting of menstrual cycle is menarch and when it stops it is the menopause starting is menarch when it stops it is the menopause understood yes but bachche the reproductive cycle in the female primates female primates means monkeys apes and human beings it is menstrual cycle so in monkeys even in apes even in human beings it is menstrual cycle so first menstruation at puberty is menarche right bachche so on an average it is for 28 to 29 days bachche right bachche so this complete cycle from you know when uh, uh, the cycle started until next cycle it is the menstrual cycle basically it is for on an average it is for 28 days right for 29 days okay okay 28 days 29 days but it can vary it can vary from female to female because of stress also the number of days can change it can be 30 it can be 35 sometimes in some girls they get their periods after 2 months right so it depends upon diet it depends upon genes it depends upon your environment it depends upon many things it depends upon your routine as well just in the case of air hostesses those who travel you know worldwide in their case like if they enter in uh, if they travel across the different time zones so in their case right their periods they got disturbed okay done so now just look at this diagram and compare it now so see you know the function of each and every hormone right you know the function of each and every hormone isn't it isn't it thanks anusha thank you so much for the encouragement so now relate see pituitary hormone levels this is the first question that they can ask and it's a very simple question still students used to make mistakes when it is the pituitary hormone you are going to talk about the fsh lh estrogen progesterone is released from ovary they are ovarian hormones right and this estrogen and progesterone remember they are steroidal in nature right what are they they are steroidal hormones so the hormones which are steroidal their receptors are yes everyone please let me know in the chat section please let me know in the chat section 
so hormones if they are uh, yes if they are steroidal you know that their receptors where are they present their receptors are in nucleus they are they are having intra nuclear receptor within the nucleus the receptors are present now see fsh slowly slowly the level of fsh is increasing because of that the follicle growth is also there can you relate it here can you relate it here everyone please focus can you relate it here FSH, the level of FSH is increasing and due to that follicle growth is also there. See, hai na? follicle growth is also there. And I told you when FSH level will increase, slowly, slowly, the estrogen level is also increasing. It's it's near about, right? It's, it's, it's almost same, no? So FSH increasing, increasing. But when it is increasing, even it is increasing the estrogen level. So there comes a time when estrogen will be high so estrogen high is also increasing the LH secretion you can compare no so FSH because of FSH estrogen level is increasing at this time even FSH is high in comparison to LH it is low but it is high still it is high right and see estrogen is also high so after the ovulation right so you compare it FSH increasing in result of that uh, FSH is increasing so estrogen is also increasing and with the time when estrogen is increasing there is an there is a uh, there is the LH surge as well now but it is this reason is unknown that why suddenly you know one or two days before ovulation why suddenly all of sudden right why suddenly it happened that this LH uh, secretion it induces by two to three folds right it's still unknown okay okay so see LH high estrogen high uh, sorry LH high estrogen high even the FSH is high so now once the secondary oocyte is released corpus luteum is there so when there is the corpus luteum right so now the because of corpus luteum the level of progesterone is high so when the level of progesterone is high at that time estrogen is low okay by that time estrogen is low clear clear so once this corpus luteum degenerate again the level of progesterone will come down simple okay and see the effect on the uterus as well when initially when fsh lh and every other hormones they are low the bleeding phase is there menses are going on right when there is the follicular growth means when estrogen is high so slowly slowly the uterine thickening is also increasing so when there is the progesterone secretion still uterine thickening is more when progesterone is decreased uterine thickening will again so that is the periodic shedding off right that is the periodic shedding off clear bache understood so this is the menstrual cycle right this is the menstrual cycle so it's simple the hormones here are also simple so you you should start the story from the hypothalamus then it will be easy for you okay then it will be easy for you so one two three Now see everyone see when you are talking about the menstrual phase right we divide that menstrual cycle no uh, we talk about the bleeding phase also known as the menstrual phase then bache, there is the proliferation phase also known as the follicular phase guys please show some energy quick then ovulatory phase then secretory phase luteal phase post ovulatory phase And these two, they are considered as 
प्री ओव्यूलेटरी फेज डन डन नाउ लिसन टू मी so on an average we are considering it for 28 days so when there is the bleeding phase it is for initial 1 to 5 days like 1 2 3 4 5 for initial 5 days we consider the bleeding phase right so when there is the bleeding when menses are there at that time na in female body initially the, the level of fsh is low the level of lh is low the level of estrogen is low the level of even the progesterone is low so when there is the bleeding phase and when initial days are there all the hormones they are having low level right all the hormones they are having low level for now see the bleeding phase the bleeding phase it lasts for 1 to 5 days it can be for 3 days in some females it can be for 2 days it can be for 4 days it can be for 5 days and sometimes it can be for 7 days also again it varies right lairika again it varies so let's say when bleeding phase is coming to end let's say initially fsh is low estrogen progesterone every hormone is low by fourth or fifth day there will be a slight increase na hai na because now now even body is ready the biological clock right it knows everything the body is also ready the body is like ki chalo now it's the time i have to go right i i have to move to the next phase so slowly slowly the level of hormones will increase now bachcha 6 7th 8th day like this now by this time what is going to happen your fsh will increase so if fsh increase estrogen increase if estrogen increase lh increase and when there is the see because day 14th is the day of ovulation it is the day when egg release will be there the secondary oocyte will be released okay so when there is the 12th or 13th day like during this period bachche the lh level is going to be very 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 high so if someone will ask you that in the proliferative phase or in the follicular phase what is the what is the status of progesterone is it high or low of course it is not there right right there is no source of progesterone yet so in these pre ovulatory phases you are not going to talk about the progesterone i don't know why why do you make this topic difficult it is actually easy right it is actually easy can you see that bleeding phase menstrual phase proliferative phase follicular phase can you see that so that's how it works okay that's how it works so here initially all the hormones are low by fourth or fifth day there will be slight increase and when there is the day 6 to day 13 this is the phase day 6 of menstrual cycle to day 13th of the menstrual cycle this is the time period of the follicular phase so even you can calculate the days 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we can say that that follicular phase lasts for 7 to 8 days right it lasts for 7 to 8 days that's how it works then come to the 14th day day of the ovulation no doubt we in general we used to say that 14th day is the day when there is the ovulation but we consider plus minus 2 days right plus minus 2 days and during this period right couple should avoid the unprotected sexual intercourse because this is the this is a phase when female is highly uh, there are high chances of pregnancy right she is fertile by the, uh, this time okay now once so when there is the ovulation obviously lh level is high now move to the next part 15 to day 28 this is the luteal phase secretory phase this is the phase when the level of progesterone is high why because after the egg release now we have the graafian follicle so no doubt our lh is high and the progesterone is also high comparatively even your uh, estrogen and fsh is high i'm not saying they are low but if you compare the level of lh and fsh by this time lh level is high by this time lh level is high okay okay so now slowly slowly this progesterone level is there it is maintained it is high right during this period slowly slowly its, its level will increase 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 so obviously endometrial lining is also thick it is also having that thickness right but 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 by this time when it is not getting the signal when corpus luteum is not getting the signal of implantation by this time again the level will decline so after 28 days so because by this time the level is coming down okay 
that level is coming down so by this time even the progesterone decrease estrogen decrease lhfsh decrease and finally it will switch to the menstrual cycle so i literally don't know why do you make it so difficult this topic is literally easy if you understand the follicular genesis then there is no problem at all ha shri anusha for some some females it can last for 7 to 9 days so accordingly in their case the hormonal cycle will change fine so accordingly in their case the hormonal cycle will change okay dharmache so this is about the menstrual cycle this is about the diagram so after the class please read it once from the ncert trust me you are going to find it easy okay you are going to find it very easy okay so next topic is the fertilization and the implantation and trust me students if you will support me for another one hour we can finish the chapter today nahi shri anusha then it can also vary it can like basically in the let's say 28 days like middle may there will be the on 14 day there will be the ovulation so accordingly right accordingly that thing will change so what say so are you guys in let's finish this chapter hai na let's finish it next topics are not so difficult so i'll tell you the most important things here okay let's discuss the most important things only but at least be a support be a support so that next chapter that we can start is reproductive health we'll finish it soon okay that is the matter of 3 to 4 hours only 3 hours maximum not even the 3 to 4 hours 3 hours maximum okay are you in okay so see so we are talking about the fertilization and the implantation so you know that in the ampulla when there is the availability of egg by then if sperm is present then obviously the fertilization will occur obviously the zygote formation will be there otherwise no right otherwise there is no chance now right you know that when you are talking about this thing right you are talking about the ovum see when are you going to say that ovum is a egg when it is having the proper covering of the membranes when it is having zona pellucida when it is having corona radiata moreover that cumulus oophorus that cumulus oophorus is there right and students just look at this thing the, the perivitelline space do you know what is perivitelline space i'll tell you this is the egg membrane the plasma membrane this is the zona pellucida in between that plasma membrane and zona pellucida there is a space this is a space you call that as peri white line space what's that bache it is peri white line space understood it is peri white line space got it got it so fertilization and implantation so during sexual intercourse the semen is released into the vagina that is the insemination that is the insemination so the motile sperms they rapidly pass through the cervix they enter into the uterus and reach the ampullary region of fallopian tube ovum is released if it is released by then if they meet there then there will be the fusion and finally the zygote will form right the pregnancy will occur we know that so process of fusion of sperm with an ovum is called the fertilization but the story is not that simple do you know that the story is not that simple do you know that yes tell me everyone do you know that the story is not that simple do you know what is the story here yes everyone tell me do you know what is the story here tell me quickly then i'll tell you what we need to focus here the capacitation of sperm not given in ncert but you you used to get question from that part yes done ready okay hmm so see no doubt bache when the sperm
see uh as i said when the ovum is released it is not actually the ovum you know that it is the secondary oocyte with metaphase 2 arrest this is what we know it is the secondary oocyte with metaphase 2 arrest clear so when will you call it as egg when it is having you know the secondary oocyte is properly covered with the egg membrane that's what we know okay now my point is i told you that this ovum will be there for 24 hours and actually the capacity for fertilization is for initial 15 hours so if sperm is available they are going to fertile but sperm cannot directly right sperm cannot directly fertilize the egg right we the charging of sperm is required that is known as capacitation of sperm this topic is not given in ncrt but it is one of the most important topics indirectly you used to get question from this part see students i know you are tired right we are taking class from last six hours so this is what we can do let's discuss the capacitation okay and uh, let's discuss the capacitation i'll give you the overview uh, of that uh, implantation stages then right then i will end the class okay okay what say is that okay let's discuss the capacitation of sperms because this topic is not given in ncrt Hena. so after completing this topic even but i uh, i have taken a separate session right in which in detail i have discussed the embryonic development i'll ask my team uh, by tomorrow uh, uh, today they will pin the link in the description box okay so let's discuss it i'll give you the overview by then so please be a support give me another 10 to 15 minutes Nain, i can take class up to 12 hours but you have to be present there no Anna. okay so the capacitation of sperm it is very important and as i said the capacitation of sperm means the charging of sperm right it means the charging of sperm so what is going to happen here see no doubt you know that basically the semen will be released male copulatory organ is going to ejaculate the semen in the female genital tract right no doubt you know about the secretions the fructose is there the prostaglandins are there prostaglandins are very important even prostaglandins are very important for the contraction of the uterus so that sperm can move towards the fallopian tube but let me tell you even for the ovulation you can note down this point right right you can even note down this point right that even even for the ovulation prostaglandins are required if prostaglandins are not there even there will be no ovulation lh surge is required but that prostaglandins will help in that egg to come out right this is what you need to know so capacitation means charging charging means there are certain type of changes which will take place in the sperm structure now you know the sperm structure you know that it is covered with the plasma membrane plus right it's uh, the posterior part of its uh, uh, head the neck the middle piece it is further covered it is having that manchette you know it very well and moreover the sperm because it is present in the semen it is covered with that cholesterol it is covered with some unnecessary proteins okay it is it is covered with some it is covered with what it is covered with some unnecessarily or uh, unnecessary proteins clear bache clear bache yes or no yes or no so basically the coating a kind of coating is present over the sperm right right the coating is present over the sperm so basically in the female genital tract where that capacitation of sperm will occur it will take place in female genital tract right where is where will that occur in female genital tract the capacitation of sperm will be there now after that what is going to happen students after that what is going to happen see in female genital tract female secretions are there they will remove this covering they will remove this coating okay and why is it so why is it so because there are certain receptors which are present on these sperm membranes and we want them to get exposed so that it can bind with the egg are you getting it that is the main agenda behind clear that is the main agenda behind 
are you getting it so that receptors on the acrosome that receptors on the sperm structure they need to be exposed right we want to expose that receptors right bache that's why that's why this capacitation this charging is there <coughs> okay bache okay that's why this capacitation this charging is important any doubt yes bache so if the sperm if it is not capacitated not capacitated not charged sperm held in cumulus it will not be able to cross the cumulus imagine it will not be able to cross the cumulus it cannot reach the egg clear bache clear bache okay any doubt yes any doubt so removal of cholesterol will be there right removal of cholesterol will be there right bache and uh, some protein uh, some proteins which are present on the sperm membrane they will be removed clear and moreover remember for capacitation calcium ions required okay bicarbonates required serum albumins albumin is also protein they are required it is the requirement for the capacitation so even for the capacitation calcium ions they are very important so that serum albumin will remove the cholesterol further the proteins which are present on the sperm structure they will be right they will be removed bache clear bache so that carb calcium ion barbo bicarbonate ions right they will further uh, you can say that you know some you know na cells uh, like the cascade of process will begin in the sperm because of that ions right so in detail it is not required okay in detail that is not required so that's why i am not emphasizing that part clear so ultimately this is what you can remember that because of capacitation right because of capacitation intracellular ph ph of sperm increases that's what i can mention that's all okay that's all done bache that's also that's how the capacitation the capacitation is important okay that is why the capacitation is important okay fine so now bache see after that what is going to happen i told you about the acrosome yes or no i told you about the acrosome yes or no bache please stop chatting right please stop chatting chalo let's finish this topic then we will chit chat i'll give you a break for 2 to 3 minutes and then we will continue okay so next thing is now that sperm is charged it is activated now it has to penetrate the egg membrane so when it comes to the penetration of the egg membrane we will be discussing the acrosomal reaction we are going to discuss the cortical reaction clear bachche now there is a concept of monospermy and polyspermy monospermy means single sperm is going to fuse the ovum and then there is a concept of polyspermy that many sperms can fuse the ovum so if many sperms they will fuse the ovum even if it is more than two so imagine two sperms like one sperm will fuse the ovum uh, 46 chromosome then further let's add 23 let's add more 23 so obviously then in that case it will not be the human being right in that case it will not be the human being right right yes or no yes or no it is this case na it is the scenario so polyspermy should be should not be there it should be prohibited hai na so for to prevent the polyspermy obviously there are so many things in our body so see na in single ejaculation in single ejaculation near about 300 million sperms are released okay okay in you know that uh, uh, in per ml 20 to 130 20 to 130 million sperms are there so in single ejaculation near about 300 million sperms are there by a healthy male okay so see so many sperms are there so obviously they'll move towards the egg but only one will get a chance to fuse with it fine so monospermy is preferred why because we do not want the more number of chromosome otherwise it will not be the human being no if it will be more than 46 abnormalities can occur this is what we know yes or no this is what we know now the point is that sperm will start moving towards the because of that prostaglandin because of it charging it will start moving towards that ampullary region now it has to approach the egg so you know that the chemicals are released right the fertilizer anti fertilizer all of them are released 
like it's a kind of it's a kind of chemo attraction no yes or no even outside the body when there is the external fertilization you know that specific chemicals are released yes or no so chemo yes bache the chemo attraction is there yes or no yes or no tell me bache and other species they release the chemicals even in the external fertilization we have seen that right even in the external fertilization we have seen that anti fertilizer released by the egg right the uh, the it will released by the egg fertilizers they are released by the sperm so they will you know they have that compatibility it's a kind of signal right chemicals are re released so that they can fuse yes or no tell me yes or no this is what we have discussed so same way a kind of chemical attraction is there and the sperm will start moving towards the egg okay so now you know that egg you know that it is having zona pellucida you know that it is having corona radiata you know that it is having cumulus oophorus so first of all sperm right bache it is activated by the female secretions it is activated by the female secretions right aditya then what is going to happen sperm is going to bind the zona pellucida clear bache clear bache because when a sperm is capacitated see when a sperm is capacitated capacitated sperm releases release higher luronidase capacitated sperm release higher luronidase now you already know about the acrosome you know that acrosome is formed yes you know that acrosome is formed from the golgi apparatus this acrosome is having the content it is having the sperm license it is having that zona license right it is having that uh, corona radiating dissolving enzymes remember remember acrosome is having so many things na hyaluronidase sperm lysins are there so main is hyaluronidase corona penetrating enzyme zona lysin is there right so sperm lysins it includes zona lysin the main one it is known as acrosin okay hyaluronidase is there in the acrosome corona penetrating enzyme is there right corona penetrating enzyme is there are you getting it students so capacitated sperm will release hyaluronidase do you know the role of hyaluronic acid do you know the role of right do you know the role of hyaluronic acid anyone in the class what is hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid is the cementing material like we have that cumulus na that cumulus is covering that secondary oocyte so that cumulus the cells here right the cementing material here is hyaluronic acid which one is the cementing material here it is the hyaluronic acid right hyaluronic acid so when capacitated sperm will release hyaluronidase it will act on the cementing material the cells will get separated because hyaluronic acid will be dissolved i hope you guys can imagine that right hyaluronic acid will be dissolved so now the sperm will penetrate the cumulus oophorus yes or no the sperm right the sperm will penetrate the cumulus oophorus or not or not of course it can now sperm will what is going to happen bache now sperm will bind with the zona pellucida because that receptors right sperm is going to bind with the zona pellucida and then the acrosome reaction will occur right sperm is going to bind with the binds with zona pellucida so this is very important for your neat bache okay this is literally important for your neat sperm binds with zona pellucida actually this is the primary binding okay mainly this is the primary binding this is the first binding actually okay because because that hyaluronidase is released from capacitated sperm even corona penetrating enzyme it will penetrate it and then the acrosome react uh, then sperm will bind with the zona pellucida once the sperm binds with zona pellucida how will it bind you know that zona pellucida is acellular it is having the glycoproteins so sperm is having that receptors right that is going to bind there no like sperm is having that receptor that, that will bind with the zona pellucida yes or no yes or no samriya tell me tell me tell me quickly 
right so when the zona pellucida it binds to the sperm it initiates sperm binds with zona pellucida then acrosome reaction is initiated always remember that right then acrosome reaction is initiated in mammals in mammals it's not like that that firstly there is the acrosome reaction then zona pellucida will bind no firstly sperm bind with zona pellucida right they, uh, right right sperm proteins they are going to bind with the proteins the glycoproteins of the zona pellucida zp3 then zp2 like this so this is not required and then there is the acrosome reaction that's what you need to remember clear bache that's what you need to remember so once the sperm binds with the right binds with that egg the acrosome reaction will start so can you tell me what is going to happen in acrosome reaction anyone here in the class what is going to happen in acrosome reaction yes of course so once the sperm bind with zona pellucida acrosome reaction is initiated so basically what is going to happen you know na see already the external coverings from this acrosome it is removed so basically what is going to happen when acrosome reaction will start the content right the content of this acrosome will start coming out the other enzymes will start coming out so basically a kind of you can say that this part will get degenerated its content will come out so because of that what is going to happen it will digest that zona pellucida yes or no it is going to digest that zona pellucida still but still even after that sperm will sperm will get still sperm is still attached to the egg there right there is no need to write down you please listen to me you clear the topic then revise it from ncrt right as of now there is no need to write down anything just listen to me understand it first then you can make the notes okay so what is happening the content exactly the exocytosis of this acrosomal content will be there some part of it will get removed but still the sperm will stay attached to this zona pellucida with that glycoproteins this first part clear this first part clear and slowly 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 what is going to happen there bache what is going to happen sperm will start penetrating zona it will start penetrating plasma membrane and finally the content will be passed to the egg can you just tell me what is that content that will be passed to the egg yes bache can you just tell me what is that content that will be passed to the egg and of course for this process calcium ions they are very important they play a very important role even the magnesium ions are sometimes required right tell me is that clear yes or no ions are required calcium ions they are very important for acrosome reaction they are very important for that fertilization tell me is that clear yes or no this is the acrosome reaction this is the acrosome reaction so once this sperm right once this sperm it penetrates the plasma membrane of oocyte remember bachche i told you about the i told you about the perivitelline space yes i told you about the perivitelline space see this is the ovum here this is the plasma membrane of that secondary oocyte this is a zona pellucida okay now just below listen to me very carefully please just below this plasma membrane there are certain granules even even their content is also formed by golgi apparatus it is also formed by golgi apparatus what is it they are the cortical granules right what are these students they are the cortical granules so what is going to happen here yes what is going to happen here once the sperm it penetrates that plasma membrane once that sperm it penetrates right the sperm uh, uh, it touches it it penetrates that plasma membrane the content from this cortical granules will be released immediately why and it is also because of calcium ions right it is also because of the calcium ions so so because of calcium ions the content of cortical granules it will be released right here the perivitelline space it will become thick bache so when one sperm it approaches this egg right and once you know that uh, binding has occurred once that content has liberated so after that na cortical granules they will release all their content here and because of that you know that water will come multiple things will occur and this part 
this fertilization in envelope it will become very thick okay and because of that no sperm will further bind here this is also a way to prevent the polyspermy so acrosome reaction plus cortical reaction they prevent the polyspermy they prevent the fusion of many sperms with one egg okay they prevent the fusion of many sperm with one egg are you getting it that's how it works fine that's how it works clear so zona lysine is there which is also known as acrosome acrosin so that's how slowly slowly you know the steps will be uh, done so fusion of sperm and membrane of secondary oocyte it is syngamy okay then finally the all the content will be passed there what is the content the nucleus of sperm will be passed the remaining sperm part will be digested by that it will be phagocytosized by that egg so the nucleus will be passed and the proximal centriole so you need to remember that which centriole right you 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 should remember this part that which centriole is passed to the ovum it is the proximal centriole clear bache it is the proximal centriole clear bache yes or no so structural changes in zona pellucida through this cortical reaction and acrosome reaction they prevent polyspermy fine 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 right bache right so first of all when these membranes they fuse that is a syngamy now see from content of because sperm is not having that cytoplasm and the remaining part of sperm will be you know that will be eaten up by the ovum so that then their cytoplasm will fuse plasmogamy centriole is there that centriole what that centriole will do that will form the spindle apparatus because bachche remember secondary oocyte is without a centriole right secondary oocyte is without centriole now sperm will pass the secondary uh, proximal centriole which will divide the spindle apparatus will form metaphase 2 rest will overcome there are other proteins also which are going to play the role and after that when uh, once that meiosis 2 is completed the ooted is formed the polar body will be out right and then finally the karyogamy will be there the fusion of nucleus will be there right and finally the fertilization amphi mixes okay finally that amphi mixes will occur that is completion of fertilization understood completion of fertilization will occur done bachche done 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 sure okay so once the nucleus here enters the once the nucleus of sperm enters here in the egg it will take water from this egg it will become swollen then you use the word pro nucleus right that swollen nucleus is pro nucleus so finally they will fuse fine bachche finally they will fuse theek hai clear okay <clears throat> so after the secondary polar body second polar body right it comes out the uh, female nucleus is also the female pro nucleus finally both the nucleus they will get fused okay then bachche so after this what is going to happen the zygote will form no so before that there is a activation of egg as well the metabolism of that egg will increase the respiration will increase the protein synthesis will increase right after all that fertilization and finally you know that there is a zygote that will undergo meiosis that will undergo meiosis understood samiksha bachche in the case of twins na gitanjali sometimes both the ovaries they release the egg simultaneously so two different sperms they fuse it okay do fuse it this is also the case but in that case the dizygotic twins will be there right they are non identical twins they they can be uh, uh, brother sister they can be sister sister they can be brother brother it can be anything but sometimes what happen like there is a zygote okay it is dividing it is undergoing cleavage it is forming the blastomeres sometimes during the initial stages right when that blastomeres are just dividing sometimes some blastomeres they get separated they further grow into a complete structure right then in that case there will be the monozygotic twins okay then there will be the monozygotic twins understood so that's how the fertilization uh, uh, acrosome reaction fertilization and all that things will occur okay done so second polar body and xy x part you know that 
राइट वेन देर विल बी द फीमेल एंड वेन देर विल बी द मेल सो नाउ बच्चे जाइगोट विल अंडर गो क्लीवेज सो रिमेंबर वन थिंग जाइगोट इज टोटी पोटेड जाइगोट इज टोटी पोटेड right it is having the capacity to grow into a complete individual so this is zygote right remember one thing bachche mammalian cleavage is the slowest cleavage of animal kingdom mammalian cleavage is the slowest cleavage of animal kingdom what is it it is the slowest cleavage of animal kingdom so nearly after 30 hours you know the first division will occur and remember this zygote is still covered with the zona pellucida zona pellucida is not degenerated yet right it is not degenerated yet clear bache clear bache so zygote after 30 hours it will divide right it will divide and what is going to happen right what is going to happen the blastomeres will form yes or no yes or no blastomeres will form yes or no hai na bachche tell me quickly we are talking about the cleavage na so cleavage will be there right so cleavage is there which is a rapid mitotic division what is it it is the rapid mitotic division so first division is like this but before that let me explain one more point so i told you that mammalian cleavage is the slowest cleavage of animal kingdom and when we talk about the cleavage we used to say it is a rapid division or you can say that we can call it as rapid mitotic division but which can you tell me the difference in between the cleavage and the mitosis yes can you just tell me the difference in between the cleavage and the mitosis anyone cleavage and the mitosis very simple now you know the cell cycle right you know the cell cycle so when we talk about the cell cycle in the cell cycle g1 phase is there s is there g2 phase is there that's what we have it is the s phase in which dna replication will occur 2c dna will become 4c g in the g1 and g2 phase there will be the rna synthesis there will be the protein synthesis right what will be there there will be the rna synthesis there will be the protein synthesis now that is in the case of mitosis now when you are talking about the cleavage in the cleavage bachche only s phase will be there right g1 g2 they are absent g1 g2 what are they they are absent are you getting it or not yes bachche there is the m phase there is the s phase in general we say na g1 s g2 in interphase then comes the division phase but when it is the cleavage g1 g2 it is absent so now if g1 g2 is absent no further protein synthesis no further cytoplasmic growth is there no further protein synthesis no further cytoplasmic growth is there there is no growth like this only dna replication is occurring so what is going to happen if your zygote is having this size after cleavage its size will remain same but but it will divide into two cells again again right if it is the cleavage because g1 g2 is absent the size will remain same but the number of cells will increase so there is the nuclear to if you talk about nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio cytoplasm level will not increase but number of nuclei it will increase right number of nuclei it will increase got it yes bachche is it clear so cytoplasmic ratio decreases as compared to the so in the cleavage how is it different from mitosis because here cytoplasmic ratio decreases cytoplasmic ratio decreases and nuclear ratio increases clear bachche and nuclear ratio increases okay clear sure Sure, sure, sure. So in mammalian cleavage, from the starting, the zygotic genes they will take the charge. Okay. Done. So after na thirteen cycles of division, so this division is going on, and even in the mammals you will see it is not equal, right? It's not like that that all the blastomeres will divide at the same time, right? Some like the cleavage is of different different types, no? the cleavage is of different different types i hope you know that 
यस बच्चे आई होप यू नो दैट सो इन द केस ऑफ योर मैमल्स राइट इन द केस ऑफ योर ह्यूमन्स राइट यस सो क्लीवेज इट इज ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप सो इफ इट इज अ कंप्लीट क्लीवेज यू विल यूज द वर्ड होलो ब्लास्टिक विच वर्ड आर वी गोइंग टू यूज इट इज होलो ब्लास्टिक क्लीवेज होलो मीन्स टोटल क्लीवेज इज देयर ऑल द ब्लास्टो मीयर आर डिवाइडेड बट इट इज अन इक्वल होलो ब्लास्टिक क्लीवेज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अन इक्वल होलो ब्लास्टिक क्लीवेज लेट सी वंस जाइगोट इज डिवाइडिंग इन टू टू देन अगेन इट इज डिवाइडिंग राइट लाइक planes are different it's not like in same plane they are dividing planes are also different moreover bachche it's not mandatory that all the blastomeres will divide at the same time right it's not mandatory that all the blastomeres will divide at the same time no it's not the case here right it's literally not the case here these blastomeres they can divide right bachche unequal holoblastic cleavage is their blastomeres they are having unequal size their size is not proper right blastomeres they are having unequal size fine they are having unequal size so it is the complete or the holoblastic unequal cleavage done bachche done bachche so initially there is no change in shape so the size of developing embryo will not change right because there is no g1 g2 phase so once it will become gastrula then the size will also increase fine then the size will also increase so mainly after 13 cycle of divisions no right right the g1 g2 phases they they are added okay they are added done bachche so mammalian cleavage is slowest cleavage the first division it is like this in the mammalian cleavage first division is like this meridional and then it is like this equatorial so that's why blastomeres are having unequal size in mammalian cleavage in humans remember that right remember that okay so in our case in mammalian case such type of cleavage is also the rotational cleavage find such type of cleavage is also the rotational cleavage remember this thing right so first division is like this meridional then equatorial plane is there okay so it is mammalian cleavage is asynchronous as well all the you know blastomeres they do not divide at the same time and do you know bachche this in the case of mammals na zona pellucida is there the zygote is dividing but in the case of mammals it is also seen that blastomeres are having some spaces in between but after some time na that blastomeres they come closer the compaction occur after eight cell stage the compaction occur they come closer then you know about the stages the morula will be there right eight to 16 cell the gastrula will be there sorry the blastula will be there then the cavity formation in the blastula will be there blastocyst then gastrula gastrula is having germ layers and further it will grow so that's how it works fine that's how it works right so in the case of morula now i'm telling you the most important topics morula eight to 16 cell stage right so morula will because it is just like a ball mulberry ball like this so you know that then it will form blastula the cells will increase so when it is the blastocyst right cyst means cavity hai na cyst means there is a cavity yes or no when it is a cyst it means there is a cavity right so now what is going to happen i hope you know this diagram see this is the blastocoel the cells which are here in the periphery they are the trophoblast it this layer is trophoblast it is nutritive it will also help in implantation and this part here it is the inner cell mass okay it is the inner cell mass so this is the part which will actually form the embryo fine this is the part which will actually form the embryo slowly slowly the division is going on on the basis of that i am telling you this so it is still covered with zona pellucida blastocyst is there this trophoblast is nutritive it will also help in implantation it will release proteolytic enzymes that will digest zona pellucida that will digest the endometrial lining and further implantation will occur it is the inner cell mass which will form embryo very important it is further inner cell mass will form epiblast hypoblast and then further you know the growth will be there so remember this so this zona pellucida it prevents ectopic pregnancy 
right it is going to prevent ectopic pregnancy ectopic pregnancy means when the implantation is not there in the uterus but any place other than uterus so zona pellucida stops that so once you know that uh, trophoblast will release proteolytic enzymes it will rise the zona pellucida then further implantation will occur so that's what you need to remember even this is important right so further morula right then blastula blastocyst further it will reach to the uterus so seven days after fertilization implantation occurs seven days after right right seven days after fertilization implantation occurs so basically this blastocyst reaches the uterus after the five days of fertilization but it will be there for one or one and a half days it will take the nourishment from the endometrial fluid from the endometrial lining and obviously progesterone is there endometrial cells are swollen they are releasing that milk so zygote is taking nourishment from that and slowly slowly what is going to happen then further it will get implanted so once implantation occurs, the placentation formation now you know that gastrulation and further organogenesis so that's how it works okay that's how it works so this part is very important here right this part is very important here clear bache so see the stages just look at the stages right so compaction is there it is very unique in mammals that blastomeres they are having space in between but after eight cell stage they start coming closer then they get compacted then see the cavity formation zona hatching it will get hatched from zona then implantation occur right so cell mass differentiation will occur further that inner cell mass will start forming apiblast hypoblast right so here you can see the surrounding trophoblast cells they are dividing they are forming syncytio trophoblast and also that implantation can occur okay so this is the last part here which i had uh, I have made the separate videos as well, right, where this part is explained in detail. So, this is very simple. You can simply read it from the NCRT, okay. So, if there is any doubt, you can let me know in the chat section, right. If still you want the proper class for this last topic, I will provide uh, the lecture for that too. But I think it will be manageable by you, okay. Just read it once. Right, I will share the PDF, don't worry. And when it is the childbirth also, but see right that fetal ejection reflex will be generated it is the oxytocin which is going to help in that birth fine but the blastomere is itself a cell zygote uh, prajwal zygote will undergo cleavage two blastomere second cleavage four blastomere third cleavage eight blastomeres it will be like this yeah these topics are very easy topics okay so that you can read and revise from the ncrt so i'll be providing you the pdf in our official telegram group so but I need one thing from all of you, right, Bache? So I think I deserve the comments, right? You like the session or not, right? What's your review? I want that comments in the comment section. I deserve that, okay? So unlock 20 is there. You are going to get our batches at a very less price, right? You have to use the coupon code Ambika 10. So remember this thing. Baki, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and we'll share the PDF with you all okay so whatever we have completed we have completed that in detail okay so be the part of classes and see so if possible do come to chennai let's meet there okay so thank you so much everyone bye, -bye.